Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Tarnation TV's broadcast of the Talladega Nights. A fun event this evening known as the Mega Marathon Team Race Event Extraordinaire. My name is Blaine, joined with Rod. Rod, how are you, buddy? What the heck's going on this evening? Ah, uh, we are in for a treat tonight. A uh, wicked race. Uh, not just one wicked race, a whole bunch of wicked races. Yeah, we, they're doing team racing tonight. So if anybody has seen this before in the past, the way the team races go, they all show up, they line up in Team Steak, they talk about it, they pick captains, and then they turn around and, and pick drivers. Uh, as like, So if you wanted, uh, let's say you were Team uh, Turbo and you wanted Greg Lovell on your team and you're the first one to pick, you can pick Greg Lovell. So that's the usual format. They usually do one race and then they use five drivers, six drivers, seven drivers, depending on how many people show up in a team. One big race, you know, the best team takes it all. Yeah, we got eight teams. Was it eight teams with five guys on each one? We do have a couple alternates waiting in the wings just in case uh, we have anybody, but it looks like everybody's here. We've got uh, 43 drivers online, two of them being you and I. Uh, so we have a full, a full 40 team field today. This is absolute madness. Yeah, so we're running seven races, which is kind of cool. They're mm -hmm. doing uh, California, Homestead, and Talladega Nights. And the the way they're doing it is a little different than the normal team race. Only two drivers from each team can drive in the race, during the race. So there's 16 drivers. They're going to be sprint races, very short races, very quick. Um, and then each driver has to run at least two races and two drivers on the team They'll run three races, and then at the end of the night, oh, we have the big one, a, a big race, a longer race at Talladega Nights, uh, and that is going to be wicked. The thing, too, is a lot of strategy in that, with what you were saying, because there is going to be a driver that has to race in three of these six sprint runs, which brings the strategy into play for the team captains and the teams themselves, kind of having to decide which driver that's going to be who do they want to be I mean, certain drivers are going to be better on different tracks so maybe somebody who's really good on california might not be that good at um at homestead or maybe a tell everybody's going to be racing in the main event at the end of the day but maybe they're not that strong at talladega maybe they want to run the other two you know so it's it's a strategic 56 move. To the booth. 50 60 I'm to sorry. The booth. 16 to the booth hey now jeffrey Elliott, 16, you're on the yeah. air bud Hey guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, Tarnation TV. Hello, uh, Blaine. Good to see you, Rod. Good to see you, and uh, hope you have a good audience out there. Uh, should be a, a crazy night. You've never done this before, but uh, I know you're still talking about. It. You let me know when you're ready for intros. These guys are ready for you. Okay, let's do it right now. Go see the drivers and meet these guys. How are we doing it? Are we just rolling down the list by number yep. on entries. Yeah, just uh, little entry list starting with uh, number zero. Yeah, by the number. So uh, it's mixed up, but uh, you know we don't we're not qualifying tonight, obviously, for this race. So uh, that's how we're going to do it. All right, then let's do it. I'll be right back. All right, we're going to go meet the drivers. That'll be cool. This will be super fun. This is for the people. Get to meet all of them. So race will be going. The first race will be going green shortly. I'm thinking about 15 minutes or so. Yeah, that's the neat thing about what they do over here. Is each driver gets to introduce himself. Um, say what they want to say about themselves, their, their team, uh, and where they're from. And, you know, it's kind of neat. I like that. Yeah, it's super cool. We're going to have an invocation again, too, from Dan Lovell and a national anthem as well. So this is a full night of racing, multiple different tracks, seven different races. It's going to be wild. So hopefully you get comfortable and join us for the majority of it. We're going to be here. All right, Mr. Blaine, Donlin, and Rod, we'll be right back. I'm going to grab your best buddy here, and uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. All right, sounds good. Cool. Good evening, drivers. It's going to be another awesome race this evening. I guess I'm just going to get right to it. Uh, thanks for joining the mega marathon race today and anybody who's watching this live on youtube they're in for a ride hopefully they can stay for the majority of this thing we're going to try to get it done in under three hours we're going to see what's going to happen it's going to be exciting the whole way i guess we're just going to start at the top of the list of the entry list from lowest to highest so alex ortiz let her rip number zero alex ortiz driving for team record ball shout out to jeff who will be leaving uh 
I think, the leadership after this race. And uh, let's have a good race, guys. Number two, Josh Slocum. I'm on fire. Uh, thanks to Jeff and all the admins. You guys do all this. Uh, it's an honor to be here, and it's an honor to be on the I'm on fire team. Good luck, everybody. <clears throat> Driving in number three tonight, Carl Noakes from Martinsville, Virginia. I am representing Blaine Donlin's Tar Nation TV. Javier. Javier Negron, driving the number four car for Team Wrecking Ball. Um, thanks, Jack, for getting me into this race, and let's go. Number eight, Greg Global, driving for Big Stone Gap Racing in the Munster Energy Ford Mustang. Thank you, Frank, for the car. And uh, thank you, guys, all you guys, for putting this on. Who uh, All the work you guys did, man, y'all done great. Thank you, Jeff and Ken and all the guys that painted all the cars and stuff. Let's have fun in a clean race, guys. Yeah, Chris Elliott out of Mooresville, <laughs> driving the number nine uh, Pontiac Firebird team. I'm on fire. Just have to have a good race, guys. And say a special shout out to my wife who gave me this all these hours tonight to race. I appreciate that. Let's have a good race, guys. Thanks. Kelly Kelsey from Agricola, Mississippi. Driving the zero zero NWO Hulk Hogan, Hulk Hogan Chevrolet. Uh, really appreciate you, Jeff, for all you've done for the sim community. Jeremy Jeffries, driver of the number one from Louisville, Kentucky, uh, representing BSRL tonight for Team Rocket Racing. Let's have a lot of fun tonight, guys. Chris Van Vliet, driving the number 10 on the I'm on Fire team. A special thank you to Jeff. Jeffrey, for all that he has done for this race, um, everybody knows all the time he's put in, and it's very much appreciated. Have a great race, everyone. I was speaking, Mr. Divins. Uh, Spotty's not quite here yet. He's on his way, driving the 09 out of Sun City Center, Florida, driving for the Napa team, guys. So uh, go Napa. Good luck, teammates. Let's have a good one. And here is Jeff Brelia driving number 16 for I'm on fire, guys. Let's rock it. I want to say thank you to Frank Divins, Rodney Sullins, Blaine Donlin, uh, Craig Hagley, Gary Mingus, you guys, even Brian Wolf back in the day. Anybody that's ever contributed to some racing, we need everybody to help. So I want to say thank you for everybody. Thank you for the good times. It's been a blast. Let's have a good race. Chuck McClure driving the number 17 NWO. Chevy Camaro from Milesville, West Virginia. Randy Wall from Huntsville, Alabama, driving the number 21, Alabama Crimson Tide Dodge, driving for Team Napa. Shout out to my sons, Christian and Corey, grandsons, Adrian, Asher, and Asa. Good luck, everybody. Let's have a great race, and good luck, Team Napa. Jay, Greg Palmer, driving the 22 Trojan Hooters out of Les uh, Lewis, Delaware. Also representing BSRL, Bird Screwdrivers Racing League, coming May f the first week of May. I want a good luck to everybody, and thanks, Jeff Elliott and all the admins for uh, promoting this race and promoting all of Talladega Nights. Shout out to my daughter, Marissa, my son-in-law, Francesco, and their daughter, my granddaughter, Isabella. Good luck, guys. Brad McDonald. Gary McDonald driving number 24, Tar Nation TV. You know, if I say good luck, everybody, have a good time. Driving the number 29, Mike Mangelardi driving for Team Napa out of Federal Way, Washington. I'd like to give a shout out to my friends watching at the Rainier Room tonight. And good luck, everybody, and go Team Napa. <laughs> Jeff Goodpasser driving number 33, Tar Nation TV Turbo Dodge Charger out of Indianapolis, Indiana. We're going to make a sweep on Tar Nation TV tonight, boys. Rodney Sullins driving the number 38, Black Rifle Coffee Havana Brisa for Team Rocket Racing and Burnt Screwdrivers Racing League. Uh, thanks, Jeff. Talladega Knights, Tar Nation TV. Uh, it's been good. Enjoyed it. Uh, have a good night, guys. Driving the 41 Monster Energy Dodge from Big Stone Gap. Team Monster. I'd like to thank everybody for putting this on and wish everybody luck in the race. Good luck, guys. 47, Andrew Miller for Tarnation TV Turbo. Love the alliteration there. Uh, but uh, 
representing Camp Hill, Pennsylvania. Good luck, everybody, on uh, all these races tonight. Uh, it's going to be a good showing, and uh, uh, thank you to all you guys who have uh, contributed to uh, the sim racing community for NR2003. Love it. Hopefully we can keep it going for as many years as we can. Uh, Alex Moe, Riverside, California, driving the 48 NWO Chevrolet. Good luck to all teams involved tonight, and thanks to the administration for putting all this on. Good luck. Driving the 55 Chevy Camaro out of West Bend, Wisconsin. For Team NWO, uh, thanks to Jeff and all the guys here at Talladega Nights. It's been a blast, and good luck tonight, guys. Number 56, Nick Gunther. I am, I, I'm driving for Team Wrecking Ball. Thanks to Garland for giving me the opportunity. We're from Philadelphia, PA. We're afraid to bring home trophy for Team Wrecking Ball in Philadelphia. Driving the number 58, which actually belongs to my good friend, Jim Black, who's in the hospital I am substituting for it is Gary Slingshot Mingus from Tallahassee, Florida. Good luck to all the drivers. Thank you, Jeff, for everything you've done for this league. And thank you to all the admins who have helped hold this thing together, especially the donors. Number 60, Perry Bond, driving for Team Thunderbirds. Good luck, everybody. He's out of Virginia. Somewhere in Virginia, he likes to say. So good luck, guys. Let's have a good time. Number 63, Team Napa Ford Mustang being driven by me, Keith Bynum. I want to say good luck to all the fellow drivers tonight that we can have a good time, good fellowship. And thank you, Talladega Knights, for three wonderful years of team fellowship, uh, learning to, to be a clean racer. That's something that we've stressed and drove on to learn how to work together and make a whole race without causing problems. I'm proud of these guys. So good luck tonight, everybody. Beth Cole out of Nelliston, New York, driving the number 78 Toyota Camry out of Team Wrecking Ball. A big thank you to Jeffrey Elliott for his hard work here in this uh, series and this Amazing conglomerate of events here tonight should be a good one. Also, big shout out to my teammates out of Team Wrecking Ball for taking me in, allowing me to be a part of this team race with them. Number 80, Eric Lovell, driving for Big Stone Gap Racing, driving the Monster Energy Dodge. So, I want to give a big shout out to my teammates, especially my dad, you know, helping me, guiding me along the way. Jeffrey, you as well for welcoming me in, man. I've been here less than a year. I've enjoyed every minute of it. Craig Hagley in the 82 Rocket Racing Chevrolet Camaro, painted by Rodney Sullins. Thank you, Palmer, for putting me on the team. Thank you, Jeff, for everything you've done here for the league and all the friendships that I've made over here. It's been a great place to be. Wouldn't be here without you, bud. Grant Wesley from Princeton, Indiana, driving the number 88 Chevy Camaro, uh, representing Rocket Racing. Uh, and while also representing BSRL, Burnt Screwdriver Racing League. Uh, thank you, Jeff, for everything you've done, and good luck, everybody. From Baltimore, Maryland, driver of the 96, Ulysses Sandoval, representing the Thunderbirds, driving the, the 96 Chevrolet Camaro Thunderbirds. A big shout-out to Jeffrey Elliott, because without him, I... Well, thanks to him, uh, he introduced me to the world of sim racing, uh, I owe him everything. Uh, uh, I I learned a lot from him, so I'm going to dedicate this race for you, boss. Good luck, everyone. Number 98, Zach Roberts, uh, driving for Team Wrecking Ball. I just want to give a big shout-out to Jeff, my uncle. My uncle got me started in this. Jeff, he gave me such a warm welcome whenever I came in. He accepted me like I've been here forever. Not because I'm my uncle's last name or anything. But I just love, I love what everybody's done here, and uh, I just want everybody just to you know have a good race, and we'll put on a good show for you, Jeff. Thank you. Let's back it up to the Mister no, Driver Number Ninety Seven. Number Ninety Seven Driver Tarnation TV, Pat McCarsky. Thank you, Jeff, for everything you did, you've done, and everything you do in the future, brother. And happy anniversary to my other half, 28 years. Sorry, Pat. Uh, out of Waco, Texas, is the 99 of Josh Procurio racing for Team Napa. Uh, filling in for Nate Balzer this week. Uh, hope he's feeling better. He 
uh, messed up his ankle out on the farm apparently but uh hopefully i can uh do well on his name and uh, get a good race in for Team Napa. Number 043, Brian Lovell from Big Stone Gap, Virginia, representing BSGR Racing. Uh, you guys have a good race. Good luck, everybody. Dan. Uh, Greg Palmer's next. Yep, good, yeah, Dan. Go ahead, Dan. Uh, 388 uh, driving for Big Stone Gap Racing in the uh, Green Monster Energy Pontiac Trans Am. Thanks, Frank, for the paint job. Uh, Jeffrey, I just want to say appreciate all that you've done, all that you've taught me, everything that we've, uh, you know, accomplished with this league. It's been amazing, wonderful experience, been the best league I've ever raced in. I want to thank all you guys coming from other race communities that are joining, in the, joining us tonight. Um, just want to thank. Uh, Give a shout out to each and every one of you, uh, Blaine and Brad putting on, or uh, Blaine and Rod, uh, Rod, sorry, <laughs> putting on the uh, uh, broadcast for us, and uh, you know each and every week you do that uh, helps put us on the map. Appreciate you guys. Good luck to all you drivers out there. Stephen Brandstetter. Yeah, Stephen Brandstetter from Randlett, Oklahoma. Driving the 510 Thunderbirds, painted by Frank Divens, and I want to thank everybody at Talladega Nights. Let's have a good race. John Godfrey, 711 New World Order Chevy for Team Kamikaze Racing. Driving a U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds 712 Chevrolet out of Palm Coast, Florida. It's Bobby Biscuit Seminara. Also, like to thank Jeffrey for all his kind words, his invitations to race uh, with him, and and all he's done for the community. Good luck, guys. And driving a 931, I'm on fire. Pontiac Trans Am. Robert Breedlove from Lancaster, South Carolina. Just a big shout out for Jeffrey and all the admins at Talladega Knights. Our team on fire. Let's go light this thing up. That is awesome, guys. That took a long time, but thank you for all the kind words to Talladega Nights and to myself. It's it's it. What makes it is having guys like you. It's not me. It's having guys like you. So thank you for coming out here racing at Talladega Nights. We do have a special invocation coming from Dan. Dan, are you ready? Yes, sir. All right, floor is yours, bud. Everybody, bow your heads, please. Lord Jesus. And Father God, we uh, come to you tonight as a group of companions, uh, competitors, and as friends uh, from uh, this racing community and other racing communities. And we ask, Lord, that you just be with us, watch over us, guide us in our lives, guide us in all that we do, uh, teach us to be courteous and respectful to one another on the racetrack and in life. Lord, we just give you all the praise, glory, and honor for all that you do for us and for every day that you give us to enjoy this game and to come together. Uh, we thank you for helping us put on this special event, and we just uh, say it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you there, Dan. Amen. All right, Amen. Blaine, there's your uh, starting lineup for tonight's, all these uh, races tonight. Any final words before I put you back in the tower? Yeah, I think you fell asleep. There we go. Nope. I had my microphone, <laughs> my microphone off. No, like was said before, uh, Jeff, you run an awesome league with all your administrators. And uh, yeah, man, thanks for giving us here at Tarnation TV some wicked, amazing, awesome races to call, man. So today is going to be probably the epitome of all those things, trying to jam seven of these into one night. It's going to be I don't know if it's ever been done before, so honored to try to pull it off for you guys. So I hope everybody has a great race. And, yeah, kick the tires like the fires. Roger that. All right, Blaine, once I put you back down there, I'm just going to talk to you guys for a couple of seconds, and I'm going to hit the five minutes, and that's my first race will be going off in five minutes. I love you, Blaine. <laughs> See you, Blaine. Thank you, Blaine. Thanks, you, Blaine. Thank you, Blaine. Thank you, Blaine. Thanks, Blaine. Thanks, Blaine. Thanks, Blaine. Thanks. De Blaine, de Blaine. Hey now, back in the booth. What's up, man? Oh, I was listening in on them guys. That they're <laughs> some of them guys are they're hilarious. I got yeah, a lot. This is going to be something else tonight, and uh, there's about a five minute happy hour that they're gonna or not a happy hour, just a little uh, practice session that uh, Jeff said they were gonna use as a countdown timer, just to reset the race, get everybody settled, 
And then we will be going green at California for race number one. The sun will be up for this race. And then it will get dark at Homestead and it will be dark at Talladega. Yeah, it's going to be uh, some wicked racing tonight. This team thing is going to be kind of neat, going to add a little different to it. Um, I did listen in a little bit earlier into uh, some of the rules and stuff. Like we said before, there's only two drivers allowed for each team. But should someone who uh, is scheduled to run that have a little bit of trouble, about the time the first race starts, all the teams are still there. So they uh, have the ability to throw somebody in real quick, like to replace that driver if it should happen to fall that way. Yeah, and I do believe we had Garland Oaks sitting in, I think it was the reserve list there, and he is on track and he is racing, so it would appear that uh, that spot needed to be filled, so the 40 driver count is still at 40, so five drivers, eight teams, all teams are full, so if you if you showed up late, you're not getting in, but it's always yeah. great to have alternates. Uh, super cool that there's always extra drivers that are willing to just kind of sit to the side and watch. And if called upon, jump in a car and let her rip. And you got to give praise to Garland Oates for doing that. He just had hand surgery on his hand, so it can't be the easiest thing for him to do. But he is a talent. Uh, I've raced with him a number of times there on the Talladega tracks. Uh, fun guy to get behind and push. Right. You were saying that he with a hand surgery. That's pretty wild and sounds pretty serious, but, you know, thank goodness he's able to race tonight. That's uh, that's very cool. And Nate Balser with a, an injury as well, apparently, we heard in the driver introductions there as well, being replaced by Josh Mercurio. Yeah, and also Jam, Jim Black is in the hospital as well, so uh, yeah. Gary yeah. Slingshot Minglis decided to jump in for him, which is very cool, So, which is really makes it good because that way we have a full fuel of cars for mm -hmm. tonight, and that's what you want. That's the thing with the, with the three alternates. There you go. <laughs> we used all three of them at I mean, the last minute. Uh, how would they go about doing that, though? You know, you've got to think about it. As you guys talked into the uh, thing, Jeff has put uh, probably two months into this, and now all of a sudden you have a team that only has four drivers. So now someone's going to have to do a little bit more of a double duty. And, you know, is that an advantage or is that a disadvantage? You know what I mean? Would you want Greg yeah. Lovell in all four races? <laughs> or, you if... know, I mean, but. I mean, I just mean like, would you want Greg Love on all four races or Denny Carey on all four races when you're racing against them? You know what I mean? Yeah. Or the fact that these guys may have been practicing with each other, you know, for the past two months, month, Absolutely. three weeks. This race has been advertised for a little while. If you've been practicing with these guys for three weeks and at the last minute, you know, something horrible like that happens where you're like, oh, uh, now we need a new guy. You know, does new guy fit in into that into that slot? You know, good enough. You know, now you get that last minute decision trying to get that thing rolling. So, yeah, especially when you've uh, pretty much if you've already had made the plan of this driver is going to run at Talladega and this one's going to be at Homestead, and then you bring, let's say, for example, you know, you're a great super speedway racer. I lose you on my team. Now I've got to figure out who's the better guy or is the new guy, the good guy, to run where I wanted to put you. Right. Yep. Yeah, there's plus, a lot of things. Plus, we got to worry about the the thing, the points tonight, like we talked about on Sunday. We can't keep track of the points because no, no. Um, let's say – you know, you're driving in first and I'm driving in second and I punch you out of the way. I go off to win the race. So I get first place points for that race. But tomorrow they're going to sit down and they're going to review all of the races. And if I'm deemed that I was in the wrong punting you out of the way, not only do I get last place points, but I get last place points minus 10. And that's going to kill your team. Yes, exactly. The post race point the, the, the replay brigade is going to be in full swing tomorrow making sure this is all done properly so we have a national anthem to get to so do you want to we can run that if the, the viewers are ready for the national anthem we Why will not? do that let's get and we let's are get her going a couple minutes to go in green here so this should be pretty neat so yeah there you go let's uh let's do some the united states of america the star spangled banner the national anthem whatever you want to call it here it is
There we go. The national anthem is in the bank. Thank you to whoever sung that thing, because it was, well, it was an instrumental, so nobody sang it. But if you were singing it, thank you for singing along. Yeah. Now we're getting ready to do the first round sprint race. It's going to be fun. Uh, you know, I, I've been looking forward to this since uh, he said something about this event. I was going to be in it and had the opportunity to step up here in the booth. So I decided to do that. And it should be interesting night. Now we get to find okay, out to where here. people are going to be in qualifying. Because remember, it's on. random qualifying. It is. It's a lottery start. So what that okay, means is, well, time, the game figures on. out what's going on so the game will drop these guys in a random order at every sprint we will qualify for the main race you can look at some of these cars here yeah and it's going to seem a little Ooh. bit odd and a little bit different because um most normal races when they line everybody up everybody's going to be you know nose to tail doom, 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 except for the broadcaster cars which you'll find them usually in the back and you'll see them pop in and disappear sometimes but oh, yes. now, oh, yeah. speaking of broadcaster car i need to retire that don't i whoops yeah whoops. i already done it but so <laughs> see, seeing Jeez. how they're only going to be certain people running in this race so like for team wrecking ball you're going to have nick and zach roberts and and out there so there's only going to be two team two drivers from each team but every driver is on the server so mm -hmm. it's going to do a random call call uh qualifying for everybody and then the people that are supposed to be racing are going to pull in so now i'm looking at you know greg lovell um he's got two three cars in front of him and there's a big gap behind him you know and then you got to go back just a little bit to zach roberts in the in the 98 wrecking ball toyota and that'll all tighten up as we get rolling here rolling. I'm yeah. just zooming so, around inside these cars, checking out these cool-looking uniforms that these guys have painted. Rodney Sullins here with Rocket Racing. So basically, the, your drivers, the drivers are all going to pull up and into, in an order just as though they normally would. Um, the admins know that this could have a potential cause. So if you're on the outside line, you're just going to move up on the outside line. And it, it could have a potential cause of giving somebody a black flag. Mm -hmm. So they're already prepared and ready to, to uh, clear any black flags that come up. I did forget about that, yeah, because we do have 40 cars on track, and each sprint race only has, was it 16? 16, yep. Yeah. It's we forgot to mention, too, that the once, this, once the points are all said and done, there is a $250 purse to the winning team. That is correct. And as Nick, Jeff put it in the meeting, he said that, well, you know, if you, each team member will get 50 bucks, you might be able to take your wife for, out to uh, McDonald's. McDonald's is about it. Yeah, 50 bucks yeah. don't get you too far nowadays. Position number one, Nick Gunther. The 99 car behind him, Joshua Mercurio, covering for Nate Balser in that Napa ride. We got Team NWO, that's the Kamikaze. I just hear that song in my head. Oh, okay. If you're a wrestling song fan from the 90s. I'm not a you can see that uh, Big Stone Gap has actually got tangled in together. You've got uh, Greg Lovell and Denny Carroll running the high side together. Um, and those two guys always seem to run well together. They're wicked fun to watch at uh, Talladega because they just seem to uh, run to the front. Uh, you know, we saw some Sunday with Greg after having that spin and then starting 26 and working his way towards the front. So, Yeah. Is there only He's one wrecking ball? Channel. I only see one There's wrecking one ball car out there. That's, that could be. Um, they may have had one that couldn't have made it in and they didn't get somebody in in time. Because I've got wrecking ball um, as Nick and Zach Roberts. I only see... No, Zach is out there. He's just back in uh, 14th position. Oh, he is. Oh, he is back he there. Is back. Okay, gotcha. He must have just left the, the view of the, the, the pack there. Yeah, I, I think he just had a bad start. Yeah. And of course, as we were talking about him, Greg Lugo, Gubble comes out and pulls out into the lead. Jeffrey Elliott just got door slammed up into the wall there. These guys are like four wide coming down the front straightaway almost. Huge wide track here at California. Greg Lovell and uh, Jeff, John Gotcher have gotten out a really decent lead out there. Um, they got to be cautious, though, because I know Greg's good at it, but you got to save your tires a little bit in this one. Um, the setup is good. I actually helped Jeffrey with a little bit, getting it better, but it's uh, 
it can be a little bit harsh on the right front tire, so you got to be able to save it. Of course, you know, our laps are really short. We're only doing 13 laps. So, right. you know, you might be all right in that short amount of time, but... But running a 3X, you're not going to be forced to pit, but you, that, like you just said, the, the tires might become a factor if you drive it too hard. Yeah, and in, in, in a 3X environment, you, you could. It, you really could. So Greg Lovell's got to be kind of cautious about that. But there again, his, his teammates, two cars, uh, three cars behind him, sorry, and he is being closely followed by John Godfrey and Alex Moe. And one thing you've noticed that's different, too, with these cars in, being team cars, they're all painted up the same, but yep. they're not having those, you know, uh, certain numbers in, in serial or, you know, in order. Um, they actually, everybody is running their own numbers with the exception of Gary Mingus, who is a late arrival in replacing uh, that, the injured driver. So he's actually stayed into that car. Yep. That guy's Mingus. number is 7 to 12. Yep, I mean, this got the call last minute to replace Jim Black, so he's actually driving Jim's car, the number 58, where Gary usually runs a 12. Alex Moe is not content to me being behind his uh, teammate, which it doesn't matter who finishes ahead of who, as long as you guys finish up near the front. Yep. He uh, pulls out. I think he thinks he might have something for the, our leader, Greg Lovell. Yeah, so we've got Chris Elliott at the back of the pack in 16th and Jeffrey in 12th. So team, I'm on fire, not faring too well in race number one. But Big Stone Gap and Kamikaze claiming the top four spots. Alex was taking a peek down to the bottom of uh, Ooh, a little push Greg level, but yeah, yeah. Greg, Greg kind of Greg kind of cut him off a little nope. bit and then backed up and gave him the room. And yep. it looks like Alex has got the bottom, and let's see if he can get the run off. Greg wisely just kind of doesn't give him a lot of room to to come off. That gives Greg a better run off the corner. Now they're running side by side down the back straightaway. Alex did give him a little tap to move him over, but you know Greg is good all over the place on this track. Top oh, yeah, line, top bottom line. line. Looks like he's tucking in behind him. So what do you think? You think Greg's going to give Alex a little bit of the business because Alex just gave it to him? I, I don't know if he'll do it right off, but you might see a little bit later when he gets to the end of the race. He might be, he might do it, but then you got, you know, big team, big, uh, big scone gap is right there behind him too. in third, uh, Denny. So that's a good, good teammate. Now the draft isn't as important to hear as it is Talladega, but if you have two cars running against one car, that draft will come into play. Yep. Alex taking that high line. But the key things they got to remember here is it's it, yeah all of these guys want to win we know that oh, but yeah. gee, it's not so much about winning you know if uh, Greg doesn't want to go up there and rough up Alex Hunt to the point where he gets that penalty and if you know him and Denny finish third uh, second and third they're still great points. It's all about the points too and you really want to be careful because especially like right there big stone gap those two green cars. Up in that top, you know, out of the three cars of the top three, two of them are big stone gaps, so that's good for points there. As we roll back through the field, Mercurio, we got Grant Wesley in that 88 for Team Rocket, John Godfrey, Ulysses Sandoval for Thunderbirds, Rodney Sullins in the 38, painted up those cars, of course, those blue Team Rockets. Nick Gunther back there from the pole is now running in ninth. At the line, it will be ninth. Graham McDonald get a kick behind out of the, him. You get a kick out of the USA, uh, U.S. Army cars because they all have call signs. Yeah, they do. Yep. That makes sense now that you mentioned that. Jeffrey Elliott right there. Stephen Branstead are running in 12th. Keith Bynum back there in 13th. Those are slick-looking cars there, too, those Napa cars. Yes, Zach they Roberts do look good. in 14th. Pat McCarsky in 15th, right next to Chris Elliott. Ooh, Gen Denny Carroll goes around. I don't know if he went off the bumper or somebody, but uh, he went around in turn four. Yeah, we were just looking through the replay there, and we saw some smoke at the last second. Just got back to the leaders. I was just about to say we had two laps left to go here, and you know uh, Greg Lovell was starting to put a little pressure on Alex Moe, and then... Uh, looked up and I see Denny spinning sideways. I didn't get to see whether or not he actually was tapped or had any assistance. But I'll see if I can rewind that after the race. Currently focused on John Godfrey there in third position, staring at those leaders. His teammate being one of them, Alex Moe. He got a little love tap. I didn't catch the number there. Two 
two more laps to go here. Two more full laps. The race for third place side by side in the 56 of Nick Gunther right there. Right next to John Garfrey in the 7-Eleven. It looks like he got a little bit of assistance on that one, so I'll have to wait and see until afterwards what the uh, admins say about that. Uh, tomorrow, they'll check it out. Oh, on the replay of the spin back there? Yeah. 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 White flag in the air, final lap. First place position. Alex Moe in the 48, right behind him, Greg Lovell. Right behind him, Nick Gunther, back to the front row almost again. Had the pole position, Nick, fell back at like 12th, and now he's in third again. I, I think, uh, like we had talked about before, how the tires can, can wear. I think uh, Greg might have run a little bit too hard, um, and I think Nate just went back there and, and saved. I really do. Yeah, Nick's all over him, and now almost got a good run coming off the outside there. Oh, they're bumping. And they're spinning, not 100%, but he lost a couple of spots. And that'll be Alex Moe. <laughs> There's Alex's burnout. Just lock him up and drop a gear. <laughs> so I, I would say that some guys probably lagged back a little bit, saved a little bit, and then made that charge to the towards the front. And that's how you got to, ain't got up there in the second. Yeah, like you said, there's a, there is some strategy there. And even in these short races, you know, what do you do? The 3X does play into tires. You can overdrive it and burn those tires off. So we're just going to see if we can save up that replay here. It's going to call it race one of seven. See what was what lap number was the Denny Carroll spin here? Let me see if I can get that for you. I can find. I think it might be it. lap number a little ten. Yeah, it was on lap number ten. Yeah, it it looks like you got a timestamp. I think I got it here. Yeah, right there. Eight minutes and 30 seconds. Takes the low line and just a little tap in the corner from Grant Wesley. And the cars weren't really squared up enough at that point on the track. So like I said, that'll be up to the admin's discretion on how they feel that that, um, you know, we could sit up here all day and say, well, we think that he did this or he didn't do this or however it goes. That's what the admins will find out tomorrow and, and decide whether that's a, a deduction, deduction on points or, if it, you know, how it, how it goes. Right. Yeah. Anything can happen. And it, it is a it's not just one guy making that call. It's it's an entire team of entire team of admins that will comb over that. And then the team captains are probably involved in it, too. So there's no bias. Yeah, that was, that's how it should go. Yeah, you gotta you gotta make it fair. And I mean, it, it's it's hard. I've I've owned leagues before and had to try to make judgment calls like that. And it's it can become kind of difficult trying to figure out where you thought you know the the person was you know involved in it. Did the guy in front of him break? And then or did he you know did he get on the gas too soon? Or how did it go? And a lot of times you look at the replay, but you can't see their throttle and brake input, so you don't have that information. Right, right. Yeah, it would be kind of neat if technology would allow that, but that's part of the reason why it's also stock stock car racing. Yeah, and then you've got to you know, you gotta make an, an informed decision of it. And a lot of times you can you can kind of listen to the cars and find out whether or not they um, have lifted off the gas or onto the gas, but it's still, it's not as accurate. The replay of another car doesn't show you what their RPM range is, what their temperature gauge is, any of that. So it's, that does no. make it a little harder. Yeah, I never really thought about that. That is that is a thing too. You could get that telemetry probably from newer Sims, but not so much from this. Actually, you know what? There is a crazy amount of telemetry involved in this because it is a Sim. So that's sort of the wrong thing to say. There are uh, there are some programs out there which I think you could use that might might be able to give you a better idea of what happened, but not necessarily you know 
all of what happened. Right. Just lining up some cameras here for the for the next race, which will be right here in the middle of the night at Homestead, Miami. Randy Waugh out there in the Napa car. Let's follow him around here. Any drivers up there in the room you want to get a hold of? Let's see. We got... Um... We have given uh, young little Zach uh, Roberts a uh, head suck in the mic and brought him in here because of something that happened last night. I and heard this. Yeah, I saw the so, pictures. Zach, Zach, and I did too. Zach, tell us about last night. How'd that go? All right, so last night it was a crazy night to be to begin with. I I was I got in the top ten a few times. One time I went down for a pass down low with a few cars behind me on the bottom lane, and I got left out, and I accepted that. But then I fought my way back up there, and eventually got back into six on a restart, or seventh. Sorry, seventh on a restart. Sorry about that. And I just pushed my teammate Ulysses up there as far as I could, and then whenever. He, Final lap came through. He went to the travel. The outside or middle lane had a run. He went up there to block him and see if he could go with him. I took advantage. I don't want to say I took advantage of that, but that killed their momentum up there. Me and my uncle duked it out at the end there. Yeah, and and, and you, yeah, you got your first win. Now, is this your first win on an online race? It's not, it is technically yes. If you don't count the sprint races, this is my first ever points win. Oh, nice. Very nice. Because from the and photograph, I, it looked like it was a three wide. Or it could have been almost four wide finish. I, at one point, it was five wide. I was going to say, if you look at that picture, I often say that there's the one picture that you they show, and it's kind of from the front going back. You can see you, man. He's just yeah. about going up on two wheels. And you know, if you could back that picture up, they were five wide, little bays back. And the thing is, though, is, uh, so me, my uncle, and then Ulysses. So Ulysses is the owner of Team Wrecking Ball, okay, which is the team that I'm racing at for tonight. Which sadly he's not on our team, which is kind of ironic. But then I noticed that he's the team captain of our team on normal nights. And then my uncle, well, he's my uncle. So it went me, my uncle, and my team captain. So I thought that was a pretty cool night. Yeah, very good night. Well, congratulations. I was glad to see that uh, finally happen. And, and those of you out there that don't know, he is the youngest driver that we have racing here. At the young age of uh, 14 years old. Correct. And yeah. my birthday is April 24th. It's coming up. And in, and this guy, what you don't know about him is is he races go-karts on uh, dirt tracks out in Indiana, right? Correct. See, this is a game, too. Like, if this sim's been around so long that, I mean, I've heard real NASCAR drivers talk about this thing, going to tracks and, and trying out the tracks before they actually get to the real-life track. So it's been used by all kinds of different people for all kinds of different, you know, practice sessions, you know, oh, it's just a video game. Like, well, these track makers, they really do hit home runs when they put these things together. And if you can get, you know, an early look at something, at least you're not walking into these facilities not knowing anything about them. You know, it's it's pretty neat that even though it is just a video game, it, it does lend itself to uh, strategy in real life on the real track. Yeah, this this sim is known as one of the better NASCAR sims that people have made. I mean, nowadays you have NASCAR heat, stuff like that. But even the ones that nowadays people say do not compare to this racing. No, now they, they are more arcadic racing. You know, iRacing is probably one of the only ones that is better. But of course, iRacing is where this game would have gone had it would run its course. Right, because the guys who created iRacing own the source code to this so it just evolved from this to iRacing like I can jump in the NASCAR discipline in iRacing and it feels exactly like this game which yep. is so comforting because like you say those heat games very arcadey you know they feel like they're on rails sometimes anything can happen in this one because it actually feels like you're in control of the car you are in control of the car the entire time well, all right, well, they're going to get ready to go in here for the second one. Zach, uh, you, we're going to leave the mic open for you to uh, thank whoever you want to thank for things, seeing how you didn't get that opportunity last night. It's all yours. All right. I want to, you know, give thanks to my uncle for actually getting me started, and thanks for Jeff for keeping this thing alive for as long as he has. And okay, thanks buddy, for you guys for broadcasting here. stuff. Thanks for giving us a chance to actually on. be on the big screen. All right, they're getting ready to race. 
See you guys later. Alright, okay, you have a good one, bud. Thanks, Zach. No problem. As we retire our broadcasting mobiles, we get ready for race number two okay, in the heat. Remember, racing to the segment of tonight's off. broadcast. I did have the broadcast set up to actually list the heat numbers at the bottom of the screen, but it doesn't seem to be working. <laughs> so, you know, whatever. It was just a, bit, a little bit of text at the bottom. So this is race number two. I'll see once the race is compiled or once the broadcast is compiled that if it uh, actually I can set up chapters. So now, as you notice, there are going to be different cars out there. So just as soon as we got used to it, everybody was there. Now we've got a totally different field, with the exception of a few things, a few drivers. I noticed that the two is uh, still in here for the second race. Yep. Let's just Josh go through the field here before we're actually racing, because last time that bit us. So let's see. Pace car rolls off. We've got Dan Lovell, Josh Slocum, Chuck McClure. Whoops, somebody it's had a little bit of Sting. issue in the backstretch. Chris Elliott, Seth Cole, the 78 fellow broadcaster, Grant Wesley in the 88. His second start tonight, he was racing in both races for Team Rocket. Perry Bowen on the upside, the, up, not the top side there, Brian Lovell. Ken Roberts in the 55. Randy Wan, the 21. Andrew Mill, another fellow broadcaster from Top Dragster. Jeremy Jeffries, Mike Mangialardi, Stephen Branstetter, and Javier Negron. Now we're going off to Homestead, which is a true oval. No no dog leg on it. Um, this, this one runs pretty cool. There's a lot of grooves in here that work really well. Uh, I believe the higher you run up on the track, as long as you're not uh, pushing it too hard on the exit, um, you'll save tires a little bit better, but you'll make up a lot more ground on the bottom okay so later. You're, you're recommending highline to save maybe and yep. then uh, if you get the go-go juice out maybe you can hook her up on the bottom once the car sets yeah and then one thing though is like i said it's a sprint race it's a very short race we're only running 14 laps the tire wear i hear i don't think is going to be quite so bad oh looks like uh perry bomb just got a little bit of assistance from the 43 uh brian Lo oh it's 043 sorry uh, brian level um, sending him around. I believe, like I said, I, I can't speculate whether it did happen or not, but uh, it looked it from here. Yeah, we did see some smoke back there in the back half. Beginning of see, lap I'm gonna get three. It. Mike Mangelardi's in there tonight. See that? I got the name right tonight. Yep. And you know the great thing about tonight, too, is we're not going to be calling them uh cars <laughs> you find and they're thinking they're trucks by mistake we're gonna yeah. you we're not gonna say oh uh, he's in the uh, 55 truck no cars 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 yeah. cars there's a lot of palm trees on this at this camera angle and there's a lot of obstructions in front of the camera uh tv2 might be a better option the i'm on fire cars those orange ones are, uh josh slocum chris elliott having a better start this race he was in heat one at the back this lottery start does affect a lot of things. You know, guys who would qualify up in those front, you know, half dozen start, uh, spots, if the lotto qualify puts them at the back, they got a lot of work to do. We see Brian Lovell on the outside there of, uh, I missed the car number when it turned. The 17, I believe. Yeah. The 17. That's Dan, Dan Lovell. Uh, Dan level, okay. And the 388. Yeah, that's what I. That's what I want. I'm see. I'll get this. Yeah. I mess. I'm going to mess up a few of them. You know that. There's a lot of levels. Yeah. And a lot of them run 88, 8, 388. <laughs> <laughs> it's 088. Is is you can, there's a lot of eights. Yeah. It was uh, Greg made it easier for us by just going to the eight. Yeah, he dropped it and just went to the eight. Yep. Josh Locum is just. Kind of right now, lead that out front leading. Um, like I said, I, I raced with these guys during some of the practice races. Uh, I don't think tire wear is going to be as critical here as it was at California. But it's still, you know, if you're running it too hard, just way too hard, you are definitely going to burn the right front up. Yeah, multiple groove racetracks are always a lot of fun. There's probably about three lines here we can kind of see from this helicopter view. 
drivers opting for two or three possible grooves. The texture on the track is also there for a reason. The, uh, there's, they're wide enough. You could probably run five, six wide around. I wouldn't recommend it, but no. you know, no. it's wide enough to do that. But the track doesn't really race that way. Um, you're more you know, high on the straightaways and to the bottom in the corners. Uh, like I said, although there is a little bit higher, a, a better, higher groove here, uh, is it, it's not going to be the fastest way, but it does save tires. And then right. the 17 has taken over the lead. It looks like they're about 180 mile an hour at the end of a straightaway and have to back out to about 160 to head into those turns properly. Yeah, you can't run full throttle. You just got to, you got to lift. Um, some drivers like myself will probably use a little bit of brake. Now, I know people are going to say that seems kind of weird, but um, you go in, just kind of tap the brake and it just puts a little nose weight on the front mm -hmm. tires and, and it makes them grip a little bit better. And I brake a lot at tracks where people don't. Um, but some some people will just ease off the throttle, roll through the corner, um, and roll back on the throttle. That's the other key thing to save those that right front tire. Is don't hammer on it; just roll into it so you don't burn that right front tire off. Yeah, and dragging the brakes with the throttle going is uh, it definitely, like you said, it sets the car different, and it and it does apply here in this because it is a simulator, um, much like in real life. You know, you keep the power in those wheels, you can drive it a lot harder. I mean, you do you do more a little bit more damage to the wheels possibly in certain areas of the track, but McClure and oh, Wesley battled for that lead, but now McClure has pulled away. And I think if you get a couple of guys that line up good together um, and start doing a little bump drafting down a straightaway, that will pull him right up to him. Because yes. as you can see, the 88 and the 47 are in his draft, and they are tight together. So Grant Wesley and Andrew Miller. I've got themselves, you know, right up behind each other. Whoop, now Miller pulls out to uh, try to go past him. Hey, Andrew Miller's a fellow broadcaster. He runs a YouTube channel called Top Dragster. That 47 car there, the Tarnation TV Turbo. TTTVT. Uh, just in case you wanted to say all three, four letters in a row. The TTV, TTVT. It's, I, I created it, and I can't even remember what it is. But yeah, yeah thanks to Andrew for coming down here. And He's not doing too much talking this evening. He's doing a whole bunch of driving. Those. Yeah, there's a, some of guys like that that uh, I've never uh, never seen them race before. So some of these guys, it's the first time I've ever, you know, got to see them race. So in the back of this pack, we've got uh, Stephen Brandstetter, Mike Mangiolardi, Brian Lovell, Perry Bone, and Javier Negron off pace. Everybody else you can pretty much see on this camera angle here. As far as teams go right now, though, if I were to say, the uh, I'm on fire and Team Rocket. Mm -hmm. uh, they're doing probably the best out of all. They've got more cars, team cars up in the front. You've got uh, McClure, Brian Lowe, Dan Level. Yeah, McClure and Wesley are just racing each other like crazy out here. And these two guys are phenomenal racers also. They've been around a long time. They've played this game a lot. And you know what? Wesley gets to him, but McClure is able to hold him off. And for the NWO team there, the, the Kamikaze team, McClure's going to need this win. Yeah, they've got to, if on the tie side, they've just got to get a little bit tighter and push down the straightaway. And so when we're down to the last lap already, yep, uh, these sprint races go by so quick. It's funny, but, too. Uh, right now, Slocum actually has the most laps led. So the only way the only way that McClure can get those bonus points is to actually win this race and tie Slocum for the most laps led. But Wesley has taken it from him. Yeah, he got a little bit of help from uh, Brian uh, Dan Level going down the straightaway on the front stretch, and then took the corner just right. And and, and literally, that was an awesome run by him. He <laughs> he just had I think you know, and he wasn't up near the front during the at the start of the race. So you know, he was kind of uh, just saving the tires a little bit, and then had a little bit more at the end as his teammate comes up to give him a little congratulations nudge. Yep, Jeffrey's in the number one team rocket. Wesley out of nowhere on that last lap to, well, not out, of, not out of nowhere. They were really racing each other really hard. Wesley and McClure. Wesley coming out with the win on that one, 180 points off that race. Oh, there we go, the old Grant Burnout. Yeah, and then it's kind of, you know, it was a, some good team racing there, um, I, although, I don't know what's going to happen with some of the, you know, drivers that 
may have get, been the penalty points, but uh, you had uh, I'm on fire and well, Team Rocket. They were two of the teams that were up there, so that should give them some good points. That's the thing. We're so concentrated on the winner of the race, sort of. Right. It's, it is funny how... Uh, how, what did I name that? Race number two. There it is. Race two of seven. How we are, you know, we, we, we can really only focus on the winner, but, you know, the race to get there is amazing. And then, of course, you're also looking for the other teammates where you've got, uh, you know, like Jeffries and Wesley. Okay, well, where did they where did they finish? Well, Jeffries finished in fifth. Wesley won the, won the race. So then you're looking at McClure and his teammates was Ken Roberts. No. Yeah, Ken Roberts. And again, these races are moving quick. But you don't even need to need to win it, is what I'm trying to say. Like if you were you and your teammate finished third and fourth, you might come out of that race with the most points. Compared to yep. the guy who won it and then his teammate coming in last. So there's a lot of things that definitely will tally up and, and make this very tough for the administrators to uh, tally this all out. Uh, who you got in mind to talk to now intermission number should, two? Yeah. I'm thinking we should have uh, Grant Wesley, our winner. I was just taking a look Makes at uh, what we had going on over here, and uh, he's mm. on Team Rocket, and he's not scheduled to run for the next race nope, at Talladega, so I thought we ought to go grab him. Sure. So let me yeah. see if I can yeah. find him. He, uh, Grant, ran the first two heats, so he will have to sit out. He can't run three in a row. He can run three, he just can't run three in a row. As Rod is finding Grant Wesley, we head to Talladega. Grant Wesley, live on the air, buddy. How you doing? Yeah, I got you. You and McClure racing each other like crazy, man, for a for a well-deserved win. It could have been anybody's. Yeah, that Kamikaze team, they're going to be tough to beat tonight. Uh, I, I think they got maybe the first win. Uh, I don't remember, but I know they're running pretty strong. And, uh, yeah, so I worked with Chuck there for a few laps, and then I realized I had a little momentum on them, and I just tried the outside. You know, you had to try something. If you follow them, you're just going to follow them, right? Right, yeah, that's it. it. It looked to me like you might have uh, kind of stayed back a little bit and saved your tires a little bit and then made a really good charge on the outside there at the end. Yeah, well, that's uh, early in the race, starting on the inside. I just didn't want to wash up, you know, and get into somebody. Uh, you know, I'm not sure what the call is going to be like in the first race with uh, Denny, but I, was, I didn't want another uh, mishap like that. So I was just kind of taking it easy and kind of saving tires because of it. and. Yeah, you're right. I think I did save a little tires. Probably why I was able to get those runs like that on the outside. Which was your was favorite a... groove? That's what I was kind of watching. Everybody's running a different line there. It looks like two. Maybe there could even be like a third sort of hybrid line in between the two. But you, you uh, were think, digging that top. Well, I think the bottom's the preferred line for sure. I think that's where the speed's at. Uh, there's some other guys out here that's making it work better than I was. Um, I ran with them in practice, like Bob Simonera. I don't know if he was in that race or not, but I noticed in practice he was pretty strong. Uh, personally, I prefer the middle. You know, I just I can hammer away through the middle, and it works pretty good for me. Biscuits is yeah. not racing until this coming race right now. <laughs> Yeah, so was there a strategy with you guys in the rooms uh, beforehand, like when, you know, all you guys are kind of in your separate rooms talking about strategy, who you're going to put on what track, or are you guys, are you like a fan of just everything? Yeah, the man, uh, Greg Palmer, uh, our team leader there, he kind of called the shots on who was going to run what. He did ask, you know, what we if we had a preference or not. Uh, I told him, I said it didn't matter to me. You know, I'd run whatever, uh, and that's pretty much a general consensus among all of us. But yeah, we kind of, you know, we kind of planned it out a little bit. That's what I'm thinking. The, the, you know, the variety of tracks, especially tonight, they're, they're, they're definitely different tracks, but they're all so much fun. And 
everybody's going to be in the main event being the Talladega race. So we see you opted to take the first two and sit this one out. Yeah. Um, I think my next race may be race number five. Uh, yeah. I think it may be, uh, what is it? Homestead. Okay. Yep. Yeah. We got you yep. and Jeffries again at uh, Homestead heat five. Yeah. I think, uh, it should be a good one for me. I'll probably, uh, hopefully I get a better draw, man. The freaking lotto is huge. Mm. Um, We've had a couple guys that drew deep in the field in both of those events, and uh, I'm hoping our luck turns around a little bit. We can get a couple cars up front. Yeah, we were talking about that there Sunday when we were kind of uh, mentioning about the race coming up, that it, you could get stuck in the back just because of the lotto and, and really have a hard time getting up to the pack being that it's such a short race. Yeah, that's the key right there is it's a short race. You know, it's it's easy to save tires in a long race and just come from wherever in the field, you know. Uh, you can strategize, you can hot pit. There's all kinds of different things you can do to get through the field without actually ever really passing a car. Um, but yeah, these short races, man, they're, uh, I mean, they're gloves off style, you know? I mean, I, I know you've seen it in the first one. Den me and Denny were going pretty hard at each other, I think. But uh, yeah, they're a lot of fun. Well, that's good. Well, I, I was glad to see you guys you get the win there. Uh, we're going to get you back up there so you can uh, talk with your team and whatnot. Uh, good job. And uh, then we get to go to that last race where you're all out there. That's going to be real fun. Yep. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, thanks for your time. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Grant. Yeah. Thank you to Grant Wesley for joining us live on the air. Yeah. How come I can't remember who won first race? Uh, yep. Now you, you made me stop and think about it. Yeah. Was it, <laughs> uh, was it Alex? Yeah. It's Alex Mo. Right. Okay. I'm just putting check marks beside uh, Heat 1 and then Heat 2 being won by uh, Grant Wesley. And we didn't grab Alex Moe because um, Josh was pretty tickled about the fact, or sorry, Zach was pretty tickled about the fact that he won his first race. And I really wanted to get him up in the booth being, a, you know, there wasn't a live race yesterday. So. Yeah. What, a, what an awesome finish, too, man. To finish especially to finish against that i mean this league's full of of all stars we've we've broadcasted enough here to know the the caliber you know the competition but the nobody's racing dirty either uh, obviously mistakes happen that's just what happens in racing but everybody's on rails they all know what they're doing they all know what to expect from each other uh super super fun coming out here and doing this and for you to be at the end of a main event in a spot to win it but then like you said being almost five wide coming out of that tri oval and get the push to the win and what was the what was the interval okay, on that win it, oh, like it, was gosh, close. It, was, it had to be close yeah yeah, yeah once the in, the in the picture i would say zach's probably got maybe six inches on his uncle wow and and, and he had still hadn't quite got to the line on that one so, so it was a photo it, finish it, yeah, if uh, Ken had a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit more of a run, you know, it might have been a closer, a closer finish. He'd still had about, he probably had about eight inches go until he hit the line. So it was pretty close. Yeah, that's great. I got to get out, start racing again. There's a lot of big races coming up. Like we have obviously this one tonight. Uh, and then we've got the the King of Kings Eliminator coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, did I have the Eliminator? No, I think I erased it actually. Did I erase it? Yeah, it's the Elmo race. But, uh, yeah, the Eliminator is coming up in a couple of weeks. That's another huge event. So, yeah, we're I'm pretty busy behind the scenes making sure all this stuff's going to work. But, the uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm pretty busy, but I'm, I'm happy to, for it to kind of all settle down and then, you know, get in the car and start doing some racing. Well, that's the fortunate thing I have for luck is I, I race at least four nights a week, so... Um, was five until I got offered a chance to come up here and sit in the booth with you on Sundays. And like I said to you, I'd much rather be up in the booth than racing out there on that Talladega track. That's what we're going to be going to right now. And it's we got Mr. Lovell in there, uh, Greg Lovell, and we have um, one of the other levels. I can't see the number right now in my view, but they're for a big stone gap racing. It'll be coming coming to the front. I'm pretty sure. And if you think this is neat now with 16 cars, you wait till we have 40 drivers out there for that last race. You will see what we mean by the caliber of drivers. These guys will be three wide. 
it's just crazy and they and they do it lap after lap it's amazing well and the thing too is like in these sprints the uh pit frequency is cranked up to put tires into play but there is no damage being run and no yellows the main event will have moderate damage and we will have yellows turned on it will be 30 uh, 47 laps total here at talladega night super speedway and of course we will be running a 3x which puts us into about a 12 to 14 or so lap pit window so there's all kinds of different strategies and there's going to be 40 cars out there too so that's going to be As quite we- the race good pastor will lead the field to the green as we saw on Sunday with the truck race, they had only one caution and, and green flag pit stops. They just, it opened right up. And before you know it, we were having trouble keeping track of where, who everybody was because the field got so spread out. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's cool. The green flag cycles are great because it does really make it uh, for an interesting broadcast. And then you start focusing not even so much on the lead pack and that, Right there, the 63 of Bynum got turned. Three quarters of the field just got absolutely annihilated. Um, But hey, there's no yellows and there's no damage, so. And Kelly Kaza got out there with the early lead, and now um, through all that, um, good pastures in front of him, he's just tucked right in behind him. Now, you'll see probably someone like Kelly Kaza, he's not going to go and try to try to win this thing so much as unless he's got somebody behind him that he knows he can trust that'll push him take second place that's good points mm-hmm. i was just gonna say that it's about the points right now the top five look like to be the only cars left in contention and they're every and there's one from every team yeah so, and so you want to do the best you can yeah and right there, you can see Craig Hagley tucked into the bumper of Buckshot there, and they just drove right by Good Pastor. Yeah. It actually looks like Eric went with them, so they just leapfrogged. It's like I said, you're going to see him sit there until he knows he's got somebody behind him. So even though it's not a teammate, uh, you know, these guys all race against each other a lot. So they know who they can run with and who they can't run with. And a lot of times, those kind of alliances stick so even though they're not racing in the same team uh you know i can gain an advantage if i go with this guy so i'm gonna do it exactly yeah maybe you don't need you know everybody wants to win but in that oh did we just lose brancetter i just uh the camera just dropped out on brancetter there no that's good pastor i was following the main pack brancetter may have had a connection issue we were oh there he is he just popped back now he might lose the draft off that leg that's unfortunate and out of that incident and in the uh, early going there you've got greg lovell and john good john uh good Fr- godfrey sorry I'm, i got that right uh but they're back six six almost seven seconds behind the leader eight seconds now at the line and there there's just unfortunately there's no way they're going to be able to make that up with no caution Right, we will turn on the top left there. You will see the interval to the leader. So the leader has the speed, the average speed, and then every car behind is their distance from him. So if that sixth position, the number eight car of Greg Lovell, being eight and a quarter seconds away from the lead, but like you said, there's not enough cars in that pack to make any ground with a four these four cars up front you got zach roberts uh, a young man we talked with a little earlier uh being followed by the three who's driven by garland oaks um because the original driver that was supposed to be in the car that was gary heisner could not make it tonight so um Grant, oh, that's heisner, one of the ones where, yep so that's where uh, they come in handy to have a, a reserve driver set and ready to go behind him you've got keith bynum um Bob, the Biscuit Seminara, and <laughs> then you've got Chris Van Leet, and they are, uh, you know, unfortunately, they're not going to make up any ground, but they're just tucked in together with each other just to trying to see what they can do to get the best finish they can. And that really, that incident separated a lot of them. Mike Mangelardi is way in the back with Greg Palmer, and they, you know, they just got to go, like we talked about earlier, you just got to fight for every point you can get if that kind of stuff happens. Can you uh, 
Can you go up there and grab Seth Cole, bring him down? I can do that. Let's see if we talk to Seth here, fellow broadcaster from Flat Out Racing Network. All right, we've given uh, uh, Mike and the headset to Seth. Seth, you're in the you're right here live with me and Blaine. Hey, Seth, hey, how you doing, up? bud? Doing good. Oh man, we just you know we're looking at our schedule here. We noticed you weren't driving in this race, so we'll just grab you and like you you were out there. Um, wild setup tonight, man. Has anything ever been done like this? You've been doing this broadcasting thing way way longer than we have. Have you ever seen like a sprint I race mean- extravaganza all in one broadcast before? I mean, I've seen where where they've done maybe like time-based races. I've seen two-hour races. I've seen six-hour races. I've seen, you know, maybe four-hour races. You know, somewhere in the middle. Mm. I've never seen where they've actually done something like this and and been able to put it together in a way where you end up having a team that has to, in specific races, kind of represent. Usually, if you have a team race, it's everybody in one race, and the way that they split this out is really unique. I love the way that they put this together. I, I don't know if this was a, a brainchild of Jeffrey Elliott, but if it was, credit to him, because I've never seen anything like this before in my life, and the way that it's executing right now is... It's nerve-wracking for a driver point of view, I'll tell you that much. Uh, these are intense races with these sprints. Yeah, these super fast races, especially when they crank up the fr- uh, the pit frequency to actually burn those tires off. You guys are struggling to kind of create that, you know, keep that strategy in the back of your head too. Like, I can't drive this thing too hard. Maybe not so much at Talladega, but at the other two tracks, at Homestead and, um, and California, the tires can become an issue and... I mean, as far as like a, there's probably going to be a three hour broadcast tonight. This is one way to keep it exciting. Just these like six super quick races before a main event. And you bring up about the fact of the three X, I mean, especially California and Homestead, it's a tale of two halves. They're track position racetracks. So you want to charge to the front as early as possible when you have that grip but then you give up that tire ability from maneuvering to the top or the bottom when the race gets towards the end. So you kind of have a, I don't know, it, you're kind of conflicted mentally of do I save tires in the early going and then maybe try and have something to try and pass five, six cars at the end or do I use up my stuff in the early going to have that track position and hope I have enough to hold them off. Right, plus you've got the whole lottery qualifying you know, being in the mix as well, so... You don't even know where you're going to be. Yeah, that's the the X factor, right? I mean, if you're lucky and you have that good starting track position, then it kind of alleviates what your strategy is. But you start towards the back and you've got all those cars to pass. And I know it may not seem like much with 16 drivers on the track in each one of these heat races. But when you consider the fact of how little time there is to get to the front, that's a lot of field to have to get by in a short amount of time. So yeah, are you I'm watching gonna, this thing live? Because Eric I'm Lovell just, just took the lead on the final lap. The they big, are battling up front. Yeah, the the big push at the end. There. They were working, they were working on Kelly for the past few laps, and then out of nowhere, we've got Eric Lovell leading this pack coming into thir- uh, turn three. That was a really nice move. He got a lot of a really good push by uh, yeah. Pastor and, and just got out there. Unfortunately, he left Fluid Pastor kind of hanging, but he. Uh, he had to do it. It's not his teammate, so he had to go into. Oh, and then the uh, buckshots headed for the top. Oh, oh wow! Oh. This is going to be. Oh, oh <laughs> Holy moly! So wow, that was crazy. Okay, so Eric Level ended up in third at <laughs> the last second. Buckshot got the win. And Buckshot got Deli the Gaza. win. Wow. Okay. The alliance is working to last for very long. You had five different drivers up there for five different teams. So mm-hmm. it was uh, your friends are where you find them. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. But uh, they come out until of that trial. It, it was going to be every man for himself. Until it gets to the end. That's yeah, but wild. This, is, this is a brainchild of Jeff, uh, Jeff Elliott. Yeah, this was something that he designed. He's been working on it for quite a while and then finally executed it. And so far, it's been wild. What a great win there for... For Kelly. Oh, and he's already retired. This is how fast these things move. We got to get into, and that was race number three of seven. They're going by quick, and they are definitely exciting, to say the least. Uh, Thank you very much, Seth, for uh, allowing us to kidnap you for the past, uh, you know, five or so laps of that sprint race, man. Oh, absolutely. Pleasure to be here in the booth with you. Uh, 
getting my feet wet in preparation for April 13th. That's a big one, man. Thank you for lending a hand on that one because it is going to be a lot of work for me on my side. So having you and Rod sitting up here doing most of the talking, it will be uh, will be helpful for sure. And uh, I guess tonight you had the the, the night off at, at Flat Out. Yeah. Uh, it, yep. Going to be able to move on over and uh, do some Tarnation TV. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, oh, it, I'm, I'm looking forward to two set. That sounds like it'd be able to have a good time. Absolutely. All right. Yeah, I will bring you back up. Uh, thanks for coming down. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks. Thank you, Seth. Good luck the rest of the way. Appreciate it. Seth Cole from Flat Out Racing Network. Thank you very much for that. Coming up was here. a wild finish. Yeah, that was a crazy finish. We're talking to Seth and we're just kind of watching Kelly, Kazi, and, and the crew, you know, side by side, da 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 da. And all of a sudden, that big push, Eric to the front. But then Kelly Kazi comes out at the end, the winner. I was I was watching it and I'm like, I didn't want to interrupt Seth. And I'm like, going, <laughs> oh, it's getting good. It's getting good. So now I got to find Kamikaze. There we go. Yeah. So we could actually hijack. We could grab Kelly if you like. We can talk to I'm him. I'm working that. on that already, buddy. All right. You just got to remember who you're grabbing on this one. You got to reach for Buckshot. Yeah, Buckshot. <laughs> Double O. <laughs> Kelly Kazi right, in the booth, Tarnation TV style. You got us? Yeah, I got you. Man, that was something else. <laughs> Yeah, it was exciting there. I mean, I hate what happened there at the very beginning, you know. So, uh, but yeah, it was it was really exciting uh, there at the end I, when that zero car when we passed him. I didn't know if we were gonna, you know, he was gonna get involved, and he did. It was a wonder. I wasn't sure he was back there, but when they came up to the outside, I said, "That's got to be." I don't know how they're doing that with two cars because uh, Craig was really all over me, doing a great job pushing me. And so, when I looked back there and saw that's what it was, and then. Uh, when Eric came down in, in in front of me, I said, well, that might help me because I knew I'd have a chance to get by him. So, but uh, it worked out. I hate what happened with Craig there at the end. They kind of squeezed each other a little bit and he tried to run us up the track, but it was, a, it was a good race there. Good finish. All things considered, don't you think? Oh, yeah. yeah. That was crazy finishing. Watching you, like, you know, basically lead that whole thing and then having Eric get that big push to the front and like, oh, geez, that, that, uh, we we were just figured we were gonna watch you just walk away with this thing, but then you did in a you know turn of events at the last second, of course. But that's Talladega, I guess. That's what they say. It's on the t-shirts. Yeah, yeah. We we you know we got a good little run there. When he got down in front of us, it was just perfect. I was really easing up to him and came out of that turn. I mean, I was right over him before I jumped out there, and he did all he could without wrecking me. So, but uh, it was a fun race. So what's y'all have? Yep. Do y'all have y'all have a tally going on the num- on the points yet? Or oh, I know. Well, we know the winners because you guys had a win in the first race, right? Was it Alex that won that first race? Yeah, he okay. won. And then uh, uh, race number two was won by Team Rocket by uh, Grant. Yeah. So. Uh, you took third race. Yeah, so it's, Alex Moan and then Kelly Kazi. So, I mean, it's looking good for Kamikaze Racing. Jumping back yeah. and forth so quick to each race, it's really kind of hard to try to keep track of the points and who's ahead. But you guys are doing well. We can tally the wins pretty easy. That's good. Yes. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. It's well, I mean, right we, I, th- I, th- I think I think we've, uh, I mean, I think we finished first and fifth in the first one, third and twelfth, and then I think first and sixth then. So I think we're, I think we're doing okay. Yeah, especially yeah. with a couple of wins, that's going to definitely help. I don't know about laps led. That's also some bonus points that come in handy, too, those five extra points for, for leading the most laps. So, yeah, the whole thing, I, I don't uh, envy the administration staff here for the next, uh, you know, in like into tomorrow, combing through all these replays and, and divvying out all these points. But they're dedicated, man. We're going to find out sooner than later who actually wins this event and who wins that 250 bucks. Yeah, I mean, this is a great format, I think, you know, I mean, it's it's different, you know, and you got to, adding these other tracks kind of, you know, makes it a little interesting, but they, you know, the two tracks that they picked are really, they're not easy to run, but they're comfortable to run, you know, you got to, you got to know what you're doing with them, but it was, it was a good choice of tracks. So, yeah, you've got Alex and Chuck back out there for heat number four, Alex, of course, winning 
here in heat number one. So that turned out to be a pretty good call. Oh yeah, Alex is is strong. Well, he's from California, so I assume he better he ought to be able to run <laughs> California, huh? But uh, you know, uh, he's the thing about it that with a lot of start though with at at California and Homestead, it's just tough to come from the back because there is a good bit of tire wear on both those tracks. So, you know, Rodney I think started 16th and got up to fourth on the first one, and one of the things you know he just he just he wore stuff out, you know, he couldn't get much higher than that. So uh, a little look at the draw some, but you still got to be able to know how to drive it too. Right, yeah, you got to right. save the tire at the California track. You're, you're smarter. If you can keep the fat, the pack, but not really abuse that right front, you're definitely going to be a lot better at the end. Yeah. But when you start at the back, you really can't conserve, yeah. you know, really it's only what 14, 13 laps, you know? So it's, it's kind of the look at the draw on that part, but yeah, you really got to, drive the car and uh take care of those tires so and uh alex did a great job i think he started like third or fourth and got to the front pretty quick so he did a good job and john did a, had a good race too that race so we look forward to this one hopefully we'll get it yeah let's do it i guess we're getting ready to go there right now so yeah we'll uh we'll let you go kelly thanks for joining us up in the booth here and yeah good luck the rest of the night all right we appreciate you guys good luck buddy Thank you. Kelly Kazi from Team Kamikaze. Yeah, it's going to be, it's hard to say. I think you know, Team Kamikaze is doing pretty good. Uh, they, some of the teams have had some good runs. Um, you know, I think uh, the one I was kind of thinking might have a really good chance of that big, big stone gap racing. They're kind of haven't had a lot of luck. The no. drivers are getting spinned and knocked out and one up front, one up back. And C2, we are also looking at the winners. You know, we're not so focused on the big picture. That's really going to be the thing. If these yeah. guys, even if they're consistently finished in fourth and fifth place every single race, they've got a better chance of winning than the people who are actually winning the races. Because you're walking out of there with three, 400 points consistently compared to what can happen from first to 16th. You know, it's like, what, like, like didn't Matt Kenseth win the NASCAR championship in like 2002 or something didn't even win a race. Yeah. Uh, I think he was one of the ones that did that. Yeah. Or he was, won I one race one. and he just finished top 10 every, every week, top 10. Yep. That's it. I mean, point your way in. That's the thing yep. is you gotta, and that's what these guys have got to do. They've got to race like they're racing, you know, point racing to, you know, get every amount of part of their team up there as far as they can, you know? Yep. 100 percent back to the, california it's it sucks like okay, he said when you when you unfortunately get stuck in the back uh or you know a bad pill draw and you're stuck in the back it makes it it does make it harder to come through the front but you you still i think you you know as long as you don't have an episode like the beginning of that last race where we you know a lot of the field was kind of knocked out real quick mm -hmm. you you know you you've got to kind of conserve aggressively you know try to go to the front but still trying to conserve because once you get to the front and your tires are all used up you know you may not you may not have enough that's the thing yeah you in the first like lap that you know pretty much took everybody out uh which is so unfortunate too especially in such a a neat i'm trying to say like a neat uh format that's the word i'm looking for format yep. <laughs> we got uh i think jeremy jeffries there uh on the on the pole for, the, for this race um uh, chuck mccore is on the outside of him now chuck did it was running pretty good in that first race i think it was the first race that he was in i'm checking that sorry get... he was in the second race Oh, we're stacking them up. <laughs> We've got, let's see, Jeremy Jeffries, Chuck McClure, Gary Mingus, Perry Bond, Jeffrey Elliott, Frank Divens, Nate Gunther, Brian Lovell, Denny Carroll, Seth Cole, Rodney Sullins, Graham McDonald, Jeff Goodpaster, Alex Moe, Josh Slocum, and Josh Bacurio. Tonight, that's our first time tonight seeing Gary Ming slingshot Mingus uh, subbing for uh, another driver that couldn't make it tonight. 
Why can't I find Rodney? There he is. Rodney was mentioning to me earlier that he painted these. He does paint these suits up on these drivers. And yeah, you don't really get a good look at the suits sometimes. So there's a good look at the suits. Jeremy Jeffries is out there out front in the one car. Oh, one technically, but it's the one car as he as run and Gary Mingus right behind him. Right. You can't run an 01 online because that is always the server. So if you want to be number one, either run a 01 or a 001. But yeah, Jamie Jeffries from Talladega. Uh, sorry. I was going to say from Talladega Challenge. That's a series on Thursday at Rolling Thunder Gaming. That's where I know Jeremy from. Chris Elliott in the uh, Napa 9 car has taken over the second spot on the outside groove. So that's, uh, that's pretty good. He didn't have too much help. So uh, he does have the uh, Nate, is it Nate Gunther? Just yep. right behind him. But he uh, he didn't make it through there as a uh, slingshot. Whoa, slingshot pulls across the nose. I believe that was the 17. Close call. I I think he kind of got a little high, then decided to, to go low to avoid the car that was on the high side when he did it. I think he went right across the nose of the 17. Currently focused on the 16, Jeffrey Elliott running the 60. Oh, we got a couple down. Spinning out low there. Jeffrey Elliott in the 16 car for Team I'm on Fire. Currently running in fourth position. That's what it has him credited for at the line, but he looks like he is in third. That will update as we cross the line right there. He is now in third position. You've got um, Brian Lovell in the 043 and Kenny Danny Carroll in the uh, 41. They've found themselves and got themselves nose to tail. They're they're at the, they're kind of back in the sixth and seventh spot, but they're they're working their way, trying to work together, staying in a draft to try to get themselves up closer to the front. Right, drafting can work here, you know, especially on those straightaways. Yeah, it's just that the uh, the draft can also work against you on the straightaway on the corners, where if you have a little bit too much, if you're too close to the car in front of you, uh, you might lose the nose a little bit. Arrow plays a part. We yep. wouldn't think it would here, but it does. Yep. Entry to the corner is a big deal too, depending on if you're coming in from the high side or the low side. Maybe a little brake dragon to, like we were saying before, settle the car down. Bunch of different strategies to get that to happen. You can see the draft working right there on the back straightaway as we go by all the palm trees. As a number nine of Frank Divins, one of our painters here this evening. Kelly Causey, one of the painters. Rodney Sullins, one of the painters. Was all kinds of people painting cars. And I found here in a track like this that if you have the ability to, now that's the key word, if you have the ability, you'll notice everybody goes into turn one really, really high, mm -hmm. and then they just kind of roll that right down and kind of late apex out of the turn two. Whoops, we have a car around off the bumper. It's one of the turbo cars. Oh, he's upside down. Now, Denny Carroll, again, having a rough, rough time. Oh, it was Denny, was it? Yep. He has just not had very much luck tonight. Oh, yeah, he got... Into the safer barrier, but the safer barrier actually rolled him up on his side. We got Jeff and Chris Elliott up there and battling it out for the second spot. Yeah. Jeff on the low side of him. I have to say, I'm not a Ford fan. But I do like them uh, dark horse looking Mustangs. They just yeah. look kind of cool. Yeah. Jeffries is walking away. Not walking away with it. He's just consistently about two car lengths out in front of these guys as uh, Frank and Jeff have been fighting for that second spot. Well, there again, like I said before, the advantage of taking using the high side, coming down late apex and up to the wall. Um, you know, Je Je Jeffrey can't do that right now. He's no. on the bottom, so he's going to be kind of kind of getting bogged down a little bit on the exit of the corner um, where Chris right here will actually pick up a little bit because he's not getting bogged down. So there's a, he's Jeff's going to get him kind of going in, in the corner. Well, and as oh, Jeff, I say him. that, as Jeff does that, he gets right by him. Yep. 
So right. that would be probably more of a situation where uh, it, Chris might have got a little bit, a little tight and had to lift. And as soon as he did that, just let him go. Frank Divins, actually. Frank Divins is in the, that's the 09, even though you can't see the O. Oh, okay. I'm yep. sorry. I, Chris, yep. Are you talking Chris Elliott is uh, number nine, but he's in the orange car. Looks like uh -huh. Jeffrey's, they just got to run on him. Jeffrey takes the lead. And see, I didn't, I didn't even think about that. that yeah. That's, that's uh, Divins. Yeah, there's two number nine cars out there today. Optical delusion with the number. You didn't have a big enough <laughs> yeah. zero on there. That's the thing. Yeah, when you when you run a zero in front of it, uh, you don't need to actually put it on the car. So when you got two number nine cars out there, one's actually an 09. Jeffrey takes the lead. Do you think he's got enough tires left? Because he was fighting a lot to get up there. I guess we're going to find we'll see. out. We're, we're getting down to about, what, three laps to go. Mm-hmm. See, now look at that. Um, We've got Team Rocket of Jeffries and Rodney sitting there in the third and fourth place, respectively. Like Those said, guys are going to dominate points this race if they could just, they don't even need to race these guys. No, but you know, they're racers. They're going to oh, go yeah. for it if they have the opportunity. So see right here, now that they've got underneath uh, Frank Evans and they've got the draft going, they'll it'll help them out a little bit. Like I said, corner's not going to be so much. Um, it actually may hurt uh, Rodney a little bit, Sullins there, and just who's just behind him because he's right tight behind him. But once they get to this straightaway and he gets behind him, on the back stretch they can bump. Uh, on the front stretch, it's uh, yes, some people can do it. Flat. It's not recommended. Yeah, there was a lap car there. The 58 Gary Mingus uh, yielded to the leaders. You just saw him pull off to the side there. And we come around to the back straightaway. See if we get any bumping. Now, Jeffries and Sullins, there is definitely a gaggle back there at third, third spot. Frank is just consistent. He's holding that uh, higher line. Jeff slipped a little bit there because Jeff, uh, Jeremy Jeffries just gained right up to the back bumper of, the, of uh, Jeffrey Elliott in the 16. So we're down to, what, two to go. Um, you know... Jeff's going to have to drive out of that rear view mirror a little bit. To, you know, you got to be cautious about doing that um, just because, you know, if you come across their nose, you could be seen as the culprit of that mm -hmm. accident. And so, you know, they, he's got to be careful. As you can see, he's waving. <laughs> he, yep. he's, he's trying to break that draft. It's a wide track. And like you said, the drafting is a big deal on the straightaways, more so on the back. Uh, the front, you, you can definitely... The draft is definitely plays. I mean, the the draft definitely comes into play all the way around this track. It's the bump drafting that you don't want to happen uh, anywhere really, except for the back straightaway. Yeah, I've seen people that you know. I mean, it's 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 innocent. You're just trying to help out the guy in front of you, and and you end up tapping each other, and then, and the guy goes around. Even with a little Easy. internet spike at the wrong time, it can cause a catastrophe doing that. Jeff, it Absolutely. looks like Jeffrey's actually almost had him. But, yeah, I think he got a little tight on remember tire yeah. wear. So, you know, yeah. he's trying and he came from a little ways back too. So he's he's just tire wears down. He's gotta make a move now though, because you know, if he's don't have a lot of help behind him, I don't think he can get him. I really don't. If uh, Jeff runs a good line, see he's he's making sure that he doesn't get there. More so of a battle for third place back there as Divins. Oh, wow. yeah. Third place went to Divins. But Jeffrey wins this race. I know. I know. We got to be biased, but those Napa cars do look pretty cool. They look great. Yeah, all these cars look fantastic. The Napa, it's the contrast of those colors. You know, the the blues and the yellows. Those primary colors are good stuff. Jeffrey Elliott, winner of. Heat race number four. So seven. I don't know if you saw that, but Jim Jeffries came around, went on to pit road, and did his best Joey Chitwood impression. He spun it around 360 and kept going straight, never hit anything. Oh, that was that was Jeremy Jeffries. Let's see if I can get it. After the race, going down on pit road, it's, it was great. Oh, nice. But do you think we ought to grab that uh, Jeffrey L.A. fellow and <laughs> congratulate him, or we'd want to just leave him off the side and go grab somebody else? 
I wonder if Jeffrey's busy though. It would be nice to talk to him, but let me see. Is Jeffrey? And also uh, grab Jim Jeffries I'm on and have fire. a talk with him. Heat five. So Jeffrey will be racing in the next race. So we can't really talk to him right now. He's getting he's probably getting these things all lined up. Jim Jeffries is going to be running in the next race as well, so we don't really want to interfere with him. Uh, let's grab Bob Seminara. Is he racing in the next Ooh, race? Let's see. Ah, let's five. see. Uh, yes, he is. Heat five. Oh, he is. Okay. Yeah. Because we've got uh, the music we're using this evening. There's Shadows on Fire, and Bob is the one who brought the attention of that band here. He knows the guy. What's, what is his name? Quentin Wainwright? The mind behind that. That band that we were listening to at the start of the race during our five-minute countdown. A couple of three-minute songs fit nicely into the five-minute countdown. So thank you, Quentin and Bob Seminaro. Wow, we've had some great racing tonight. This is this is pretty cool. A lot of fun. How about you grab... Oh, wait, is Alex racing again? I'm going to say, because Alex, he is racing. He's five. Uh, he'll probably talk to us in this four-minute gap. Grab Alex Mullen and see if we can... Okay, let's we'll see The number 48. Because he did win. Alex Mo live on Tarnation TV. You got me. Ha, ah, don't tell me we got one that fell, stepped away. It's possible that Alex has stepped away. Alex, are you there? I'm... Yeah, sorry. I was in the other room. What's up, guys? Ah, perfect. Well, we wanted to talk to you about the win there, the first heat. Yeah, we were... Yeah. We were we were uh, had brought Zach up because he had won on Friday, so we didn't get a chance to grab you and bring you up. So we figured we'd uh, bring you up now. And uh, you know, Jim, Jeff, he gets a lot of attention. We don't need to talk about to him. So we figured uh, <laughs> he had a pretty good race here that first run. Yeah, it was a lot easier than this last Cali race. I just couldn't get it done in traffic. Plus, we have guys out there like uh, Brian Lovell, you know, dive bombing. But uh, yeah, the the first race. Uh, you know, it's always good to get off to a good start for our team. And uh, I had a good run there, and I think uh, my other teammate had a pretty good run. He finished fourth or fifth. I got a question for you. Was it your choice to avoid Talladega Super Speedway the whole way through this thing until the main event? Because we see that you're booked in for these alternate tracks. Well, our uh, coach, Kazi, our leader, he... Uh, you know, appropriates us to which races he feels that will be the best in. And I've always enjoyed the, uh, the smaller tracks, you know, the intermediates, the two miler short tracks. So I'm yeah. pretty experienced in those. And, uh, he thought it was best if I run these races, I'm in this homestead race here too. So, yeah, we won't keep you very long. We'll, we'll actually put you back here pretty soon. Yeah. We just wanted to touch base with you after winning that first one. So yeah, Rod, if you had anything to ask Alex, uh, let her rip. Yeah, no, no, that's pretty good. We, uh, I think we, I think, I don't know, me and Blaine have been discussing it, but we think you guys are doing pretty good in points. So uh, hopefully uh, you guys will end up doing, uh, maybe winning it, who knows. But that was a really good race and, uh, you know, appreciate you coming down. And Yeah, it's, uh, it's too uh, too soon to figure out, uh, you know, who's leading the points. We'll see how this race, the next tally race and the final tally race go. But I appreciate the interview, guys. Enjoy the rest of the race here. Thanks, Alex. Right. Thanks, Alex. Thank you. Yeah, these uh, shorter tracks, like he said, the two milers, mile and a halfers, always a lot of fun. But let me tell you, if you had Very uh, Kelly Kaza, if you had Buckshot Kelly Kaza on your team, um, would you not send him to Talladega? I mean, he runs, he's one of the guys that runs up front pretty much all the time there. Yeah, it's a good call. I would like to, especially in these series too, like, I mean, Talladega is a very popular track, so it's it's good to have these other drivers on your team because, yeah, like, he, he's, you know, these tracks are great. They're fast, but they all, every single track in this game is completely different. I mean, Talladega is different from Daytona, and they're both super speedways. 
you know, and everybody's got their jam. You know, a lot of people hate Darlington, but I don't know. I don't mind it. I have a love hate relationship with Darlington. Mm -hmm. I love racing that track and I have won there a few times in different series in different, you know, I've run with uh, many different online leagues, but, uh, there's sometimes you go there and it just bites you and it's usually not the track. It's just usually your mood, how you feel, whatever, yeah. but uh, you can have great races there and you can have tough races there. I kind of, that's why have the same luck. It's like the, it's not like it's me that, that makes a mistake. Like I forget I'm going into turn one and I'm actually going into turn three. And you know, those turns are very different radius. So you're like, Oh no, <laughs> you know, that was, the building in the corner, I, I don't know why I thought I was on the other side of the track, and then that'll just mess your line up, and then the way you go, right? It's a lot of concentration on that track, because it's not like here you can make a little mistake, and there's a lot of room to correct it, whereas a place like Darlington, a little mistake can cost you some severe damage, you know, especially because it's a turn. What's the big turn? One and two. One and now, one and two. Right. But so you want to try something that a little different. The other day I raced at a different league and we ran at Darlington. Hmm. Well, we were running the original old school Darlington where the turn one and two is now three and four and, and set it back and forth. Oh, did they oh, put it, the start finish line on the other? They switched it. Yeah. Cause originally ah. when this game came out originally in 2002, um, the start finish line that was different. It was on the backstretch, what they call the backstretch now, oh. um, about three quarters of the way down the backstretch. Right. So right. it's still the same track. It still races the same way, but the difference is. Okay, buddy, fired up here. It, Remember one switch. At it's time, just it three. plays a mind game with you. That's you know? funny. You, you, you know what? Now that you say that, that's probably okay, why I make that mistake because I've been playing this way. thing since it was brand new in two thousand three. Then we're running Darlington 2018, and you know I'm not realizing. <laughs> maybe my brain is slipping back into. I just went over the start finish line. I need to go hard or 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 lift. Yeah. It's so kind of backwards. The, so the issue that I had with that was I would keep. I kept going out of turn four and going down the straight and thinking, all right, and. I hit the wrong button there. Sorry, I was going it's down straight, good. and um, I was thinking, it's like, wh how come it didn't give me a time? You know, and then you go down into the big one, you come down there, and you get about three quarters away, and then it reads off your time. So it did play a little blind game. Hmm. Like I said, track didn't run any differently, but it was it was kind of neat. That's funny. Yeah, I wonder if that's part of my brain cramp. Sixteen to the booth. Sixteen to the booth. Go ahead, sixteen, 15. Jeffrey Elliott on the air. Woof, I am shaking from that one. I was shaking since the first one. But anyways, uh, how you guys doing? Oh, oh wait, you can't hear me. Oh, we're doing great, dude. We were we were gonna grab you for an interview, but we figured you were busy. Oh, you can still grab me anytime you want. <laughs> yeah, but you're in the you're in this next race, so No, I bailed out and gave my spot to somebody else. I'm still shaking. Oh, br bring him up to the booth, Rod. We're going to bring you into the booth, uh, Jeff. We're going to get help help us call this one. Okay. All right. We got a microphone and the headset on him, and he's up here in the uh, what, what what turn? Oh, that's not for the big track. We're... Well, hey guys, how y'all doing? Hey, we're now. The heck of a good time. <laughs> I tell you guys, I'm supposed to be in this next heat right here to start it, but I'm still shaking back, actually, from race one, and this winning that last one, man. It is it, it your heart and is pounding you're shaking it is on and uh man it, it, i'm having a ton of fun the most was, fun i've ever had it was a great race dude we were watching you uh you find your way to uh jeremy jeffries and then have to try to pass that guy knowing he's one of the best in the game right you know and has been for a long time and then being able to hold him off i tell you you're right Jeremy Jeffries is a legend here in some race and just not at Talladega way before he started Talladega. He, he can run anywhere. And he's a toughest, one of the toughest competitors out there. And, um, yeah. And uh, we practiced together last week a little bit out here. And, uh, so I got to know how these guys drive, how they tend to drive a little bit. So just got to work them, man. And once you get to the front, it's harder to pass these guys that are 
or good on these tracks. And uh, it's hard to pass up front once you once you get there. So who but, took uh, your spot in this race? Because we've got your brother Chris leading the race right now. Um, the two number nines actually are fighting each other. <laughs> or is it Slocum that took your uh Right, I gave my, my, my seat to my boy. That was my third race, but I'm going to drop it down to two heats because I'm an old man. And <laughs> <laughs> I just I just gave my point, my team 180 80 points in that race, maybe 185. I'm not sure if I led the most laps. But, uh, yeah, it was intense, guys. If you were right down here, Rod and, and Blaine driving, you, you would be saying the same thing. So I'm getting this from all the drivers, how intense you are after the race. Yeah. Like, there's yeah. Nothing, nothing you ever felt before. And the thing about it is, though, is like, so hypothetically, you know, we go out, we'll be racing tomorrow with the trucks. You win that truck race. You are pumped. You are. I, I get that because a lot of time my my life schedule, when you win a race, you're just pumped, you're pumped, you're pumped. And um, you get five minutes if you're in the next race to yeah. calm down and go back racing. And, and I can see how that would uh, you'd give up that seat. Well, you're absolutely right. And, uh, you know, with the competition, I hear guys, all these guys to me are pretty darn stellar, you know, sim racers. And uh, glad to see different leagues out here representing, you know, RTG guys. And there's some open guys. There's a few um, outside of Hobo. And, you know, of course, they race everywhere. I don't think really one person has allegiance to one league. You race where you want to race, right? So. You know, it's it's intense, man. I could do this. I could do this, Blaine and Rod, once a month. This is so much fun. See, I'll right tell now, you. I you tell you who's having some fun. Chris Elliott leading this thing. Nick Gunther right behind him. Frank Divins behind him. Chris got to the front, got and in he's front, been of out Nick, to the front, and he is now driving away. It looks like he's put up about a two or three car length in well, front of him in second place. Yeah. Oh, just when I said that, he just slipped coming out of turn four. And Nick Hang in there, the brother. Hang in there, brother. That nine is tough. Uh, Divins. Oh, man. It took forever to get around that guy. And you got... Is that, Je is that Jeremy Jeffries in yep. fourth? Yep. You had uh, yeah. Alex Moe up front for the first little run part of it on the outside, but he didn't... Just couldn't... Like we talked before, there is an outside group here, but you need to have somebody behind you on the straightaways pushing, and he didn't have anybody helping him, so he dropped back down to fifth. Yeah, yep. I mean, uh, the outside does have a lot, a lot of grip, and uh, you got a little bit of help. You can get around a guy on the inside. It depends on how many guys were in this inside, but like, like Chris is getting Nick ready to get trained inside. here from an yep. turn. Two. And so he has nobody behind him. So off to the corner like that, it didn't hurt him so bad. But right here is where it's going to hurt him because they've got people. You've got Dibbins and uh, I'm sorry, that's Jim Jeffries there. The he's right behind him, and uh, they're you know they're going to go faster because they're nose to tail. Yeah, you have Nick out there front, right? Driving a 56. Look at that. Yep. yep. Go, Nick. I, I think, I don't know if Chris is having issues with tires. It looks like he just about clipped the wall the last couple times. Well, I noticed my brother corner. likes that. Uh, he likes that high side for some reason. He don't like to get down there. If he can get down there back somehow, yeah, he'll get, get some spots back. But, uh, oh, there we go. Got a little accident there between a uh, BSR guy, a uh, uh, big stone gap, and some uh, Thunderbirds back there. Very curious about the big stone gap. We have not really seen much of them in the top, you know, even, um, you know, top three or four spots. We just expect them to dominate these things. You know, right now, well, yeah. it looks like we've got uh, two I'm on oh, fires. Oh, oh trouble. Ooh, Frank Divins so around. Spin. Oh, the 47 Andrew Miller. So we've got two rockets, Keep two going, team guys. rockets, and two I'm on fire cars. In that top five. Those guys need to keep going for their team. Mm -hmm. I, I just kind of kind of took a little quick back look there to see what happened. Uh, looks like Dan Level come off turn two. Uh, up into the wall a little bit when he come off the wall. Kind of shot him down across from in front of uh, Bob Seminera. And uh, they spilled his gravy. So Biscuits has got gravy all over the place. Oh, was that Bob? <laughs> he, that's twice he got caught up. On, on, the, on these tracks, so poor Bob out of some because he ran pretty good on his track in practice last week. Hang in there, Bobby. Uh, so we got Kelly Kazi. We got uh, is that uh, I can't see that. Is that Grant Wesley? Yeah, Grant's in this race too. Pass Grant's Chris there. Yep. Chris had the lead, and he did end up leading five laps of this race. There's a couple left to go. He might get the bonus points for leading the most, but Nick. Nick is probably going to surpass that. 
Nick is on fire. He and, is, but... Uh, well, he's not on my team on fire, but go, Nick. I don't know you that well, my friend, but hang in there. How's he making a move on the uh, one-armed Carlin bandit? Uh, oops. You see Alex Moe back, made his way back up into the third spot. Uh, but you got right now Rocket, Team Rocket's got probably the most car up front with uh, I'm on mm -hmm. fire just behind him. You've got Big Stone Gap Racing might be leading this thing, but I don't know where their second driver is. Quite oh, Big, Big Stone ain't leading this bad boy. That's, uh, yes. that is a wrecking sorry. ball leading it. Wrecking ball, yeah. sorry, my bad. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you got uh, Nick out front and Jeremy Jeffries. Yeah, Jeffries tough. And then we you got, got some uh, Alex Moe, Alex Moe, fourth place, Grant Wesley, Chris Elliott, fifth. Josh and six, and who's behind? The, who's behind? One lap to go, guys. This White is it. flag, yep. White Nick flag. In first, and he's, I mean, there's a lot of action on his bumper. He's probably looking out his review mirrors. Oh, you are. You definitely, he's shaking his boots right now. I know that. I was. But you but. got Jeremy Jeffries. He's oh! 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 Grant oh, Wesley's around. Oh, my gushness. Oh, it that might like be it. good for Nato. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, if, if Jeremy <laughs> making a late run here, trying to get by to 56. Nothing. Oh, almost got him. Nick wins the race. Good job, Nick. At the line. Wow. All right, fellas. I need to get back up there. I got replays to save export. Thank you. Thank you oh. for letting me uh, come up here and hang out with you for a race. That was awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, bud. Right, good. Thank you for running, setting this up. This has been a really, really fun thing to do. That's awesome, man. Like I said, I can do it once a month. Forget about serious points racing. Let's get some crap out of that. All right, guys. I will talk to you soon. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks, good Nick Gunter with the win in glorious fashion on that final lap. Accident took out basically one of every car. I we see had there. a Here's couple the... of rockets and a couple of I'm on fire cars up there, but it, it all came down to one each. Yeah, I see the a uh, couple of the U.S. Army cars that Seminary got, of course, uh, involved in something early on in the, in the run there. But uh, the other one, I don't remember who was in the other car with them there, but uh, they uh, were both parked the, down the bottom of turn three and four after the, that, that last lap. So something happened there. Yeah, and of course, that's all up for inspection as well. Final race inspection, as always. We don't know. We know who caused the accident. How you know? Was it a domino effect? Could it have been multiple drivers? That's entirely up to the administrators. But it looks like Nick got a clean win there. Congratulations to the 56. All right. So to the notepad I go for heat. Okay, where's Nick, Nick, Nick? Uh, okay. Wrecking ball team. Where we go? Where's the wreckers? There they are. And that was a... All right, well, we gave uh, Nick a headset and a mic. This is our winner from the, just a minute ago. Pretty good race there, buddy. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, we, it was pretty good out there. What's the tire situation? Because we're curious about this fuel frequency. Is it it comes into play here, doesn't it? Especially on that track, I think. Like these these uh, shorter tracks. I kind of got fooled when I when I ran to my California races. I I mean I I guess I must have saved so much there. But for Homestead, I really didn't really get a chance to save that much. I mean, yeah, you got like you got to lift in these corners or whatnot. But I guess when you have like a smooth like rotation on your wheel, it, it makes you ha have like a good straight off and you just don't burn up that right front so much. Even on even 3X, it just makes it wear out so much more. I'm used to 2X though. Oh, okay. So have you practiced with the three or you just kind of adapt coming into it? The first thing to do about survival is to adapt. Mm -hmm. Either adapt or die. So that's what we got. I had, what I had to do. I had to adapt everything. So Team Wrecking Ball with the win. That was looking like a pretty awesome fight. I mean, just when you guys looked like you were pulling away a little bit, they'd reel you back in. It was the same with Chris Elliott. You know, it looked like he was driving away from you, but like maybe just a little smidgen of a, of a lapse, and then, you know, you're all over him again. So curious how that looks. You know, you just, are you able to just concentrate and hit your marks, or is that tough to do when you're trying to kind of get, buy someone you just overdrive in the car 
it all comes with the, with the amount of experience, though. I mean, it's, it is kind of hard to do sometimes when you got pressure from behind because you don't know what the other car is going to do behind you. They could just drive right through you. They could just uh, make you scared a little bit, make you make a mistake. That's the one thing you definitely don't want to do is just mess up your own race and just focus on yourself or whatnot. If they hit you, they hit you. Um, I mean, <laughs> gosh, I forgot the first part of the question already. My bad. <laughs> Oh no, it's it's fine. Yeah, we're just talking about all the racist stuff, like you know, overdriving the car, and I have a, I have a hard time doing that too. It's almost like my brain is always my worst enemy. And it's like when you think to yourself, like, man, I've been cutting some really good laps, and all of a sudden, that's when it's going to blow up, and you're going to start cutting some really bad laps. I have to learn to not think. You always have to rely on like race pace being a little bit slower than what you're supposed to run in qualifying. That's a lot of mistakes that a lot of people make. Even to this day, like, yeah, it's fine if you're like a five lap run, but if it's like a 15, 20 lap run, it's going to eventually come back to haunt you. Here's one Saving, for you. Your, tire. Are, Saving your tires is important. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Are we saying your last name right, Nick Gunther? You know what? That's very close. I'll give oh, you that. Very okay. close. It, it, it's Gunther. It is Gunther. Okay. We Very apologize. Good job, though. We, he, we apologize if we butchered it a little bit. Oh, the don't, extra no, don't worry about e it. In it there, gets butchered right? all the time for those who actually don't know, you know? Right, so ignore the E, then. That's what it is. I was put, trying to put the E in there, and I'm overthinking it. You just don't yeah, pronounce it. Gunther. The E is basically mute, silent. Right. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah, I always like to double check with people, because it's like our, our job as broadcasters is probably to pronounce stuff properly. You're fired. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> you'll, you'll never work in this town again. See? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a good one. <laughs> All right. Well, you rascalian. Nick, Nick Gunther, just their last winner. You got the one thing that's nice, though, is you get a chance to take a breather before the big race. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a tough one for Talladega. I mean, hopefully, the second race here for Talladega won't be as uh, messy as the first one, I should say. Right, so Heat, let me just see here. Team Wrecking Ball, Talladega Heat 6. You guys got Javier Negron and Zach Roberts out there on the track. Zach winning last night here at uh, Talladega Nights in their Shaken Big Series. No, what's Friday? That's Trucks. That's the um, Fast and Furious Series. So yeah. a good guy to put out there. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not the t team manager, I'm afraid. I kind of got called in, I think, one night because... Uh, Garland needed to have a hand mm -hmm. uh, hand surgery, but he was able to still race there tonight. I just can't thank uh, <coughs> excuse me, I can't thank uh, Garland enough for giving me the opportunity to race here tonight. I can't. Uh, I always wish for him for, uh, for a best recovery, and he did have a hell of a hell of a job tonight. I wasn't expecting him to really like compete at all because of his uh, hand surgery, but he ended up finishing in sixth place with automatic transmission as well. Just Dre basically driving everything with one hand, like that's just that takes a lot of balls to do so. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that automatic transmission can kill you on a start and restart, but uh, luckily, once you get going, you're good here. Yeah. In the sprint races, it's fine. You just get going, and then there's no yellows, right, to stack everybody up. So, yeah, that's that's awesome. Looks like we're getting ready to throw the green on this, uh, the last heat of the night before the main event, dude. So, thanks, Nick, and congratulations on that win. Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll move you out of the room here and get ready to do this last one before the main. Thanks, guys. You have a good one, bud. Awesome talking to Nick there. That a uh, little bit of information there, knowing now that Garland Oaks, and I think he's driving the 67. I just went through the list of the people that we have in here for each team. If they're going to be still running those ones, uh, things couldn't change. Stacked field for this one. Yeah, I don't yeah. see funny my my statistics are actually reporting that there's 44 drivers online which i thought was impossible <laughs> i was only 43 but i think that can happen when you kind of restart the game you can add drivers there won't be anywhere for them to pit of course this last one last sprint race that we got going you got heavier in the ground and zach roberts for team wrecking ball you've got craig hagley and greg palmer for the okay, team buddy. Rocket, right um, Ken time. Roberts and Chuck off. McClure for w WNO. I'm on Fire has Chris Van, Chris Van Litt and uh, Robert Breedlove. 
uh, got, uh, I got to get to down a little bit further here. Sorry. We have Eric Lovell and Brian Lovell, which are two good super speedway drivers. Graham McDonald and Pat McCarsky, Keith Bynum and Mike Mangelardi, mm-hmm. and the Iceman, you man, and Bob the Biscuit Seminar round out that field of cars. That is going to be wicked. It's going to be a good one. The final heat race, the final sprint before the main event. And this, I just had to retire my blue car. It looks like the lottery may have been to Chuck. Zach, Ro- mm, is it Zach no, Roberts. Yeah, on it the looks inside. like it's going to be Zach. Yeah, I was waiting to see if there was another car to go, but that car has retired, so Zach gets the inside we can, line. We can look to see who was supposed to be there. So Josh Solom got the one the lottery, but he's not in this race. So that moves Zach Roberts up in the outside. Oh, did Slocum get first and then had to reject? Yeah. So uh, that's the, remember how that goes. Everybody's yep, in here yep. and everybody, so everybody's in the lotto. And then as soon as the lotto, the, the the drivers that are that are our racing, they just move up on their respective lines and then go for it. So yeah, yeah. Get, be. Uh, Big, big gap stone racing there right back there in third and fourth. I'd like to take a shout out too for everybody in the YouTube channel watching this right now. We're hitting record numbers of views already up over 120. So thank you everybody That's for awesome. watching this evening. Usually we try to keep an eye on the YouTube chat and read some comments. However, it's a little bit tough to do when these races are so short. But uh, yeah, we got what we got Catherine Deal, Brendan Nix, Larry D, uh, Slingshots in there, of course. Marissa Pomerink, hope I'm saying that one right. Benjamin Snyder, the owner of Maverick, had a massive race last week at Maverick. They had like almost 70 to 80 drivers show up in their Daytona 500 race, 125 laps around that monster. Uh, that's a lot of drivers, man. Looks like they got a really good start this time. There, yeah. no, no uh, bumping and banging yet as of yet. Uh, Zach Roberts is out in front. Zach, with again, this was lottery start. So Zach, you know, being a winner last night in a truck, with many familiar faces in this one, getting that front line. So he's he's familiar with it. Thanks again to everybody. Nate Balser says in the YouTube comments, he's watching, nursing his ankle. Wish I was there. Have a good race and a good show. Thank you. Great job. Tarnation TV. Oh, shucks. Thanks, Nate. Yeah, thanks, Nate. We miss having you here. <laughs> uh, get recovered real quick and get your butt back in here. We got Pumpkin. He's in there, too. Rodney Sullins is tired of starting at the damn rear. <laughs> yeah, the lottery <laughs> saw, has not been uh, kind to Rodney Sullins this evening. Yeah, that is the downside of the lot the lottery you know you got brian level on the outside there with uh mcclure right behind him pat muskarski in the and uh third car back in the high line you man right behind him mm-hmm. making up pretty good grounds right now i never even realized that until somebody mentioned it before in an interview we did that ulysses sandoval is the uh you know he was he calls himself the wrecking ball and then Team Wrecking Ball is out here, but Ulysses actually racing tonight for the Thunderbird team. The Thunderbird team, those red and silver cars. It's strange how got, he he isn't the captain of the team with his name, but as we talked about before, uh, third lines forming up there in the back. Yep. We've got Greg Palmer and Greg Hagley. Uh, no, sorry. Yep, no, I said Craig, that one. Wrong. Yep, Craig Hagley. Craig big Hagley, push yeah. coming there to the 17. That'll be Chuck McClure. Fell back a bit on that high side, but. Got some help there from Greg. Keep That's that momentum. That's the big thing too, though. Is like you know where you're running. So if he was, if he's running like in, right there where uh, Pat McCarsky is, and he's in front of him, and you've got a line on the outside that's forming up. Uh, a lot of times you'll see guys drive up there to just try to get see if they can pick up that energy and ma- bring that energy and pushing them to the front. It's a tough move to do because if that top line doesn't stay, you know, consistent, it can really fall back quickly yeah, and, as we've just seen yeah, they have to stay nose to tail they have to stay tight um the bottom line you know sometimes can not be as organized i guess is the word you're looking for mm-hmm. they really got to get organized and work together they've got to do the bump drafting down the back stretch um 
re avoid it in the corners, uh, especially through the trioval because the, the back of the car gets pretty light right there. But they uh, they just got to get tight and get it right, and then keep it going. And that's what the bottom line's doing right now. They're they're really tight. They're right, and they're they're kind of just as I say that they they change up they, a little bit. Yep, they're trying. Like Brian Lovell is leaving this race, has for the last two laps. We got Zach yeah, Roberts Zach. behind him, trying to find a line. Looks like he's going to opt for the middle. Kevin, Kevin Lots Bynum, of teamwork. Was, uh, Keith Bynum. Well, Keith Bynum was trying to see if he could make up some more ground, so he moved out and went up high, and it didn't work for him. But now he's got Mike Mangelardi right behind him. Um, and they've got that wrecking ball car in front of them. Look Not at that teamwork, ball. though. Yeah, and they've got, uh, sorry, it was Brian Level in front of them now, and they're pushing, pushing, because I thought I had they had one in front of them, but Brian Level pulled up in front of their team, the two wrecking ball guys. So That's a very colorful pack right here. we got the Napa cars together, the Tarnation TV turbo cars are together, the wrecking ball, we've got the rockets on the top, the I'm on fire in the middle. The only one really got an NWO car in the back, with another big stone gap, all the other teammates have actually found each other's bumpers. But they didn't have an episode in the beginning of this one. So, mm -hmm. like I told you, this was a stacked, pretty good stacked field. Yeah. They're, you know, so they're, they're, ooh. Oh, the front line goes around. Oh, and there it goes. High level up and over. That's a, that took out a few of them. Oh, wow. That took out a lot of them. We got one. I can't, I can't see find, the smoke. I can't find the front the pack. There we are. There we go. <laughs> I, tr I mean, that's a catastrophic accident. Uh, and unfortunately six. for uh, Zach Roberts, ended up yeah. on his lid. Mike Mangialardi there scored last time by an eighth spot. 16th spot for Ken Roberts last time by and 12th spot for Keg Hagley. So as they come over the line, one, two, three. Ken gaining like 14 positions on that. He might be the one to replay to see how he got through that. He was in last, and now he's in second. And now you got a three-car breakaway in the front. Craig Hagley, uh, Ken Roberts, and Mike Mangelardi. Um, they're they're going to try to stick this out, get themselves like night and tight, stay that way mm -hmm. um, until at least the last lap because one of the uh, monster cars there, Eric Lovell, is behind him but I don't think he's close enough to where he's going to be able to pick up that draft. No, we'll bring up the interval he's on quite a that. Uh, let's see, the fourth place car being the 80 of Eric Lovell is 1.4 seconds out. You need to be less than a second to hook onto that draft. So, unfortunately. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes if you're about right on a second, you might get lucky and pick it up, but usually right. you got to be around 0.8 before Eight, you really yeah. start. I was going to say that if you get if you get farther back than a 0 0.8, you're you're not really going to be able to latch onto that draft. So this race just turned into a three car race, and all three of these guys were not anywhere near that front row. Like we said, Ken Roberts was actually I, I believe I said he was in 16th, which is the limit in a sprint race. So he was in last position, and now he's in second. So and that's just the, the luck of the seas parting at the right time for you and being able to drive through, especially not lifting and losing any momentum. That's, and these, these uh, I want to say they're long races. They're not long races, but with no, with no damage. Nobody's retired because those guys that are now running in the back, anything can happen to this front pack. Oh, yeah. You don't want to retire at all. I mean, mm -mm. you don't have the damage. You can, anything can go on, like you said, you know, uh, they, Craig Hagley could get bumped or, and just get, you know, slow them all down. And then the guy, you know, this could go to Brian Level. Well, and you've got like Eric Level in fourth, and then you've got Chris Van Vliet in, in fifth, you know, five and 12 seconds behind the leader. But yeah, like you said, if internet glitch, uh, controller malfunction, anything can happen in, in this three car pack up front that could cause them to crash. You know, Eric, give up you know, that Eric spot. Lovell's in the Eric's having the, the worst part about racing Talladega and Daytona when something like that happens. He's out there doing he's they're on the last lap right now, running all by himself, and that is just a lonely feeling around here. Do you expect anything to happen in this uh third this three pack? Anything, anything of this three pack at the front here? Anybody gonna try anything different? Hey, what's up, sixteen? Yeah, I was wondering if you could get a Chris Elliott interview in. 
Sure can. Let's yep. do that. Thanks, guys. Coming out of turn four here into the tri-oval. And it does appear that Craig Hagley is going to take heat number six. So, you know, the, you got to think of the importance of it, too, though. Um, if uh, Ken Roberts had pulled out and Manager Lardy didn't go with him, you know what I mean? He could have lost them valuable points. So sometimes, just like we saw Sunday with the truck series with Big Scone Grap Racing, they just stuck together. Oh, it was beneficial accident. for all. Just before the checkered flag, another accident. Have your Negron finishes the race in reverse. Can the 63 get it straightened out? Keith Bynum, no, he can't. That's lost points there for the Napa team as well. Calamity coming out of the, the tri-oval there. Now we need to find Craig. Where'd you go, Craig? Our winner. So we've given a mic and a headset to Chris Elliott. Chris Elliott in the booth. What's happening, dude? Well, hello, guys. Man, uh, we were talking to Jeff a little while ago, too, and you're in the same boat, you know, leading these things and, and trying to lead these things. It's not easy. No, it's, it's not. You know, the race is short. Uh, you know, get a bad starting position. That's tough because you got to burn your tires up, you know, to, to get to the front. Race is over quick. And the talent out here, we got such great drivers out here. It is hard to make up spots. I see multiple drivers, too, doing you know, multiple races in a row. So you're going from Homestead and then you're, you're racing in the next heat, you know, at Talladega or California. Like you just don't have a chance to take a break. Well, you gotta, you're gonna take a break for a minute though. Cause the next race is I'm gonna- I'm sorry, I got people talking. Yeah. You know, we, we, a couple of us wanted to take a break. Even though it was our turn to race again, we wanted to sit one out because we our heart was still pounding so, so much, you know? <laughs> it definitely yeah. makes for an interesting format. Oh, I love this format. I've never seen it done anywhere else and by far among one of the coolest races we've ever got to call. Yeah, I think it's awesome. It's just the racing has been exciting. Um, we've had a few episodes, you know, and whatnot, but uh, great finishes too. Yeah, Chris has, uh, he is an administrator here. here, so he's got uh, lots of people Sorry. talking to him right now. Yeah. We get it. Yep, all good now, though. Awesome, man. So you were gearing up for the, the main event right now, so what's the plan, man? Well, the next race is going to be what we're used to, you know. I mean, we do the sprints, but we don't do them uh, quite like we did them tonight. Um, but this race is more like uh, what we're used to, 47 laps, damage is on, uh, you know. Uh, we'll have six teammates, of course, this time, which would be or five, which would be a lot of fun. So it should be a good race. Hopefully, we'll keep the cautions down. Yeah, Let's, I like the way you guys. I like the way they do the sprint racing stuff because, like, when I first joined over here, um, instead of having an hour and a half of practice, they yeah. were doing sprint races. Yes. And what was so good about that is I got to drive with a lot of the drivers and learn some of their mannerisms and stuff like that. It works out really good. But to take it and bring it to this level is insanity. I think that's what made us unique was we, we didn't do the hour practice that all the leagues pretty much do. I mean, and, and the ones I've been with 20 years did, which is, you know, we're just used to that. Most of the time you just go have dinner and come back and practice, you know, the last 10 minutes or so. But here we run, we try to run five sprint races in that hour and a half before the race starts. And, uh, yeah, you learn a lot. I mean, you learn how to race clean with 10 to go in a, in a long race. You know, that's, that's when it really gets important. So it's, it's helped a lot. It's good practice for a Talladega league. Like when you're running the same track all the time, it's, it's a great, it's great practice because if that's the track you're running all the time, then let's get out there and do some sprints or in this situation, California and Homestead, you know, get out there, do 10, 12, 14 laps fast, re-rock them and do it again. It's a great way to yeah. practice a track because it's not just doing, like like Rod said, a 90-minute practice session where you're just out there running alone. You're all together and you're racing in a pack. You, you, you practice that pack racing. Racing by yourself is easy. I tell you, you're right. What else is pretty neat about tonight was we had five of us, right, on you know, a team. Well, three of us were watching our two uh, teammates race in a race. 
or 10, 15 laps, you know, and, and uh, that's something that we don't ever do. And uh, it actually was pretty fun doing that. I really enjoyed that as much as actually racing. I mean, I wrecked a bunch of times early in, in a couple of these sprint races and, and uh, to sit back and watch my guys perform and, and, and do, do good, you know, or whatever they did, had to do. It was, it was good. I think, I think uh, it was a lot different. We never, never tried this and uh, it was pretty cool. So how do you think you're faring, though? You know, I mean. Oh, guys, we're on the points. I don't think we're doing that well. <laughs> <laughs> but I that's okay. Say, I want almost want to say that it's probably my guess. New World, the WNO, W, yeah, N -N -W, NWO, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think uh, Team Kazi Racing or Kamikaze, they call it. I, I, I may be wrong, but there again, we got one more big race to go, so that could change everything. Well, especially, yeah, if you can get a team in the top 10, you know, if five of the top 10 are all on the same team, that's massive points, especially Big in points a 40 there, yeah. car race, because like the last place 40th car, what's the last place points? Like 30 points? That's not a lot of points. Might even be less. Yeah, I, I mean, everybody was saying it's going to be one or loss in the sprints. I really think it's also, when you look at the 40 car field in this next race, if you got three or four guys that finish, you know, 20 or further back, and you got a team that's got all five cars in the top 20, they're going to make up a lot of points, you know? So yeah. uh, I, I, that's something to, to think about. Yeah, if you're going to do it, this is the race to do it. The, the main event, 47 laps. We got you know, cautions you know on, damage on, some pit strategy in play. It's a whole different ballgame now. Something that we haven't asked either is what's the point spread? So, you know, is it five points per position? I or? think we're using the same points as the NASCAR 2003 point system. You know, one, what, what, 170, 180 for first. Yeah. Five points for red lap, five points for most lead laps. Yeah. That's what we've been doing ever since we've been a league, uh, a group for three years. It's just easier to use the export. Well, so, yeah, because uh, but I'm just saying there's a lot of different leagues that do a lot of different points in a lot of different ways. So I was more curious to see just how that was going. It, it still doesn't help me figure out who's going to win this. No. But. <laughs> Very few leagues use the original uh, NASCAR 2003 points system anymore, yep. you know, and that's when we decided to just go with that. It seems to be kind of unique because it's something we all forgot about. You know, I used to run a Back to the Future series um, that might be coming back on again, and we run the Cup series and uh just like we did when this first game came out you know uh, a fast setup and it, you know it, it and man it's, it's it's so much fun when you when you get back in that seat and try to drive like you did 20 years ago because you know it's, it's a lot different driving a fast setup than something that you've made or all these other steps you got right now plus the cup physics and regular regular cup cars nobody really runs those very often so but yeah, it's, uh, we'll have to see what happens. I really think if you got five drivers that are on the lead lap, just on the lead lap at the end of this race, you're going to have an advantage. Right. That's a good point. Yeah, I, I can't wait for you to bring that series back. I enjoyed racing with you and them guys in that uh, Tuesday night cup series. Yeah, I, I, I did too. And we raced every track but the super speedways, which is what's, you know, complete opposite what we do on, you know, Friday, Thursday, Friday, Saturdays, Sundays. Well, Blaine knows my uh, my approach on these super speedways. I'm not a really big fan of them. They do bring a lot of people, and they are exciting races. And the, to broadcast it, I love it. To race them, eh, not so much. Stressful. <laughs> how are you guys? How are you guys hanging in there? It's been a long night. I know you're almost done. I'm good, man. I, I, yep. I could go for another couple hours. <laughs> yep. Good. Yep. We we're comfortable, man. We got lots of fluids. We're good to go. Uh, have. Uh... Rod, has uh, Blaine offered you any of his muffins yet? <laughs> no, I haven't got offered the muffins yet. Oh, yeah. boy. Yeah, we got lots that's of pastries. A, that's, a long, that's a long shipping from, I, I know he's up in Canada somewhere, but. some Yeah, somewhere. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly where I am. <laughs> somewhere up there. Yep. The Great Lakes. Kingston, Ontario. But yeah, Now man. we're going to get the fun of having everybody on the track. So this is going to make it real interesting. Yeah, speaking yep. of that, do you need to get back up there, Chris? Because I know you're administrator. Yeah, I mean, actually, not even in the game. I got to pop, fire this thing up. I forgot I fell out about 10 oh. minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you still got four minutes left in practice here, All so you right, got lots of time. All right. All right, well, thanks for coming up uh, talking with us a little bit there, Chris. Good luck in the, in the main feature. Yeah, Chris. All right, thanks, guys. You guys do a great job, and Rod, Rod you're doing good, bud. Hang Thank in there. You. Do you have any, uh, any comments you want to drop down before we get ready, Chris? 
I just want to thank my wife for letting me race tonight. It's been a long night, and uh, and good luck to the guys and drivers. Hope you we put on a good show. Awesome. Thanks, bud. Good luck. Thank you. We're just watching the practice sessions right now as we get ready for the main event. You can see on screen we've got the Tarnation TV upcoming broadcast. Join us back here tomorrow a little bit earlier, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Randy Waugh has sponsored race number eight of the IPIS Excellence Series for Rocks. the United, Cerebr <laughs> Cer United Cerebral Palsy. So that'll be a lot of fun tomorrow. It's a points. That's our points series, of course. Race number eight is tomorrow. There is nine races in the regular season, so we're getting down to it. That cutoff line, if we get them playoff drivers locked in, will be rather we interesting. Some, we got some interesting stories to talk about of the last week's winner, where he ended up, and you know how Greg Lovell's doing. And that that was a great race to call. There was some awesome racing, some wicked saves, and. It, at the end of that, it was it came out pretty good. Denny Carroll ended up winning it, and it helped him out a lot. We'll talk about it a little bit more tomorrow. So if you want to learn about what we're talking about, tune in tomorrow. Yep. Tarnation TV, we're not going anywhere. So right back here again tomorrow evening. And, of course, we have SMO Racing Simulations, April 1st, which is a Monday night at 8 o'clock at SMO Speedway. That's one of their anniversary races, I do believe. They have hired us to broadcast that. So... SMO Speedway is fictional is a fictional track. And it's a lot of fun. It races a lot like, uh, well, a lot like, you know, California style. It's a it's like a a two mile straight up oval. Well, I guess that would be more like Homestead, wouldn't it? And, and I race over there, but I'm not in the points or anything like that. So I might sit that one out and just hang out with you in the booth and um, you know call the race. Not a lot of guys that race there, but they're it's a great group of guys. They have a lot of good races. Yeah, they go out on Monday nights, and there's usually about 15 or so people that show up, somewhere between 15 and 20 drivers per night, so that'll be a whole bunch of fun. And of course, April 13th, with the assistance of Seth Cole, we will be doing the Elmo 200 at Talladega Super Speedway. Actually, I don't think it's at Talladega Super Speedway. I have that written on the, on the, uh, on the schedule there on screen, but it's actually at RTG version 3. Rolling Thunder what, Gaming uh, is allowing us to use their facilities that evening. So it's still Talladega. This just looks a little different. And the sun is up. The yeah, sun is up, yeah. And of course, all proceeds generated already. We've generated a few thousand dollars just by selling off portions of the broadcast, selling uh, sponsorships that will go on custom-painted cars. Um, the, the money generated for that already is crazy. So Tarnation TV is partnering with the ALS Association where 100% of all funds donated will be given to them in uh, in memory of Joey Elmo St. Amont. And Kelly Buckshot Kazi is putting that whole thing together. We're actually in cahoots with the ALS Association. That is crazy. They have partnered with us and they're on board for us doing this fundraiser for them. They've created a website. That's That link, of course, is in the description below. If you would like to donate to that cause, just roll down in the description below this video. And there's like a donut, a link to the page, a link to the donation page. If you want to buy a car, if you want to buy a screen, when I say screen, like when I go into instant replay mode, like, like that, your company name or whatever you want can be on there. Same with the loading screens, all these type of things. Super, super cool. But yeah, definitely go to that link below to find all the cool stuff in the description. The description of these videos gets larger and larger every time. So uh, the link to the race should be live there too. I believe I may not have linked the actual broadcast in the description. If I oh, haven't, I, I will when this race is over. I'll make sure it's in there. Because there is a video, if you would like, much like the way you follow these ones. You click on them, you follow them. And then when we go live, you get a text message telling you we're doing it. And we are winding down our practice. They're going to go into qualifying here pretty soon. Now, are they doing a lot? Are they doing a lot on this? Or are they allowing them to qualify for the last race? This will be uh, qualified. I, I I do believe they're qualifying. Okay, buddy. Yeah. So that'll be interesting because I don't get how they qualify so fast here sometimes. But there's guys that have done this track for years, and I just not. It's not for me. 
Yeah, just make sure right now you jump in and abort your run. Yep. Okay, buddy, fire it up here. Fire it up here. One switch at a time. Turn yeah, that's been a, been a night, I tell you. A lot of good racing. Now we're in for a totally different style of racing. You thought they were running occasionally three wide. Now they're mm -hmm. going to be running three wide all the time. 40 yeah. cars. Oh, this is going to be fun. Yeah, and like man. I said, I feel safe right here. <laughs> it's, it's funny as like a fairly new broadcasting channel. Um, Brian Wolf and I started this thing a couple of years back and it evolved into what it was. But even thinking back to it, like we've always been lucky to just call races that are full fields pretty much, you know? Um, even going over to SMO and having... 15, 20 cars show up doing this when there's literally no room left in the server and we have alternate drivers on standby because they can't fit on the track. There's 40 cars on the track. That's be a lot. It's, it's why, you know, I just feel like it's awesome that uh, Jeffrey uh, designing the league that he designed in cahoots with all these drivers and these cool events that he puts on. And he's, he's gracious enough to, um, you know, have Tarnation TV call these races because we're spoiled rotten. I mean, we could be coming out here with a, a pretty good looking broadcast and having six drivers show up. And it would still be fun to do it. But the fact that we get to call full field consistently every single week. Uh, Jeff runs an awesome league, and yeah, we'd just like to thank him for giving us the opportunity to do this week in and week out. And it's gotten us other gigs, you know, like from SMO and and Kelly contacting us to do the ALS race again, you know, second year in a row, and it's going to be even bigger than it was last year. And a very unique little uh, thing Tarnation TV has become, I but think. What's, but what's cool about that, though, too, is I've heard Jeff mention it that, you know, um, Talladega Nights has helped put Tarnation TV on the map, but in the same time, Tarnation TV has put Talladega Nights on the map. So you guys have kind of worked together and that working together has made everything bigger and better. See, and that's the hard part because we're both pretty humble. So I don't take credit for it. But then when he's in here, then he's not taking credit for it. <laughs> we're always thinking the other guy. Like, I'm not going to take any credit I, for it. I'm yeah. just here. <laughs> I'm late to go in here, you know? It's just funny how, you know, it wouldn't be possible without... Uh, Tarnation TV definitely wouldn't be what it is without Talladega Nights. And then, like you said, Jeff would say the same thing. It, you know, people also love being on live broadcasts. So they, they tend to flock to races that are broadcast. So like, yeah. Um, for instance, Rolling Thunder, very successful league. It's been around for, for 20 to... 20 to 30 years. Like they've been around a long time. Their biggest turnout is always on Thursday. Cause that's the night they broadcast. Now no. their other series aren't too shabby. They've always got 20 to 30 drivers, but again, you show up on a Thursday, you're on a waiting list. You're in a knockout qualifying situation. Cause 60 guys will show up for that race every single Thursday. And that's crazy. Flat out racing network broadcasts those races. So in cahoots with your broadcasters, it definitely brings drivers to the track. Which then feeds the rest of the league, because now do they do they run like over here to what they do at Talladega Nights? Do they run like the same track every night, or do they do a series? The Talladega Challenge is every single Thursday, and then they but there's a series Monday to Friday. They have one every week. Like I think on Monday it was like the Bare Bones series, and they run a certain mod. They run different tracks, but Talladega is every thursday talladega yeah you know and that's the big race everybody loves this track and it's but it's no secret can, you might, yeah and if you want to switch guy. it up yeah exactly if you want to switch and, it I up mean, you just show up on wednesday and they're running to run in different tracks you know so you right. can't get and away from it we've actually aired races at martinsville and sometimes that's good and sometimes it's bad and the thing about like tv racing uh, that i've seen a lot of times is it can bring a lot more people, but sometimes it can also bring more headaches. We don't see that over here at Talladega Nights. We don't see that over there, like you said, at the uh, the other league there. But uh, it, it can uh, bring more because you get the people that just want to come out because it's a live race. Right, right. 
and they're not practicing and yeah. they just, yeah, they want to, Oh, I'm going to be on YouTube. I'm like, yeah, but you kind of got to be able to roll too. You're not going to last long in a group like that. Um, if you're just showing up and not really caring about it, you got to care about it. Cause it's, yes, it's just a video game, but it's a lot of time. People put a lot of time into this. And you, know? you call it a video game. I call it a simulator. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because it is. It, it I call simulates it both. real racing. Yeah, I call it both. And that's the thing. Like, I, 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 I do want to call it a simulator because it is. It takes, you know, it takes a lot of practice to become really good at this. And people put in a lot of, they put in a lot of time perfecting their craft in here. And it sucks when you get spun out on lap one. Or, like Jeffrey was saying, when in that race, like, I, I can't do another one. I got to go for a stroll. <laughs> Because you're wound so tight, it's you're looking in that mirror and you're, you know, there's 15 guys behind you and they all want that spot. It's nerd rocking. It's it's tough to do. When you're at Talladega, it's like I said before, it's like playing 20 games of chess all at the same time <laughs> yeah. at about 200 miles an hour. Yeah, uh, your brain. You get done with one of these races, your brain is fried just because you're so busy watching two cars three cars four cars in front of you that rear view mirror you're trying to figure out who's going to go where's the run coming from how do i get there how do i get to the front it's crazy yeah yeah there's a lot of things going on and it happens so fast here and it's always such close quarters racing even winning a sprint like i've won a couple of sprints and you know my arms are tired because i'm holding that wheel as hard as i can you know oh yeah and, and, not and in my scenario Squeezing that throttle, uh, squeezing that throttle. I get done and my hands are sore because you're just squeezing it so hard. You're mm -hmm. trying to get every ounce of power that you can out of it. No, it doesn't do any good. No. But in your no. brain, you think it does. The button only goes so far, right? Yeah. <laughs> but if I push it harder, I'm going to go quicker. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the problem is it's not like a real race car where you can push the floorboard in sometimes and, and yeah. gain a little bit. <laughs> but there again, same thing there too. You've got a butterfly, all right? If that butterfly is straight up and down, you've got maximum horsepower. If that butterfly has gone beyond straight, you're now starting to kill your horsepower. Right, 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 right. Now, I've done it too when I'm calibrating my pedals. I might only push my gas pedal down like 97%. Knowing that when it is thing. to the floor, it's actually wide open. Yeah, I actually will calibrate and figure out to where it stops. So let's say it stops at 500. We're using that just because it's a number. Um, then I will back out, recalibrate it, and only go to uh, 525. Right. So I'm basically 25 points away from full throttle. So when I get to the end, I've already got the full throttle. And that way, I don't have to worry about it, you know, uh, that lagging up a little bit or not being quite full throttle, not being able to get the speed because, you know, you're not getting full throttle. Yeah, you can put your foot on the floor and know you've been wide open for that last quarter inch. So you're not going, like you said, you get that, if there's a flutter, because sometimes there's a communication error too in the USB. If you get that flutter, you're like, well, I only if I only push my foot 95% of the way to the floor, at least that last 5%, there's no hopefully going to be no communication error that big where you actually dump throttle because i've heard stories of guys having that issue where like they looked at the replay and their throttle was like just a tick off maximum and that's a big deal here maybe not so much in the draft but you can't it's weird You're like why do i feel slower and it is it's it's that one percent of your throttle it just seems to be not working right that day you know and you have mechanical failures in real life you can have mechanical failures sitting at your desk with your steering wheel buttons not working pedals not working properly too right so guys might retire and you're like i wonder why they retired well they could have had a on-site failure you yeah know, your computer monitor uh, could have died you know anything could happen that's the great thing about the replay is that you can go into the replay and you can see how much brake or how much throttle you're using um i've actually had a scenario where I, I believe we were running at Talladega and I just didn't seem to have the speed that I needed. And so I went in and watched the replay getting full throttle. But what I didn't, what I, then I looked down and I realized I was ha about an eighth break. Oh, so the, wow. the um, pot had kind of gotten himself worn out a little bit and whatnot. And so that the brake was actually dragging, which is mm. slowing me down. Yep. Not even putting your foot on it and it's lying on there just enough. Yep. Wow. Well, we're so, getting I mean, ready to go green here, too. 
But yeah, that's oh, the yeah. thing. Mechanical failures can happen in a real car. That's why this thing is the best. I, I believe it's the best NASCAR simulator ever. I mean, uh, iRacing is, is no slouch, but it's also a pay service. And that's kind of why people just come back to this always okay. and have for 21 years. Well, that's we, the thing about it is it's a free game. Yeah. It's, it wasn't, you know, it was a game that you had to pay for back in the day. Um, I think I had two copies, three copies of it just because I wanted to make sure I had them. So if a buddy of mine or whatever wanted to, you know, we could, we could run. And then eventually, you know, it got to the point where they didn't care about it anymore. So now it's a free game. So anybody's got a steering wheel, got a good, decent computer. Uh, yeah. You can go to a lot of these leagues. Uh, they have the, um, the big CD, you know, set up so that you can download it and, and run it. And I see a lot of Napa cars up near the front here. Yeah. Did you retire your rig? Yes. We are getting ready to go green and we will be hearing from the Balser family right about now for the gentlemen, start your engines. Thank you, Balser family for the grand marshal duties of the night. Here it is. Welcome to Talladega Night Super Speedway, one of the fastest trucks around. Presented by Talladega Nights Racing League and brought to you by Carnation TV. Driver, start your engines! Everybody out! All right. Back. NWO. To, to the field, Three cars. Right? Three cars on the inside line. Uh, they're qualifying. They did uh, one third and fifth. So that's pretty good for them. They've got three cars right up there already. They're surrounded by the uh, Team Rocket cars. And then a few of the uh, Monster Energy B Big Stone Gap Racing. And then a bunch of Napa cars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. I wonder cool. if some of the guys, you know, just elected to, to stay in the back for a little bit. And let's see what, you know, let's see what happens first. Yellow flag remaining on course here. Some drivers may not be in order back there. That's why we're getting another full lap. Lights are off. We will go green next time around. That wasn't supposed to happen, but if the drivers get out of order, then they will can, they will pull the yellow out and send them back around one more time. Chuck McClure with the pole position. Let's go through the whole field here. So we got Chuck McClure, Rodney Sellens beside him. Ken Roberts, Bob Seminera, Kelly Cossey, Grant Wesley, Denny Carroll, Randy Waugh, Greg Lovell. So let's see here if I can get a better camera. This Greg Palmer in there. Trying to get an angle on these guys. Greg Lovell. Uh, Mike Mangiolardi. So Lover, Mike Mangiolardi, yep. Zach Roberts, Dan Lovell, Gary Mingus, Craig Hagley, Keith Bynum, Josh Mercurio, Brian Lovell, John Godfrey, Frank Divins, Stephen Brandstetter, Jeremy Jeffries, Perry Bond, Eric Lovell, Ulysses Sandoval, the Papi, Garland Oaks right there in the three, Pat McCarsky, Seth Cole, Nate Gunther, Alex Moe, Alex Ortiz, Jeffrey Goodpaster, Andrew Miller, Graham McDonald, Javier Negron, Chris Van Vliet, Chris Elliott, Robert Breedlove, Josh Slocum, and Jeffrey Elliott. I'm on fire team seems to be occupying the entire rear of the field. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of the guys back there, they didn't qualify. They, right. they, they like to not to take the time. That's a strategy. To start in the back. Yep, that, that is exactly it. It's a strategy to try to get themselves possibly out of any trouble that could happen. So what do you think as far as that strategy is? I mean, you like to stay back and kind of be behind and see everything that's going on. But with 40 cars on track right now, I think I'd rather be in front and have any potential of a big accident happen in my review mirror. So me, I'm different. I think I'd rather be back, try to stay and stay with the lead draft, but far enough back so that mm -hmm. you can see the smoke and see, I, you know, like I told you before, I can't run up front like that um, side by side and hold my breath that long. And, you know, you how we talked about to uh, Jeff Elliott earlier, how he, he decided not to run the, the next race that he was in because he was just so wound up and so excited. Uh, I couldn't run up front that long. It would I'd be in the same situation. 
See, I'm, I'm the same way I like to be in the back. However, opting not to qualify in a full race, now you're dealing with those last six, those first six spots on pit road when you enter. You're, you're having to slow down below 55 when you hit the commitment cone because you literally have to pit within like the first 40 feet. So see, you're so losing me, like, time. See, now that's what I like about that is I don't, I do that and I don't lose time. Okay, so how? Because if you're if you're aiming to be going 55 mile an hour at the cone, if you're that if you have to pit in the first stall, you have you have to be going slower than that. You have to remember though, I race with my hands, so my braking is unlike anybody else's. Okay. So I've actually been out racing at Talladega, been in an eight car straight line field, been the last car in that line, and when we pull down to go to pit road, when we hit the end of pit road, I'm in first place. Ah, okay. So I have a really unique canny, uncanny ability to basically anti-lock brake. Nice. Chuck McClure got a point for that last lap. Rodney Sullins will lead that one there. Now check this strategy out. The orange I'm on fire team, all five of them are running about three seconds behind the next pack. Got to remember, yellows are on. So they're, yeah. they're banking on the fact that there's something going to happen. We have damage now. So they're banking yeah. on the fact that something's probably going to happen with all those cars up there. And if they're that far back, when the caution comes out, it's going to bring them right back up to the field and possibly take out uh, some of their competition. It's it's a different strategy. If the thing goes green all the way, it could, could you know, not work. Yeah. That's an interesting strategy. All five of the I'm on fire team, as you can see here, they're not even in the main broadcast screen right now. We're following this entire pack and there's no orange cars. They're all about three seconds behind. They're five seconds now, uh, six seconds off the leader, five seconds off the next, what am I trying to say? Five seconds off the tail of that lead pack which is see, four, uh, 35 total cars in a pack right here, and then about a five or six second gap of those last five. Big Stone Gap Racing has pretty much got them four of their cars together. They got uh, Zach Roberts in the middle of them running the high side. And then the, uh, I believe it's the 80s. That would be, isn't that? 80 is Eric which? Lovell. Eric, okay. Yeah. Eric Lovell, uh, Greg's son. He's running behind him, a few cars behind him, but he's still in that line. Oh, then, as I say that, uh, Denny Carroll and Greg Lovell shoot down to the bottom. We've seen these two together. They're they're wicked. Yeah, these and they teams. Get hooked up. Oh no, Team Tarnation TV Turbo is oh. actually wrecking themselves. That is not good. I think it was Pat McCarsky. Yellow flag is up. No race back, so these guys will kind of fan out and roll out of the throttle a little bit when they get back around to the back straight away we'll go into replay mode see if we're back that up see what happened it looked like teammates actually got tangled in that uh it looks like maybe pat mccarsky try to find him here yeah we'll use helicopter camera because that seems to be the best sometimes for seeing what's going on they're four wide coming through the turn there. They actually held it. Oh, no. Who is that? Brandstetter, right? Just a little tap on the corner of Pat McCarsky there. And that's probably just a bump, bump oh, draft going around. That's you know? too bad. Yeah, they were four wide right through that whole entire corner. And about three of the Tarnation TV Turbo. That's too bad. Because... Um, Rod and I, we have actually illegally modified these cars because we wanted to win because we're broadcasting the race. Well, yeah, that's and, what the turbo uh, stands for. Yeah, there was illegal fuel and uh, illegal fuel cell in that. The fuel window Bob opens at twelve, but uh, these Seminara, guys could actually go thirty. Bob Seminar has made his way up into the second position right now due to the uh, the way it all came out. And Rodney Sullins, like you said before, is out in the lead. We're gonna. I'm pretty sure we'll see pretty much everybody pit, get at least two tires, um, fuel them up. You're right. Tire yeah. doesn't, the yeah. tires don't wear here that much, so um, no, no. you're silly not to get two tires, um, just because 
it may it can be a big help especially on the oh, bottom but. we have a rocket team member staying out to get the lead lap five bonus points can you track down and see who that was yeah that is grant wesley stayed out and he's going to try to he's going to pick up them points okay that's important that's mm -hmm. very important uh you know if you're not running up front and you can do that there's five more points for your team and that's important you know, gonna... to do early because grant is good enough and i mean i mean everybody here is good enough to be able to pull this off early, stay out, get those five bonus points. And you know what? We're six or seven laps into a 47 lap race. Lots of time to work your way back through the field. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure as long as he doesn't get tangled up in something on the way up through there, he'll be back up near the front. And um, you know, that's, it's smart. I mean, you're gonna get two, you're gonna get five points. That's five points for your team. You go back to the back, you go in, Possibly, he might take four tires just because he's going to the back. He might as well, and just he'll work his way back up through there. I see the Om on Fire teams all stayed out, but I guarantee you, you'll probably see them guys come into pit road this next time by. I think most of the guys that stayed out, other than you know Grant, we know he's trying to lead a lap, but most of these guys are probably just waiting. They're going to pit. That'll put them in the back of the pack, so they're kind of out of the danger zone, as it were. Right. I think. Oh man, I don't know what they're going to do though. These I'm on fire guys already with that move at the start back and out of the pack, uh, five, six seconds behind the pack to run by themselves. Do you think that they're going to go in right now? I mean, you think they would, because again, it's definitely early in the race. Y you kind of have to, but they've also, well, made, you know depends. what the, they've got four, they've got four laps of fuel, four or five laps of fuel left in there. Maybe they're going to go for the four or five laps and put under green altogether think that's a wise idea only because if a caution doesn't come out in that short amount of time now you've pitted now granted if it goes green the rest of the way you know depending on how the laps fall maybe you know but i i, I bet you they're all going to come in they're going to pit they're just they're lined up in the back they're trying to stay out of trouble they're going to try to see if they can you know stay out of the most trouble when we get near the end of the race they'll work together and hopefully it works out for them and puts them up near the front yeah, it looks like you're right. It might have been a silly move to try to stay out there for five more laps under the green. Your, your best is, like you said, stay. And you know, if they want to follow that same, if they want to follow the same strategy, they can. You know, they're back there. As you were talking before, they, you'd rather run up front. And I, like I said, I'd rather be running up back. Right. And that's great. You are correct. Being the first car, nine times out of ten, is probably one of the safer places to be. But what happens when you're the first car, you get shuffled out. Now you're eighth, you're tenth, you're in the danger zone. Um, when these crashes happen there, and there's a lot of times you don't, you, you can't avoid it. You did the, the track closes up in front of you. I like that other camera angle. I think I might move this camera around here. Denny Carroll was uh, able to be the first one off pit road. Um, and so he took over the lead. Rodney Sullen's on the outside. But Greg Lovell right directly behind Danny Carroll, which is an advantage for them because them two push very, very good together. McClure in the 17 is on the outside. I'm going to try a different camera angle there on pit row one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Moving my uh, drone around just to see if we get some different angles. Tarnation TV, uh, secret maneuver. Kind of looks like Keith Bynum might have got a caught speeding on pit road people are passing him on the back stretch so that's usually a sign that he wanted to be the first and wanted to be the fastest but unfortunately he tried it on pit road oh uh, okay yeah my statistics are not showing yet anyway a black flag i'll keep an eye on that it still has a status of everybody pitting which will filter through like i said everybody in the youtube chat and youtube viewers thanks for sticking with us for this marathon of a broadcast uh it's, we're flirting with the three hour mark right now but we hope it's been entertaining with all the sprint races that are coming up and now a whole bunch of new strategy coming in here to this final race the main event and then you see something different here that most other leagues do not do double file restarts mm -hmm. um that is that is an interesting way so it also kind of makes it so you take someone like uh Ken Roberts, who's sitting back there in about seventh spot. Well, now he's the fourth car on the inside back. Uh, that could be in a big advantage. A Bob lot Seminero of cars in the coming in for top up. Well, there's that. That's smart. Uh, if you're not up front and you 
or, you know, you go out, you get more fuel. These basically that's what they're going to do. They're going to top off. What that does is if should this thing go green, they start having green flag pit stops. Yeah. You can go a little bit further. Quite possibly a yellow flag will come out, and it might benefit you. You could stay on that high line, stay out of the catastrophe, uh, pending catastrophe. That can happen with green flag stops, although we do tend to see three or four lap cycles. Yeah, and they and the thing of it is, is, is you don't really go a lap down when you're going into the pits. It's usually you usually get a lap down when you get to the back stretch. You're trying to build up your speed, and depending on where the leaders are with each other and how they are together, they quite possibly, you know, if there's enough of them and they're running a nice, tight, you know, good group together, they could overrun you and put you a lap down. But so current pit stop situations, position number one to 24 have only pitted once. And position 25 to 40 have pitted either two or three times. So lots of differences on, on pitting. In this league, there is no rule against how many times you're allowed to change tires. Some some teams are, sorry, some leagues do have tire limits where you're only allowed to change, you know, you're allowed to have four sets of tires, so you start with one set on the car and you're allowed to do three tire changes. Which makes it more realistic because in real, you know, in, in the NASCAR world, they, yeah. they yeah. give them limited sets. Yep. So that, uh, I run in a league that did that um, and it was interesting and what they did was if you had used more sets, you pay you paid a point penalty. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, right on. Denny Carroll is leading this pack to the green flag here, start of lap 10. Got his buddy Greg Lovell right behind him. So you watch those two. They're going to be doing some uh, good bump drafting and trying to get themselves up out front. The other three monster cars are not too far behind them either. Yeah, see, in the sprints, we weren't seeing a lot of these neon green cars. Now they're all over the place in the front of this pack. And so are the Rocket team, too. And they did really well in a couple of those sprint races. The blue rockets on those black NWO cars. As, as I thought, you know, you got Denny Carroll and Greg Lovell. They pulled out pretty good. You've got Brian Lovell dropping down and Dan Lovell behind him on the inside. So they've only got one of the levels. That's Eric on the high side. Uh, I'm sure as soon as he gets a new opportunity to hopefully get in there with his teammates, they will try to hook up together. If you get them five together on a line on the inside, I don't care. I'm going to say it's <laughs> over. Big Stone's got it. Yeah. It looks like they're trying to get something sorted out mid-pack back there. It looks like they're sort of flying in about three wide and getting it all sorted. It's the front half of the field is definitely claiming these two lines. you got Bob Seminera and uh, Ken Roberts kind of in the uh, Big Stone Gap racing Monster Energy cars. You can't say Fords, you can't say Dodge, you can't say there's the Ford, there's a two Dodges, there's a tail, there's a Trans Am. <laughs> they didn't stick to one, one, but uh, them guys are in a sandwich in between those two guys. I, if I was Bob, that's a good place to be right there. Uh, you know, what you look ahead of you, you know how fast those two guys yeah. go, especially when they get together. You're in good company up there. Currently Plus focused. You got Ken, yep. Ken Roberts right behind him. Great super speedway racer. Oh, fantastic, yeah. The number 21 of Randy Waugh currently focused on him because we will be here tomorrow night supporting his cause for the United Cerebral Palsy. UCP.org. Yeah, That'll be a lot of fun. You see, we have a uh, wrecking ball car coming oh, out. It looks like road. Nick Gunther. 56 wrecking ball. Nick is two laps down. I wonder if he's getting into penalty trouble. I don't know if he he'd got a black flag on the restart just because of the double file restart. It's that's, really yeah, easy. That's yeah. irrelevant, yeah. The outside line, though, uh, is really got a run going. Yeah, I'm going to back down there. We got Perry Bond on that third line. Rodney Sullins on the outside there. He is making up some ground with Chuck McClure behind him, Craig Palmer. Uh, Ken Roberts jumped up in there into that. Um, then you've got Kelly Cause on the 0-0. Zero -zero. They're making up some pretty good ground on the outside. Yeah, that middle line seems to fall apart a little bit. Well, like I said, what I've noticed with racing with these guys a little bit, on the bottom side, especially on the exit of two, 
it has a tendency to be a little tight. So you have two options. One, you know, just keep the wheel turned a little bit, shave a little speed because your tires are sliding. And your other option is you have to lift. And so that it, it can be that. And then of course, as you have to lift, the according effect goes all the way back through. And then usually five, six, eight cars behind you end up paying the penalty for that. Yeah. And watching Alex Ortiz in that white zero car trying to get a third line going, nobody's really jumping up there with him. He CBS, does have yeah, the number yeah. three of Garland Oaks there in front of him and that Tarnation TV Turbo, that lime green pink car. Got a lot of the Tarnation TV Turbo cars back there that are kind of getting formed up. They're not up front, don't get me you know, wrong, but they're getting together. They're all kind of getting into a line and trying to form a line. Rodney Sullins leading this race. I think that, yeah, they're trying to find each other. It's good for pit strategy because if they do decide to pit a little bit early, they're all on that bottom line to peel off. That may be what they're trying to do. Maybe they're trying to pit a little bit off pace. And if they can get down to that yellow line. So now, now what I want you to do is I want you to focus a little bit here right now on that bottom line. Yep. What's happened? You got Big Stone Gap racing. Oh, yeah. One, two, three, four, five. They are lined up. Um, I don't know. I'm looking at the wrong angle at the moment. Uh, it them. was the 29 of Randy Waugh and Mike Mangiolardi. They, in the 29, uh, 23, sorry, 29. I'm going to get this right. Yep, Pulled down 20. in front of them. Saw the energy coming. They said, oh, we're going with them guys. You got Big Stone Gap Racing, Nosa Tail. That's a good one. Look, and one of them just pulled out. It just, Eric like you Lovell, say, we start to talk about it, and then they're going to, they're like, we don't, we don't like you guys talking about us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But right now, I, the, the Big Stone Gap Racing and the Tarnation TV guys are pretty much you got the more of an organization going, per se. Napa cars seem to be spread out quite a bit, although Randy Waugh and Mike Mangiolardi are running nose to tail. Um, you get the Army cars out there on the outside, and I couldn't see who they were only because it's Mike. Uh, oh, okay, with Perry Bond and uh, Bob Seminar. Just the, the angle I was watching, I couldn't see the numbers. Right. They've teamed up on the outside. You have rocket, a couple of rocket cars coming from behind, and they've got the two of the other guys in the front. So they are kind of getting in there and getting working. The one team Benny I haven't Carroll pulled out. really seen be able to sort of get together, maybe it's part of their strategy, is the Thunderbird team, the silver and red cars. They're sort of all the, you know, they're, they're kind of in different spots in this pack. And that might be a good thing, because if a, if a wreck does happen, it's not going to claim every single car. That's another thing that you got to think about, too, is, hey, guys, let's all run together. But then if you all get caught in the same accident, you've just ruined any chance of, you know, collecting optimum points. So it, it, it confuses me a little bit. But mind you, this is my, um, you know, mentality of Talladega Racing, that... You know, you had Big Stone Gap Racing in their Monster Energy cars. I can't say Ford Dodge again there, but uh, <laughs> they were all in line. You know, mm -hmm. I would have think that's where they'd want to stay, but they keep uh, popping out when I guess runs come. They figure they can maybe jump out and, and advance a little bit more. But there again, too, you think about it. If you have five of your teammates, one, two, three, four, five, and then you have various cars on the outside of them, you know, you're still not going to gain the maximum points. But if you can get them all up there running yeah. in the top five, taking up the top five positions, so you've got three cars on the outside, two cars on the inside, and they're just, you know, basically the, blocking the way. The optimum way to finish, if you had, were lucky enough for all five of your team members to be up in that front pack, the optimum way to finish would just be three wide. Because at least oh, yeah. you'd, you'd be, if, if you can't go, you know, row one, row two, you know, try to get three wide and, you know, position Absolutely. one, two, three, right away, done. And then, yeah, you, know. and you do, like that picture of uh, Zach Roberts' win, you look at it, you mm -hmm. had Zach Roberts in the bottom, you had Ken Roberts on the high side, and then behind you, you had four wide. I mean, there you go. You well, get let's, yeah, like, and let's say, okay, um, let's say the front, let's say the first three rows are three wide, and you're nose to tail with your teammates on the bottom. You could be one, you could be first place, seventh place, and ninth. Oh, <laughs> even though yeah. you're following each other because that's three by three. So there's nine cars there. You need but to be have, beside each other to claim those those spots. If you have two cars running side by side in front and three cars running right behind them, that's the top five. Mm -hmm. You've got maximum points. Yep. They're like, oh, we're nose to tail. I'm like, yeah, but the, he got first, but then the third guy got ninth. <laughs> Just, and it can happen. You know, it can, yeah. That can change 
in oh, half a seconds. Yep. But I, like I said, Tarnation TV turbo cars, they have got themselves lined up. They're, they're like, Ooh, again, we got Ooh, Wendy Waz around. Oh, and no. took out a bunch of them. Oh, this is a bad one. Okay, Set so here comes that. Here comes the orange team, and they are sitting in the back again. So now they've got Ooh. lots of time. The I'm on fire team. I'm telling you, they had a slow down. Some severely damaged cars in this. Yep. Granted, it is moderate damage, which is which will help some of them because they will be able to get them for the most part fixed, so, up, fixed up. But I see some of them where the driver's side is just stove right in. I can see the whole left rear tire. Yep. The I'm on fire team just kind of slides through that whole thing. We're going to back that up, take a look at it. A couple different angles there. He That's thought the strategy wasn't a good one. Yeah, look at that, eh? That's pretty wild, man. I'm, thinking, I'm not really what sure what doing? happened there, though. Oh, something big happened because we've got. I'm going to go in slow motion here because something happens up front. Let's find it first. We can always go back. Oh, something happened there. Randy Wallach, like he plateaued on the apron in the 21. Oh, he's actually, there's a checkup. Let's, let's, we'll There's that accordion effect. Here. Yeah, we were just talking Remember about that. Remember I said, that. that bottom side, the bottom side, you're going to get more of a checkup than you are anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And that checkup can just, the accordion effect goes back, and then you've got someone back there. Oh, yeah. So and what Randy's happened is... has got him locked up, but the car shoots back up the track anyway. He's doing 160 miles an hour. And then everybody around him and behind him, nowhere to go. Yeah. Except, except for I'm on fire, which ain't got to the scene of the crime yet. Yeah, exactly. You gotta love it. Randy took some damage on that. Man, Gilardi took some damage on that. A lot of Frank damage. Frank Divens. Oh, bad damage to a lot of cars. That is unfortunate. We we'll see everybody on pit road here. We're back to live. I actually have to say, if you if you haven't noticed it, when you see the the wrecking ball cars, and you get a good side view of them, yeah. that wrecking ball looks almost three D. It's weird. <laughs> it is very cool. It I was going to say something about that earlier, but I just saw it again and I had to say it. Yeah, it is a great design. Let's find one here. Uh, is that one? That's Nate there, yeah. Yeah, what you're talking about is... Now, see, I wonder what that Alamy means. Maybe that's a stock image. <laughs> so, Mandelardi's car, the back of that thing, he elected to stay out. Um, I imagine he was just trying to see if quite, quite possibly that uh, he could lead a lap, but... The back of that thing is absolutely destroyed. Yeah, we're going to fly around here to some of these guys. Some of them look like they got a lot of damage. But look at all the I'm on fire cars. Pristine yeah, they're, condition. They ain't got a scratch. Uh, maybe maybe a little bit on the rear bumper from a little bit of pushing. Uh, Frank Divens painted up a nice paint job, but Mangiolardi is... I'm surprised he didn't cut the trunk lid off that thing. I don't think he's been in pit road yet. I think he stayed out with the intent to maybe possibly try to lead a lap. Oh, and it I didn't think work. you're right. It didn't work. So, you know, but it, what, you know, he's going to be in the back anyways. He's, he's damaged. I thought, you know, he's, I think his philosophy was, well, maybe I can stay out, lead a lap. It's five more point, points from a team. That helps out a lot. That that thing is wrecked. Yeah. Looks like the NWO cars aren't too bad. No, a few of the guys made it through there okay, but there was quite a few of them that just did not have any luck. I'm going to see um, they are, okay, on fire cars are taking four tires. You're going to start the back. You're going to stay back there. Four tires. Why not? No. Um, you have to, sometimes you have to, you could probably go a whole race on left side tires, um, but usually what I always did was, yeah, the first race I would take left, second, second caution or, or pit stop I'd take right. And then if it was a scenario like what I'm on fire is doing, which I kind of like to do staying in the back like that, I'll take four. Give myself back yeah. it. Yeah. Might as well, especially under yellow. 
there's nothing hurt. I mean, early in the race too. We, we aren't. Uh, we're just about halfway through this run. So, I mean, taking four is not going to hurt right now. Uh, if you do want that track position under yellow, it still counts. If everybody's coming down pit road, you want to get off a little bit quicker. You know, up and take two cars or two tires is always going to be a little bit quicker than the other cars if they take four. Now, I don't know, but it should be, and I think it is. He's going around. Uh, Nate Gunther's going to be our lucky dog. He is the only car that was currently a lap down. And I think that that was the one that we saw before that uh, pitted right after the green. So I'm not really sure what he might have done that would have caused him to have to pit after that. Usually it's passing a car. Um, you know, when you go into pit road, you pass a car illegally. Where they clear black flags afterwards, you know, it's kind of a sneaky way around it, but you can just wait and say, well, I got a black flag. Yeah. You might not have done that. No, they'll be able to, he'll have to drive around to put the miles on the car. That's how they do it here. Yeah. yeah so, but, but, you know, you look back there, you got that online fire team all lined up, nose to tail. Are they going down to pits again? Looks like they might be coming into the pit again to top up. From the um, front line. Yep, they are. Focused they're, gonna on come down, they're just going to come down and they're going to just top off their t the fuel. I guarantee you, no tires. They'll just take fuel. Okay. And that, like I said, puts them in a different um, fuel stop. Than everybody else. Now, where that's where that can be a big advantage is um, when everybody gets ready to go pit. If you had all forty cars pitting at the same time, that can be chaos. Yes. But yes. if you can put come in, take fuel, and pit maybe two, three laps later, you come in as a team. You don't come in with a bunch of the other drivers. I believe that's what they're thinking on uh, banking on doing. Right. Right. We just saw Nick Gunther take off. He will now claim his lucky dog, drive all the way back around to the end of the pack. He won't obviously be allowed to pit. And we have the I'm on fire team in its entirety almost coming down pit row there. One, two, three, four. There's only four of them. Yeah, they had a little they had a little episode um, on pit road. A couple of them got bumped into each other with a Tarnation TV car. So okay. they might they might have got a little damaged. Um, that that kind of might kill their strategy a little bit. But Rodney Sullins comes out with the lead after that, which is, that's pretty good. Yep. Now, the big thing of it is, is, you know, you're going to have cars all over the place. Who's got damage? Who doesn't have damage? Is that going to affect them? You know, you're going to yeah. see cars that may have the damage and slow down uh, a certain line. You know, they're there to let a race. Granted, if they got a little damage, but most of the guys, if they realize that they're damaged, they'll they'll pull out of the way. So with Team I'm on Fire just coming out of the pits on full tanks, Slocum is the only one that decided to stay out on the track. The other four will be able to make it to lap probably 35 before having to pit again. Maybe even farther than that. You say they go about, what, 13? About, yeah, the, the, we tend to see the window open around 12 is when we start looking. And then between 12 and 15 laps per tank. So I'm thinking, that, yeah, maybe mid-30s for that at the latest. Everybody else have to come down a little bit earlier. Yeah, and I still don't think, still think that's a that's a two, two pit stop under green scenario. Yeah. But like I said, the advantage it gives them is they can pit separately from everybody else, possibly. Right. Out of sequence and uh, less traffic. Rodney oh, Sellins absolutely. dominating this race. He will lead, of course, he will lead this lap here as we go back green at the start of lap number 24. Rodney has led 16 laps this evening. And we were talking to our fellow broadcaster, Seth Cole, earlier in the broadcast. He currently has the fastest lap of the night. 47.83 second lap. 200.015 mile an hour average. That's an average. That is a fast so, lap. Team Rocket's got three cars in the front that are nose to tail. Uh, awesome. W, w, uh, NWO's got a few cars there, but they're not really nose to tail. But mind you, we were talking about that earlier, that it's not always the, pr the appropriate way to do it. Things got kind of mixed up a little bit with the teams. They're not all quite together. Um, the Napa team's got some cars formed up in the back, but and now that we are talking about it, I'm sure it'll change. Well, yeah. <laughs> but, Team uh, Rocket. You know, they're, they're, and they're switching lanes. And I mean, like I said, this is why I, I 
I can't do what these guys do and this it just it, it wears me right out yeah especially with I mean we're up here doing uh, you know a seven race broadcast and it's hard work up here imagine being down there now mind you they didn't have to race all, all seven but you know they've had to race five and, and all different tracks different strategies you know there's a lot going on down there in these things Amazingly, uh, Mike Mangiolardi doesn't even have a, a bumper or and or a cover on the back of that car. Oh, they did cut um, it but off. But the damage, eh? yeah, the damage is um, all on the back. So he's tucked right in behind his teammate, and he, he's he's running well. What's he doing I mean, for speed? We're going to check on him right now. The Mangiolardi in the twenty nine. He's he's keeping it up about one hundred ninety five. He's in the corner right now too. Yeah, he's, he's tucked in behind Randy Waugh, um, using Randy to keep him keep him up to speed. He's got uh, Frank Divins that are just sneaking right up behind him right now. The three of them together, if they keep Mike in the middle, that may not hurt them at all. You know, may not hurt them. That may, may help them out because they can keep Mike going fast. That's true. With no trunk lid in the turn doing 195, it doesn't seem to be affecting him. You're right, too. I mean, you're, the front of your car is obviously the most crucial when it comes to aerodynamics and if you've got somebody tucked up behind you with a little bit of damage like that to take that air off that rear spoiler that rear end damage might not even be a factor yeah, as long as he, he's got someone behind him until he gets out of that draft grant wesley's back in the 39th position i'm not sure what happened to him but he's out there all by himself that's a lonely feeling at this track oh no oh we got a big one another oh, one we do I just come back to that. It happened uh, probably around, I can't really sure, about eighth and tenth spot. That's too bad. We were just focused on a different portion of the track, and we missed it. So we're going to back it up, and we're going to find it. TV2 is not going to be good because it goes to the wall camera. Yeah, somebody got out of shape, a big stone gap. And yep. Garland Oaks. Greg Lovell, Greg Lovell trying to push his teammate past, you know, to keep him going. Just a bump Ooh. gone wrong, really. Yeah. Unfortunately, another big wreck. Yeah, the wrecks, sometimes you can get away with the wrecks, but not so much on this 40. I'm going to back that up again. Take another look at it. That's not good. It looks like the 41. Race. I'm just trying to find out what car to get on here. I really think what happened is, is uh, Greg Lovell got up behind him. They are super great speed, super speedway racers. They race like together all the time. Um, like we saw on Sunday, um, you know, somebody got in the back of Greg and he saved it. And the same thing happened to Denny. Uh, Greg got into the back of Denny uh, late in the race, but it wasn't as such, wasn't as bad. And he was able to recover. I just oh. think it was a, a bump draft gone wrong. Yeah, then he got um, Greg slipped up into the middle line and then tried to tuck back in behind Denny, and it was just a, just a license plate, you know? And yeah. just it, turned them. So easy to do here. So now we're going to see probably somebody stay out. Oh. Uh, Kelly Kaza. Oh, he stayed out that? so he who's can that? lead it. We're always looking for the. For the move of the race here. <laughs> Kelly Kaza stayed out to lead a lap. I see Greg uh, level. I think he's decided that he was going to try to do that, but uh, Kelly Kaza beat him to it. It almost looked like Randy Waugh almost made it through that. I said the only advantage they have is that it is it's not realistic damage so yeah. sometimes you'll get lucky and get in there and they'll fix it and you can still be competitive and like we were talking about mike mangelardi he was he was running really good with randy wah um and uh Div frank divins right behind him so you know that's one thing but still you know damage hurts uh, especially if you got someone like uh you know greg lovell denny denny carol denny carol sorry that you know, they're really good at the super speedway racing. A lot of these guys are great here, but you have a little bit of damage, even though, you know, Mike and Mangelardi, we talked about him having all that rear damage. If it comes down to the point where he's got to pull out 
and try mm-hmm. to ask somebody or whatever, it's yeah. going to you know, pull the shoot. You're not going to go. Yeah, that's the thing. You can stay with the pack. You might be all right, it, it, but making any moves is probably out of the question. Oh, absolutely. So I think Team, um, uh, team Napa were doing really good there by basically putting having a car in front of them and a car behind them. They were yep. keeping it tight. And it that's going to pay dividends if you have a, an extra car, you know, may not be out there to win, but they can bring an extra car up towards the front. There's more points. Pat McCarthy's car is tore up pretty bad. They're probably going to cut the trunk off of that one, too. If he's allowed to pit this time around, I'm sure he will. Brian Lovell has retired for an accident, and Danny Carroll has also retired. Only two cars have retired from the race. Every single car is on the lead lap. And unfortunately, those two cars are from Big Big Stone Gap Racing, so that's mm. going to hurt their points. Mem- well, mem- remember, we also have, you know penalty points that are that are going to come into effect tomorrow so right with these yellow flags coming out we are under our fourth yellow of the evening people you know if someone has been forced to claim a wreck uh, i think it's a two and park rule yeah they they still have the same rule that they always have two incident park yep okay yeah, so, if, so that means basically if someone has caused two accidents, they will be asked to retire. Yeah, Denny Carroll has retired, but I don't believe it was because he caused two accidents. So I happened to catch pa- uh, Pat McCarsky on pit road. Uh, when he left, they left the rear trunk of the rear trunk and the rear bumper right there on uh, pit road. It, he does. He's in the same scenario as Mike Mangiolardi. He has no uh, rear bumper, no bumper protector. You can see the fuel cell. Yep. Yeah, we, it looks like the front end's okay. And they bashed they, the doors uh, back out because his tires were sticking out a lot. So it looks like they've done some repairs and, and removed some, that lid. So, you know, the car's lighter, so now it's illegal. Yeah. And if it was, if it, I don't know if the game would ever actually realistically do that. I do know that it affects the way the car handles. Yes. Um, at a lot of tracks, if you're doing a fixed setup, a shorter tracks and stuff like that, if the, you have that same scenario, it actually loosens the car up, which uh, is yeah. great because mm-hmm. uh, if you're running it and it's Loose too tight fast. for you. Yeah. So uh, I've actually seen people um, win races at Rockingham because of that. Oh, really? Have a little yeah. bit of damage and actually just be quicker. Because the car uh, rotates backed better. It, backed it. It was running a league. It was really, really tight. I backed it into the fence um, and went in. They pulled the rib dump, the deck lid and the cover all off the back. And the darn thing come to life. Wow. We're currently showing here Seth Cole leading the pack. He did get credit for a lap lead. But it looks like he is going to peel out to pit road. If anybody else comes with them, of course, there it is. Team I'm on Fire, Turn HTB Turbo. We've got the Napa guys, the Thunderbirds. As you can see, as everybody crosses the start finish line or getting to the start finish line, they're starting to do their double file lineup. Yep, we're just watching the pit exit here now. NASCAR official has t- turned the sign around to go. You just has to, you have you cannot run that stop sign if the pace car is coming. They will not let you merge. And I still don't think we're quite in the window to go all the way on this tank of gas. I think we're no. still going to be a little short. Yep. Yeah, you can. I mean, pushing it, you might get 15, but they're going to need 17, so they definitely have to come back again. So the next question is: Is do they wait for a caution and? Um, you know, then pick it up, or does some of the guys maybe decide to run maybe well what, eight laps and then yeah. pick and pick you know come back out uh, you know or hoping. Do you pit when there's twelve to go and know that you can make it to the end, but you're getting in early? Yep, and that might be the way to go too. Mm-hmm. And there's so many different strategies that you can use doing in this kind of racing that. 
And and it may not hurt you if you can. It's like I told you on uh, last Sunday. They it's the Delta time. It's the yeah. time that when you get off that track, you hit the end of pit road. You are 55 all the way down. Hit your pit stop right. Get out of there as soon as you hit the end of pit road. You are on it. You got to get up those through those gears and get you going as fast as you can. Um, the guys that can do that, you know, faster, you know, you're going to gain an advantage. Be nice to see this go green. You know, we haven't had any green flag pit stops yet, so no. Come on, guys, let's go. Let's go. We can do this. Yeah, Denny Curl in the YouTube chat been wrecked of every damn race. I do believe the first one was on purpose. He has had a rough night for yeah. sure. Yeah, such a good run here too. Around, every time we turned around, he was getting turned, and and you know, not of his own doing. So, that, that, I I feel for him. That that sucks. Yeah, and Cabana is watching the race too. RJ Cabana, he says. Hey guys, just got off work. Good luck, everybody. So he's tuning in and watching this thing. We are three and a half hours into this event, so we will probably get it done before four hours. We'll be turning TV's longest broadcast. Green flag in the air. As Rodney Sullins has been dominating this race, he's got 19. That'll be the 20th lap that he has led in this main yeah. event. He's been up there off and on. Never really been too far away from it, but he's been up there to leading a little bit and then Sometimes gets dropped back a little bit, but he's he's still going strong. With he's got his teammate Greg Palmer right behind him. These guys are three wide already. Oop, there we go. Well, In remember we have some cars. <laughs> some of the cars probably have got a little bit of damage. So when you come out of turn two and you're still winding that thing there's up, there's four wide uh, in the back and they're spinning. They were four wide coming off cold tires. And that will bring the. Uh, don't think it worked out. out. <laughs> no. Almost. Perry Bond. But that's a that's a product of you know you have damaged cars and you have undamaged cars. So some of those damaged cars are going to slow things down a little bit. So when they do, you know the guys that are undamaged, they're going to try to take an advantage of that, and then melee ensues sometimes. Right. We are not into a race back situation yet. That'll happen at lap 37. And like we were saying, too, the point at which these guys can make it to the end. It's getting closer. Uh, it's 35, lap 35. So I wonder, do you think that the guys who pitted at the last possible second could make it now with some yellows? Uh, they, really I, I really, I, I really think unless they're clutching already, um, you know what I mean? And it's hard to do here, uh, at, like, you know, at, to, to, to roll and clutch and while you're racing, I, I think the smart move is to pit now, then hope maybe for another caution and then you can clutch it. Yeah. Um, yeah. if you're on fire and you're still playing that same strategy or even maybe, uh, you know, I, I do think some of them may not, and that some some may wait and pit at the very last moment so they know they can make it. Yeah, it's almost like it's too much because if they pit now, they'll probably be all right. I I believe these. Oh, somebody decided to stay out. I can't see They're it from again. my. Oh wow, the the field's a fifty fifty split it, on the on the broadcast camera that I've got set up for the pit entrance. It looked like a like. Half the people were going, and then half of them changed their mind and decided to stay 56 out. Fifty-six to the booth. Fifty-six live on the air. Go ahead, fellas. Fellas, uh, top four in interviews and the s s silly statistics with Mr. Mingus. Short version after that. So be okay. Sounds good. I All see right, that guys, uh, I... you retired. Too much damage, eh? Well, motor's gone. Roger that. Yeah, that was, uh, we, 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 we played safe the entire race. If you notice, we were off the pack for half the race. And it's time to get ready to go race. I got, I got caught up in the big one there. So uh, That's too bad, buddy. It was an yeah, awesome event, happened, though, man. tonight, man. It, but a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it all night. It was awesome. Yeah, now we're looking at a sprint to the finish. So we've been running sprints all night. Now we're going to be sprinting to the check in the main race. There you go. Let's watch it together. All right, man. Thanks, guys. And uh, can Rod grab everybody? Yes, yes yeah, I can do it, too. Uh, so it, it's all good. Top four and then uh, Mr. Mingus. Yep, roger that. All right, buddy. Thanks, guys.
So that's Jeffrey. our fearless leader there. Yep, Jeffrey Ellington, unfortunately, number 16. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, a victim of the circumstance of that uh, last wreck. I was a victim they of circumstance. They had a great strategy, too. I'm telling you, they had a great strategy. It just didn't work yeah. out so well. It was working for the first, you know, two or three uh, yellows that came out at there about a quarter of the way through this thing. You know, they just kind of, they backed off, dropped about 50 mile an hour, slid through it, you know. Uh, but then unfortunately got caught in one, so. There's Grant Wesley there in 31st. So Chuck they, McClure did lead that lap. Now the question is, is, is he going to come down pit road? Do you believe ooh. he is going to? Yep. Chuck McClure is a 1-7 car. Okay, okay. I see what happened. So we had the majority of the pack coming down and then half of them opted to stay out because they probably looked at that lap counter knowing 35 is 12 to go. But Josh McCurry stayed out. I don't know if he stayed out or he was part of the other, he already pitted. I believe he probably stayed out to try to and let a lap there for his team. We're still under yellow, so that's a good thing. So he can come down pit road after that, but got that five extra bonus points for his team. That could be the difference. Yep. It could help, especially considering that this this race is not the only race that's happening tonight to determine a winner. Now we've had six sprint races, which were awesome to watch. They were great races. Now we're down to the you know a little longer one, little cautions. Eh, it'd be nice not to have them, but it's been fun. Yeah, it's it's tough in a big race like this. I mean, this is only the fifth uh, yellow. Uh, we've had some really bad ones where there's like 10. Um, and that's the thing, too. There's fatigue as well. You know, guys yeah. are racing on different tracks and different mindsets. And, and you know, it's a long night. Yep. And, yeah. you know, and add that all on there. Uh, sometimes the uh, elephant in the room is a money race. Yep. Money races sometimes don't bring out the best in people. Um, but. It is what it is, you know, but they have, they've done, it's been some great racing. Now, it's not normal for us. Usually the Talladega races are a little bit less cautions, but, you know, some of the ones we've seen are just, just like, like I said, push has gone wrong. You know, they were guy teammates trying to help each other out. Yeah. yeah. It didn't work out. Nothing's malicious. Um, everything just sort of just went, you know, like they say, it's a racing deal. Now, I wonder if Mercurio is coming to the pits or if he's just taking the shortest distance around the track here. I have a feeling he's probably pitting. I think he just was saw the opportunity to where he could. Uh, nope. No, he's staying out. Nope. He's taking the shortest distance around the track is running that grass. So he's he's going to be close on fuel. He does have five pit stops on on the night. So does Ulysses Sandoval, who's right behind him. Stephen Brandstetter behind them only has three pit stops on the night. Retired cars this evening, Jeffrey Elliott, Denny Carroll, and Brian Lovell. Now, these guys are taking the shortest way around this track. This is interesting. This lead pack of five cars in that train now trying to conserve fuel now i was looking at the pace car are we still under yellow no the lights are off we will be going green. okay so this is interesting so they're 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 conserving or trying their best to conserve fuel mm -hmm. that is you know it's one way to do it but the the downside to it is if you if you're wrong leading uh last lap going down the back stretch and the you know you get down to about three pounds of fuel pressure that can that can cause a big disaster this is a way to conserve you know you take the shortest way around the track and that's to run the apron it doesn't seem like what's the difference well it is it's technically a shorter distance around the track not by much but it can be the difference now if a little you, trick that little yeah. trick that people out there don't really know though if you watch the cars um I don't know how well they can see that on the TV, but I can see it. Um, Josh is actually clutching it. He's coasting. Yeah. He so that's what, he, what he's doing. It's a car he's, pop. Yep. When he pops up, that's, you know, the clutch goes in, engages, the car settles down. When he lets go, it pops back up. So that just tells us that he's he's pretty close on fuel. He's just trying to conserve as much as he can. Yeah, we zoomed right in on Josh here now. He's not 
Oh, he is doing it still a little bit. Little and pops the with downside, the clutch. The downside to it is, is you know, the guy, the cars that are behind him, they're going to be able to save more fuel than he is. Being the leader, pushing all that air is yep. harder. So we may see him try to get behind somebody. Um, I don't know how many guys up here are going to be able to make it. It's, it's going to make it interesting. It's going to be weird, yeah, because now you've got your front, the, the cars in the front, trying to conserve that drastically are now leading this race. If big shove back there on the restart to Randy Waugh from Jeremy Jeffries, give him a wallop. Good launch by the 99 of Josh Mercurio, who was actually an alternate for tonight. He's filling in for Nate Balser. We're wrecking in the back. We are in a race back situation, I do believe. Yes, we are. So this... Now, these guys won't be lifting. We are at the 10 is, to go, U Mark. man is headed to the high side trying to see if he can uh, pick him up and, and do it, but he doesn't have any help behind him. Yeah, they're all kind of stringing out right here. Or Alex Ortiz back there in third, but he's not close enough to really where he can help them, guys. Yeah, we will go back and see what happened there to cause that yellow. Mercurio will secure first place again. And you watch, he's going to hit the start finish line. Yep, boom, right into clutch. Yep. He's saving fuel, so he's he's pretty close, I imagine. Yeah, he's he's clutching a lot. You can hear the engine cutting out, and a little bit of throttle there, and then back to silent again. So good, you know. Cautions are never are never good, but you know what? When you're Josh Mercurio leading the race and drastically conserving fuel. Definitely, he's happy to see that because he can save a lot of gas now. So now Chris Van Litt, he, I don't think he pitted with the rest of his team there. So he might be still kind of short on fuel as well. But he's running right there in the fifth spot. None of his teammates around him, but uh, he's, he does really good at these super speedway races. It looks like there was actually maybe two incidents there. The 88 of, of Grant... Uh, went around also, and that's separate from. I don't know what happened there. Grant got a little sideways all by himself coming off that turn. That's the the difference in the race back scenario. Once you get to that, that can cause you know more incidents because you're you know oh. you never lift and you want to try to get through that accident. You want to try to get the the most positions you can possibly can, if that should you know the opportunity should arise. So. You know, they do sometimes get in a little bit more accidents because of that. Yeah, and Craig Hagley was a, in the middle of that. There was a checkup in the middle line. A couple of cars did scoot out to the right up against the wall to get around it, but the, the domino effect was just too, it was just amplified. These guys are on pit road again, fixing up some damage. Most of the cars that didn't get involved in that stayed out. They feel they can do it on fuel. Or, you know, like we, we've talked about Josh Mercurio in the front row. He's he's probably feeling a little bit better about it now. Um, he's still clutching it, but, you know, it's pretty pretty tight. You know, you got to be able to save as much fuel as you can because uh, you got to have that power to be able to pull them through the round the corners. Yeah, a lot of cars seem to be clutching. Seth Cole's doing it. He's back here in 28th. And nothing worse than going down the back stretch last lap and you got about three pounds of fuel pressure that motor starts yeah. cutting down. John Godfrey doing some clutching as well. And I count cars here. We still have I think so I see four of the uh, Carnation TV cars. So there's Gary Heiss. Yeah, there's Gary Heiser's car, the number three, but driven by Garland Oaks this evening. And he's out there driving with an injured hand. That's, injured hand, I mean, yeah. Prop, props to him. To cover for Heiser, who couldn't make it in either. And to come out here and run an event like this, this broadcast is going to be four hours long. Thankfully, we don't have to do this every night. <laughs> no. 
Andrew Miller. Gary Mingus in the 58. Jim Black, Bob Seminary, you can hear him clutching. Greg the Rocket Palma. The Hooters Trojan Rocket Racing Ford Camaro Corolla. <laughs> Frank Dickens in the 09. Rodney Sellins in ninth position right there. We ain't used to seeing Rodney back there. He's been running most of the time up front. But because yeah. of the pit scenarios and such, it, it's put him in the back. Yeah, Rodney Sellins does have the most laps led tonight with 21, currently sitting in ninth. There's Pat McCarsky with some rear end damage. You can see the trunk lid has been removed off that car. Jeremy Jeffries, Randy Wall, fifth position. Chris Van Vliet for the I'm on Fire team in sixth. Alex Ortiz clutching pretty hard. He's also using the apron technique. In third position. It looks like we're going to go back with probably about five to go. I don't know if you listen to Sandoval doing some hard clutching down by the wall. First place, Josh Mercurio. Yep, go ahead. And most of these drivers up front, they're, they're playing the fuel mileage game. Yeah. And yeah. so far, the cautions have fallen their way. So, you know, it's it's going to be interesting. And like I said, I think we'll probably have about either four to five laps left. So it's going to be a shootout. It'll be interesting to see, you know, if anybody could come from the back and make any progress or... And these guys are still using the apron technique to conserve. You know, the, the lights are still on on the pace car, so we're still going to have another lap. You may be at the point where you have enough, but you, you know, you're close. Mm -hmm. You want to keep saving. It doesn't think, matter. Yeah, I think you're right because he's just going to, they're going to do this just because they can. And then yep. when the green flies, at least they're just going to the map and then they don't have to worry about it. I would rather, I'd rather have, you know, if I could, could potentially save three more laps of fuel. Um, I would actually, I'd keep saving, keep oh, saving, yeah. keep saving. So that way, once that green drops, you're just hammer down and go. Yeah. YouTube chat, Denny Carroll says, Blaine and Rob, you guys are doing an awesome job. Thank you, too, for your hard work. Thanks, Denny. Yeah, thanks, Denny. It's, uh, sorry about your bad luck tonight. It just, did, just didn't seem to go your way tonight. Yeah, big stone gap, man. You see him all over the broadcast. But here we are now in the closing laps of this race, and I don't even see... The closest one I see is back there. Who's that back there then? Is that Greg? New Greg was still in it, and I yep, think Dan is Greg. still in it. Oh, I just lost the, the pack. There we go. Er Eric's still in it, and uh, Dan are still in it. So they lost two of them. Of course, you know, that hurts them in points. Yeah, I think Wrecking Ball still has all of their cars. I'm not sure about Tarnation TV. I know that uh, Pat McCarsky's got damage, but I think he's still out there. They are still out there. So we've got three retired cars. That's Brian Lovell, Denny Carroll. Those are the Stone Gap guys. And, of course, Jeffrey Elliott is out as well. With an engine failure being on the I'm on Fire team. Everybody else is still running. Everybody else is still on the lead lap. Your Team Rocket cars, you've got three of them together on the bottom um, a little ways back there on the inside, but they're, other than that, they're, they're teams, they're not all together. They're, they're nothing's, none of the teams are really kind of gathered except for those three cars right now. Yeah, there was a couple pockets there where we noticed they were in the sprints where they were actually all together. It was kind of neat. But now we've got uh, Team Thunderbird up on the high side. You've got Ulysses, the puppy Sandoval, and Stephen Branstead are running nose to tail. And a few more rows back, you got the other two Air Force cars, the Thunderbirds. With about so they, five laps left. And here they five are. Five laps left. Can they do yep. it? You know, yep. can they get up there? Can they all work together as a team? I'd be just the scenario I see right now. I'd keep my eye on that Team Rocket setup that with the three cars. Um, granted, they're on the bottom, so they've got to get themselves in a the scenario where they can get out of that. Mm -hmm. But it'd be interesting to see if they can do anything. Yeah, and you've got you've got guys like well, who's that? That's Jeffries, Sullins, and Palmer. Three, and, three excellent super speedway racers. And they can see that. 
but how are they going to get there? That's the problem. Well, that's just it. With with cars on the above them, below them, you know, they just don't have a lot of room. So they're going to have to see if they can make a an opportunity happen. Pat McCarsky just yielded to spot there because he's got trunk damage. Always the gentleman, Pat McCarsky. Yep. They're already trying to go three wide back. They're going to stay locked on the front of this pack. Josh Mercurio in that Napa car leading this race. The zero behind him, driven by Alex Ortiz. Currently focused on that orange car, Chris Van Vliet, number 10, being now, pushed by Alex. Team Rocket. Do you think that's a good spot? Sorry if you were Alex. If I was Alex, I'd stay there where he is and try not to take too many more because that's a pretty good one. But like you mm. said, Chris Van Vliet in the bottom yeah. with the uh, three Team Rocket cars right behind him. That's a good. That's a good lineup right there. Whoops, we got one around the back. It looks like McClure. McClure, yep. Oh, and he comes back out and he hits Seth Cole. This will be the race. This is a race to the checkered flag. This might be a three-wide finish. I do not believe we can go green again. Bob stands already on the high side, but he just doesn't have a lot of help. Uh, Chris Van Leet is just, just yeah. trying to keep each lane <laughs> behind him. He is blocking. He is making himself really wide. Chris Van Fleet in the 10. Ooh, Macario's around. Oh, oh no. this is not good. Oh, Alex Ortiz is in it. Uh, Pat McCurse is upside down. I think Chris Van Fleet is walking to capture this yellow. I don't believe we're going green again. I don't think there's enough time. There is no cars lapped down. I always get I think confused we'll go back. with I this. I don't know, but I, yeah. yeah. It could I, be a single lap shootout. I've been playing this sim since 2003, and I can I never know what the game's going to do because now we're going to have to take this lap to re-rack everybody. Yep, and you've, you've got you know, uh, Chris Van Leet in the lead. you got and Bob Simmer run, in second. And they usually do three. Like, we might have one green lap. Let's go into replay mode here and see if we can find out what happened. Jeremy Jeffries is in uh, the third position right now. And uh, Ulysses is in the fourth. You man is right there. So that's two of the Air Force cars um, right up there in the top four. Well, the accident actually happened in the back row almost. Oh, no, yeah, because it was, it was McClure getting out of shape up there. And then oh, that he, happened when he yeah. went through the trial wall. Yeah, see, and that wasn't that bad. Then there's another incident up here. That was the more so the one that I was looking for. Let's see here if we can get a helicopter view. It looks like it's Dan level. Uh, unfortunately, that took uh, that second incident, or actually, yeah, I think it was the second incident, kind of took out uh, Pat Mahersky. Motor let go. Yeah, Dan Lovell. Man, that that pace car. <laughs> it's even in the replay, he scares me. You want to follow a pace car? So the pace car right here is zero miles an hour. Hundred miles an hour. Hundred and fifty miles an hour. <laughs> 100 and 210 miles an hour. That's how fast the pace car gets going. And that's why the pace car scares a lot of people. <laughs> that's amazing. Well, we've been running seven races. And finally, my game crashed. <laughs> we almost made it to the end. I think mine's crashed like three or four times tonight. Has it? Yeah, that's the first crash I've had tonight. I'm just surprised. Can you let me know when I fall out of there? Thank you again to everybody to uh, for watching tonight's event. The... Everybody's parked on the front stretch waiting for the pace car. Oh, they, uh, yeah. You fell. Make sure I fell. Okay, I'll come back in here now. Reboot my tickets. That's amazing. I was actually surprised how well... Uh, the game was actually running. And I, was, I wasn't going to say it out loud because I didn't want to jinx it. Let's just hope I joined the right race. 
wants me to jump into an open speedway race and be like, what track's this? So now I'm a little <laughs> confused that uh, Josh Mercurio got out in front of Van Leek, and you shouldn't have got out there, but. Yeah, because Van Vliet would be the leader. Yeah, but now uh, Mercurio kind of stayed behind the pace car, went up past him, okay, and, buddy, and actually up, led that lap. For but... one switch at a time, turning your hmm. Yeah, I see what you're saying. We don't go back to the last completed lap or any of the loops. It's all done on the start finish line. So. Yeah, old school NASCAR. We've got Dan Lovell out there burning the place down with a uh, engine failure. Mosquito control. Yes. I'm just going to try to. Oh, what is going on back there? No, 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 guys. This isn't bumper cars. Uh, I, sometimes I wonder, like, I, I kind of want to hear what's going on on TeamSpeak sometimes. <laughs> yeah. You'd be like, oh, they did that on purpose. <laughs> there, I just did that little trick there to get that uh, lap counter back up. I mean, I'm not really sure how Mercurio got out in front of him or what, what was going on there. Whether uh, Chris Van Leet had him just let him lead a lap, I'm not really sure what... You know. Yeah, but under yellow, you can't really, you can't really do that. Yeah, that's what's kind of got me confused. We, you know, because we saw Chris lead the lead the race to the line. Douglas Hulick in the YouTube chat. Greetings from Shreveport. Let's finish strong. Working on it. Yeah, I don't know why. Uh, Josh was allowed to go back to the front. I don't know. Oh, we are going to have a one lap shootout. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Huh. All right. You uh, you thought it was going to get interesting before. Tighten them belts because this is going to be crazy. Yeah. Wow, that's wow. Yeah, I was kind of wondering because the no lap cars uh, never really know until it happens. One lap shootout. So the lights are off on the pace car, which means next time by, he will head to the pits and the white flag will be in the air as that happens. So does Je Jeffries go with Van Leet or does, you know, he try to get by him? Does, you know, Alex Ortiz try to get by Josh Mercurio? I mean, it's. It, or do they just stay in line and try to get the best they can? See, and I'm curious. I'm happy this is going green because I don't know why. Why would Mercurio be allowed to pass Van Vliet? Because Van Vliet led at the yellow. He took the yellow. And the field's not frozen because we're within 10 to the end. So they're allowed to race it out. So I'm happy that, you know, it goes green now and we can actually figure this out. Although Van Vliet... Technically, I, I don't know the reasoning for that should be on the inside line unless he, as the leader, unless he's choosing to start on the outside. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe he has lane choice and he's switched. Uh, hopefully, Jeffrey can sort this all out for us afterwards. Mm hmm. That's a possibility. Van Vliet being the leader has lane choice, so he can switch lanes. That's possible. So, you just got to hope you got the good pusher behind you. Yeah, that's the one. That's the thing too. You, if you do have lane choice, you're looking in your mirror, going, "Okay, who do I want behind me?" It's a hard choice here because everybody's so good at it. So we have Joshua Mercurio, Chris Van Vliet, Alex Ortiz, Jeremy Jeffries, Ulysses Sandoval, Stephen Branstetter, Rodney Sullins, Randy Watt, Greg Palmer, and Alex Mo are your top ten. I'm thinking any one of them can win this thing as we go green and checker. At the same time, sorry, green-white checker. <laughs> it's not a green-white checker. It's going to be interesting, and we this already got green, cars around in the back. Yeah. This is a green and white at the same time. Van Leek did not get any help from uh, Jeremy Jeffries at all. No. So, uh, Mercurio is out in front of him now. Alex Ortiz is trying to make a move, but it's not really working. 
I see some of the uh, rocket cars on the top. We got three of them lined up. We got another incident on the back stretch. Race to Van the Leek. checkered flag here. Chris Van Leek went all the way back to the fifth position right now. Yeah. Yeah, the white and green came up at the same time, leading us to a checkered flag finish. It might be Josh Bicurio. We think he's got enough fuel. Josh Bicurio wins the Mega Marathon. Seven race extravaganza. Extraordinaire. I Rodney Sullins in second, Eric, Alex Ortiz in third, and Greg Palmer snuck away in there, got into the fourth position, followed by you, man. Yep. Chris Van Leek, I was, I'm still a little bit confused about that, but he was back in sixth position. Yep. So that is your race. What a wild finish that was, going green with one to go. Joshua Mercurio wasn't even in this race. He was a backup driver. He was sitting in on the bench. And we we said, grab your car, bro. We're going driving. Because Nate was unable to make it. And he wins the thing. Yeah. That happens. <laughs> it does, it's and it strange. just did. Oh, and there's a there's a you're welcome bump and so much for your clean car. It has now been destroyed, and he can't do a burnout because he's not on his wheels. They're trying to get him back on his wheels. That would have been a clean burnout. Now the roof is scratched. So our fourth That's place shame. finisher was Greg Palmer, correct? Correct. Greg Palmer, Alex Ortiz, Rodney Sullins, Joshua Mercurio. We will be talking to everybody in that order. We'll get to Palmer first, and then we'll find Gary Slingshot Mingus for yeah, well, the we silly stats. Big Palmer is up in the booth, and we got a fourth place finish tonight. Hey, what's up, guys? Congratulations, fourth. Not not the win you probably wanted, but uh, you were up and down all night. You know, up front, up and again, kind of knocked back a little bit. Um, that last single, you know, one lap to go shootout, and you got you worked your way up into the fourth position. Good points for your team. Yeah, we uh, we fought all night. Uh, got caught up in the, some wrecks. Uh, just now, we just restarted uh, myself ninth and uh, and Sullen seventh. We worked our way up and we finished um, second and fourth. Not bad. Oh, not bad how are you all. feeling, like fatigue wise? Being we've been broadcasting here for three hours and 59 minutes. <laughs> Blaine, my back teeth are floating. Yes, yes. <laughs> I would imagine. Well, congratulations it's on the run. Thank uh, you. It, it was fun. I yeah, had a man. good time. All those heats, they were fun. This race was, I mean, it could have been better with the Rex, but, uh, you know, you got 40 cars, so you're going to expect that to happen. That's what we were kind of talking about. It was it was 40 cars, and it was also um, a long night, so you got a little bit of fatigue in there, too, probably. Um, so it's that whole thing. But, yeah. uh, you know, it, 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 all in all, it was a fantastic event. Have you Have you ever seen anything like that where they've run multiple tracks? sprinting to a main like this i don't i think jeff no. was in the lab one night and came up with that probably him and igor i yeah. mean they were in the lab and just like concocted this i tell you it was fun it really was i liked the competition i should say i loved the competition um the format was great um it's just i just wish this uh this last race the the finale was a little bit better but it is what it is blaine so mm -hmm. you get 40 guys together you know, a little impatience, and um, this is what you get. But overall, I had a good time. Yeah, it was a fantastic so, race. Sorry about that. So how do you think your – no, that's okay. How do you think your team did overall? I mean, you think you got a shot at this? I think we did well. Uh, we have to go over the videotapes from um, previous races, the, the heats, um, see how, how many we were involved with and uh, who was uh, – who was uh, going to get charged with, a, with an incident. So we'll see. We're, I know you, we're up there somewhere. Yeah, and you, uh, being the team captain, you get to be one of the guys that goes in and re helps review all that. So, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? I'm sorry. So, being a team captain, you're going to be one of the guys that goes in and helps them review all those incidents. So, oh yeah, yeah, I have to. I save the replays and I save the exports. And uh, tomorrow uh, we'll go over everything and with a fine tooth comb and see what comes out of this victorious. I hope it's us. 
it could be. You never know. That would, it's a good run for finishing fourth tonight. Um, you want to thank anybody uh, for tonight's uh, event? The floor, floor is yours. Thanks, Rod. Thanks, Blaine. Yeah, everybody. I mean, the, the admins, Jeffrey, uh, the Elliots, um, Divins, uh, Sullins, everybody. I mean, we. It, it was it was a team effort. It was a village to get this done. Um, thanks <laughs> yeah, to you wrong. guys up there in the booth for calling <laughs> this. I mean, I'm, you guys must be hoarse by now, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks, I, Sullins, for painting my car for voice. the team. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. No, but I, thank we're everybody. Not, we're not too bad. I don't know. He, he might be. I don't know. I, I I'm pretty good, but it's it's been it's it's been a night. You know. Uh, hate to see it end, but then again, I'm kind of glad to see it end per se. You know. Yeah, it's kind of late. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. It was. Thanks, Rod. Thanks, Blaine. Thank you. Yeah, awesome run, man. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much, man. All right, we I just grabbed uh, Gary Mingus to do the silly stats of the evening, and then as I pulled him down here, uh, he was in here for about two seconds and then disconnected. So I don't know if if Gary um, just had to go to bed. <laughs> it's midnight. It is now tomorrow. Maybe that's why. Maybe Gary's like, it's tomorrow. I'm going home. But anyway, Alex Ortiz is here. Alex, man, what a what a fantastic event tonight, dude. You guys must be tired to yeah, say the I least, am, but congratulations tired. on your podium finish. It actually looks like it was a tie. Was it a tie? Yeah, your yeah, interval I have not checked. Your interval to the leader was uh zero uh point zero eight, and so was Rodney Sullen's point zero eight. Oh so uh, but it gave you third place, so yeah, I don't remember that role. Do you yeah, that role? Uh, it was an exciting race. I will, I will admit that, and I'm so glad I've gone to third. This is the first time I've ever really gotten a podium finish, so I'm very excited for that. I am not at all tired, actually. This is just excited me a lot, and I would like. Am I am I able to get a shout out, Bling? Oh yeah, man! Absolutely, Absolutely. Yours. Go for uh, it. Shout out to my beautiful girlfriend who is watching the uh, race right now, K Katie Deal. I love you, and you love my life. And awesome. yeah, it was a good race. There was a few wrecks, but I think we pulled out really good. How do you think your team did overall with points? Because this is going to be something else to be paying attention oh. to tomorrow when they run through all these replays and figure it out. Yeah. I know one of our, uh, I think it was Nick won the fifth heat race, I think. I can't remember exactly. Nick won one of the heat races, I'm pretty sure. So I, with a uh, third place finish, it just depends on how, if we got any like last place points or... Uh, Costumes and stuff. So, yeah, Nick won heat number five, Homestead. Yep. Five, yep. Now I actually took yeah. notes. I actually took the right notes. See, I take notes, and they actually came in handy for once. There you so go. You always good to take notes. <laughs> yep. Yeah, the, the, you had a good race there. I mean, you kind of stayed out of the trouble. You didn't get involved in those big, big wrecks, and and at the end of it, you were right there. I see you were trying to make a few moves, but without any help, you kind of. I think you were smart to stay right where you were and, uh, you know, just try to finish the best you could for your team. Yeah. And honestly, I, uh, I had accidentally turned the volume down on my team speak. So I couldn't hear anybody for a while. I was like, I can't hear anybody. And I realized my volume was down. So I was running there without team speak for like half the race. So that's why when I decided to stay out and just not try to go in the grass and take the gamble, I just didn't have team speak. Oh, but it, it paid off. Definitely paid off. If it ha if I had not taken that gamble, I probably would have ended up close to where my the rest of my team was, or possibly in that big last wreck. So, oh yeah, definitely. All right. Well, unless there's uh, someone else you got to thank. Uh, you... Shout out to uh, Garland Oaks. He was the one who's gotten me into this and got me to where I am now. Nice. Right. Well, good yeah, job, man. Yeah, good to have hey, you. You've been all over this broadcast tonight and uh, weeks past as well. So it's awesome that uh, awesome to see you finish on the podium, especially in such a long event like this. Our broadcast right now is at four hours and six minutes. So um, everybody's having a long night, but um, yeah, we're all still wired. It's a ton of fun to yeah. watch, man. Congratulations. Thank you, Devin. Thank you. Have a good one, bud. Good race. You too, Rod. Here you so go, you, Alex. You, you look at. You look at it like that, you know, we're going to, you and I are going to be here uh, 
for a minute more, you know, doing the interviews and doing all this stuff. And then we're going to get all said and done. And all of a sudden we're just going to go crash. Yeah. We're done. <laughs> once, <laughs> the, once the computer we're gonna go to sleep down. good tonight. <laughs> yeah. All right. In the booth with us now is uh, the 38 of Rodney Sullins, our second place finisher. Just, Ran up front a little bit off and on. Yep. Just, What's happening, Gus? just barely because apparently the interval shows you that you were tied for second with Alex. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. That, that extra du uh, duct tape he had in the front bumper that made it just made it so that he won. Uh, beat him out. <laughs> well, and thanks for the right. heads up too before the race, saying that you actually custom painted the uh, the gear for the drivers. I actually got in the car there with you guys a couple times to show that stuff off. You don't leave any detail out when you design these things. No, man, I, I enjoy painting, you know, and I try to try to do everything I can to make them look real, which includes the. The uniforms, a lot of people don't do it, but it's, it's something I try to do when, you know, I try to make time to do it. Uh, if it's somebody needs something at the end of the day or whatever, that's different. But uh, if I got time, I'll, uh, I'll sit down and make something. I've even checked it out, too, and, like, I'll jump in one of your cars in an offline race, and then the, the, the pit crew, same thing. Like, they've got the whole unique uniform as well with, you know, <laughs> you've even got like logos on the on the lapels and stuff i'm like damn it's just there's no stone unturned on these things this guy's got pink shoelaces it's crazy <laughs> yeah i you know i try to make it look as realistic as possible it's a game it's a it's a sim you know but uh uh the more sim it feels if if everything else looks you know realistic See, to me, too, do you change, like, for the pit crew guys, I notice they kind of have a Dale Earnhardt Sr. face. Do you ever switch the face? I have before. Uh, that one, I think, uh, somebody did on the template that I got, and I just never never yeah. changed it because I thought it looked pretty cool. I thought the same thing, too. The template was there for so long, it just became standard after a while. Yeah. And I've used to be a painter in these and used to do a lot of that stuff. But uh, uh, like I said, your your attention to detail is, is second to none. It's pretty good. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate it. How was that run, man? Like, this is a long night. You led the most laps out there tonight. You ended up a second, so not too shabby. Dominate the front line. No, it's a good uh, qualified second, Chuck. Uh, got the pole. Uh, so I started second and ran up front, uh, led how many, I don't know how many laps. It was a 47 lap race. How many did I lead? Do you know? 23. Oh, wow. Almost half the race. That's yep. cool. Um, so yeah, I had a good time. Uh, you know, pit strategy come out there at the end. Uh, every time we went into pits, I'd come out in the top two or three. But their uh, their last at the end, there was about uh, I don't know what, what 10, 12 cars stayed out, so that put me behind. Uh, and then the first uh, restart after I when I was back there, there was three or four cars in front of me that I could see gaps in their fenders. And uh, Mikarski had no rear end on his car, um, and I know even Jeremy, my teammate, had some roof damage. So. There was cars in front of it was damaged, and we never did get a chance to really race. It was caution after caution after caution there at the end. So I was pretty happy with the run to get the second because I think I restarted, I don't know, eighth or ninth and finished second with uh, with that one lap shootout. So can't complain. Could have used 100 more yards and might have been a different winner tonight, but uh, Josh did what he had to do. Yeah, there was a lot of changes in that last, even just 15 laps. It was like guys are conserving fuel, guys were pitting, guys were, you know, running super, like, the, the apron line to conserve as much gas as possible. And just, like, Chris Van Vliet being in first and then, you know, finishing, like, I think he was in sixth. Yep. You know, like, just that quick. Everything happened that fast. But, yeah, super fun race to watch, man. And, um super fun event to be part of a long night but it was definitely worth it i think we put on a great show everybody involved oh man i'm really looking forward to uh going back and watching all this uh the, the sprint races were cool had a good time never got a good starting spot every starting spot i got <laughs> is when i wasn't in the race the first race i was 16 out of 16 drivers and technically there was 40 plus a server i was 41st when after when they did the auto qualifying, oh, so I'm like, oh, this is going to be a great night. So, <laughs> but anyway, it was fun. You know, had, had a good time. Uh, that's what it's all about. You know, I hope y'all enjoyed it. Yeah, it was well, good, we had, man. 
we had a blast. So the, the question we've been asking everybody is, uh, how do you think your team did? Do you think you got this thing? You know, the Team NWO uh, really did some good during the uh, the uh, sprints. Um, we, I think, did better than them here in this race. Uh, so you know, it's hard to say. I think it's going to come down to, to between us and NWO, honestly. Yeah. I, yeah, I think you're. I think you're about right. That's what I was thinking. Because NWO didn't win. They they won two of those uh, sprints, so that's going to help. But um, yeah, dude. Yeah, we got Gary in here now, ready with the stats for the night. So we'll let you go, Rodney, and then uh, we'll wrap this thing up. And if you do want to watch the broadcast, it's longer than Lord of the Rings: The Two Towers, uh, clock, <laughs> clocking in at about uh, four minutes, four hours and twelve minutes now. So nice. Yeah, book, book the afternoon off if you want to watch this whole thing. But yeah, man, thanks for what you do. You oh, obviously right. the, the paint work is amazing, and it's always fun watching you race. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, you know, I'm gonna take a second here and yep. thank uh, Jeff, uh, Jeffrey Elliott, for uh, everything he's done for Talladega Nights. Uh, Chris's brother, uh, I know they kind of started this thing. I, I don't even know how long ago it was, but uh, it's done a great job. It's got a good turnout. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping a lot of these guys want to continue racing with uh, with the new ownership that's taking over. Uh, it's gonna be much of the same. Uh, but uh, Blaine. Uh, thank you, Tarnation TV. Uh, and Rod, I'm looking forward to this. I've never heard uh, one of your, uh, well, I may, maybe I have. I think I've heard some of it the last time. But looking forward to it. I know you guys are, are going to do a great job. You have to, golly, your, your throat sort of be sore after tonight's race, races. <laughs> um, thank the admins here. I got to thank my teammates, Greg Palmer, Jeremy Jeffries, Grant Wesley, Craig Agley on Team Rocket. Uh, kind of, uh, we kind of teamed a little bit sometime with Team NWO and kind of worked with them when we could just because we're all friends. We're All of us are friends. and uh, So thank them. Uh, they had a good run. And if they won it, congratulations to them. And great congratulations to Josh. Uh, Black Rifle Coffee, Habrana Brisa, and the Burnt Screwdrivers Racing League. Thank you, everybody. Y'all have a great night. Thanks, Rodney. Yeah, thank you, Rodney. How many Josh Mercurios do we have? I guess there's a couple, but uh, we have to get to Gary Slingshot. Gary, are you there? I am. Awesome. We'll do the silly stats right now, and then we'll move on to the winner of tonight's uh, main event. So, yeah, Gary, go ahead. Okay. Well, after the heat races, uh, the biggest complaint that everybody had is that they were sweating too much. <laughs> it was a great thing to watch as much as fun as it was to race but the fastest laps of the night are going to start out with an honorable mention Ulysses Sandoval everybody did 200 miles an hour the only difference was the tenths and hundredths of a second in fourth place Pat McCarsky did a 47 856 200 Point one oh one miles per hour on lap 15 in third place yours truly Gary the slingshot Mingus driving for Jim Black in the 58 Air Force car 47 845 seconds 200.147 miles per hour on lap 15 in second place was Javier Negron, 47.842 seconds, 200.159 miles per hour on lap 15. And the fastest lap of the night goes to Seth Cole, who did a 47.830 second, 200.209 miles per hour again on lap 15. The leaders for the night, which you may have heard, we had a 13 lead changes uh, with 10 leaders taking up those spots. And the most laps led, of course, was Mr. Painting Man himself, Rodney Sullins, with 23 laps. And Josh Mercurio, an outstanding night for him, leading 13 laps. Uh, Denny Carroll had four, and the rest, Chuck McClure, John Godfrey, Chris Van Bleet, Seth Cole, 
Grant Wesley, Jeremy Jeffries, and Kelly Causey each had one lap led. The highest climber of the night was Alex Ortiz. Mr. Ortiz started in 37th position and finished third. That is 34 points difference. Very good job. And that, my friends, are your slingshot silly statistics for the evening. That's awesome, I'm, man. 15. It's always that one lap that, like, everybody just, just blazing through it, and they all hit their, their times. And, and Seth, I remember reading it on the broadcast. He kept that lap the entire race. It never went away. He set that record early, and it stayed there the whole, the whole run. Yeah, the top six did it all on lap 15, uh, except Ulysses, he did his on 18. Hmm. But uh, th that 15 was a was a fast lap for everybody. Yeah, and at over 200 miles an hour, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, out of the uh, total number of drivers, there were uh, the top 10 all hit 200 miles an hour uh, with Jeff, Jeff Goodpaster in the 10th slot at 200 even on lap 15. Wow, that's amazing, man. Yeah, I love it. The um, the silly, the slingshot silly statistics of the night. I think I said it right. I think <laughs> yeah, I finally you got, got it. <laughs> yeah, I think you, you quit getting your tongue tangled around <laughs> yeah. your eye tooth and now you can see what you're saying. That's exactly what I would have said. <laughs> I, lo I love the statistics, though, too, because it's, it's you know, a uh, information that really we we don't have the time to go find and you know what during the races and, no. and that at the end of it we can you know now we know it's uh appreciate that gary yeah i can see the i can see the the fastest lap but i can't see what lap it happened on i can't see everybody's laps i just see that one thing so that's very cool that we can pull that info out of those replays and get all that stuff if I may, I'd like to give a shout out. Uh, I don't yep. usually give shout outs, but I'm very thankful. My prayers are with um, Jim Black, who, as most of you know, is in the hospital with a uh, case of pneumonia. So I oh, hope geez. he gets well quick. And uh, I really appreciate the fact that I got to drive his car tonight uh, with his name on it and his Air Force paint scheme with the Thunderbirds and it was truly an honor. I'm sorry that Rodney, I mean that uh, Jim was not here, but I hope to see him soon, get him back on the track. Awesome, yeah, we gotta awesome. get, get him well soon, get him back here. All right, Gary, thank you for all the statistics. Now, Blaine, you wanna take it away? Yeah, man, uh, thanks a lot, Gary. And we're moving up, Josh, you still with us, man? Yes, I hear you. Oh, man. We saw you clutching something awful and taking the, the fastest way around the track down in the grass and the dirt. So you clearly were were, were uh, messing around with that fuel. Yeah. So at one point, um, when uh, one of that first set of cautions came out, we had 11 laps and about 16 laps of left to go in the, in the race. So... Uh, just uh, put it down on the bottom, shortest way around, and clutched the clutched the heck out of it. And uh, luckily, we, we uh, it didn't end up being that close on fuel. Um, there was one restart there, I think, with uh, about eight to go. Uh, I was about half a lap short. But uh, yeah, at the end there, I had enough gas uh, to go a whole another whole another ten. So. Nice. Uh, this is the way it works. <laughs> we was kind of wondering where you were in that fuel gauge. Whether we knew you were were saving, uh, we just didn't know how oh, you know how close you were. What you're saying? What's that? that? Was... Sorry. I was just Sorry. I was just saying though that he had. We were kind of seeing you clutching. We were kind of trying to or figure out. That? That. We so we see that you were clutching, you know, pushing the clutching and coasting. So we were kind of wondering how close you really were. I think Josh might have a problem here, and I don't oh, know. Can you I hear can Rod hear now? Oh, okay. I can't hear Rod either, but um, yeah, repeat That's your okay. question. Well, I was just saying, uh, you know, we were we were watching you clutch the, you know, using the clutch there, going down to the bottom. We were kind of get trying to figure out how close you really were oh, on man, fuel. Man, I can't hear you. 
That's yeah, real. I, yeah, 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 I guess I'll yeah. relay the message then. Yeah, we were just wondering about with the clutch and um, doing a ton of it. But you ended up with, a, you said you ended up, you were 10 laps to the good because the yellows came out at the right time, say. Yeah. Um, so we just got a, a couple of late cautions. I uh, thought I was going to have to make my car wide and uh, block both lanes, but um, we really didn't get up to speed. Uh, in those last couple cautions there, so um, just kind of made my made my play at the beginning about with 18 to go, and then um, luckily the cautions fell and uh, ended up uh, with the win. It's super cool too because you were a backup driver for Nate uh, not being able to make it in, and you got the call last minute, so you were we were able to get the car number switched up, and then yeah you know, making it in here, did you think in this, you know, four hour extra extravaganza that you'd be in the winner's circle of the main event? Definitely not. Uh, I think uh, the signups for this event were full uh, about a month and a half ago. Yeah. And uh, at that time, um, I've been working on my thesis uh, for school and I just defended that and, uh, and I passed. And so on Thursday, I just... Sh- shot everybody a message saying, hey, you know, if you need a, need a guy to fill in, <laughs> I, can, uh, I can race. And uh, Nate, uh, I guess, I don't want to say luckily, he, he did hurt himself, but luckily for me, I got to race uh, in this crazy awesome event. I got um, had some great racing uh, in the first and fourth heat race. And then uh, to come out here, I mean, I've never won at Talladega Nights before, so uh, that's a real wow. big achievement for me. And uh, yeah. Well, that's great. Yeah, congratulations on the first ever win at Talladega Nights. You're doing it in a mega marathon, seven race extravaganza. And congratulations on the thesis. That's uh, that's gnarly. That's something yeah. I never did. It's a uh, it's a bunch of a uh, bunch of months of hard work, and it's just sitting next to me here. It's just a huge stack of paper. Right, <laughs> a huge uh, stack of bound <laughs> papers. Yep. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I'm happy I did that, and I'm happy I got to race tonight. It, it all is just uh, working out right now, so great. Rock and roll, buddy. Well, we're going to wrap this thing up because everybody probably wants to go to bed, but we'll give you the mic if you've got any last words you want to say, like uh, shout-outs or anything. Let it, let it rip. Yeah, well, first off, i got to thank uh, Jeffrey Elliott. Uh, he puts on you know these crazy awesome events, and I know that he's stepping down, but uh, he's done a lot for the NR2003 community, and... Uh, and yeah, so you can't uh, discount any of the uh, stuff that he's done. Then I want to thank um, Garland Oaks. He's the one that got me into this league. Um, definitely wouldn't be screwing around on uh, uh, on this server with some of the older guys if it weren't for Garland taking me under his arm and uh, getting me in here. And then, uh, yeah, all the guys that... Uh, I mean, normally I race with the uh, Team Wrecking Ball, and so all those guys are great to hang out with and talk to and uh, also race with. So, yep, thanks to all those guys, and uh, thanks to you guys for broadcasting again. Awesome, man. Thanks, Josh. Man, congratulations again, and uh, have a good night, man. We'll see you here next time. Yep, you too. Have a good night. I know it's pretty late. (laughs) Awesome. Thanks, bud. So, what a race. I mean, what time did we start? Four, four, hours four and, and a half 20, hours ago? Four, uh, yeah, four hours and 25 minutes ago, we went live. <laughs> and we still have people watching? <laughs> yep, a dozen. Yeah. We, got a couple wow. hundred, we got a couple hundred hits on the race, and currently there's 12 people still watching this thing. So That's crazy. Yeah, uh, I do fantastic. have to say hi to my daughter. I know she's going to want me to say something to her. My daughter Mackenzie's my biggest fan, so she'll oh. she'll be listening to their thing and <laughs> waiting. Did my dad? Did my dad say my name? Did my dad say my name? You know what? I, I, we apologize, Mackenzie, because you had to wait for the four hour and twenty five minute mark. <laughs> ah, make her work for it. Yeah, that's it. Now we, we get those concurrent viewers, right? You got to have that watch. What they call that? Uh, the the sustain or whatever. The YouTube has a word for it. The <laughs> average duration of a Tarnation TV broadcast is about twenty to thirty minutes that someone will watch but i, do have to I say think it was, it's it was, a lot of a lot of people who watch the whole thing and then a lot of people who accidentally click on it for 10 seconds which brings the average down to 20 minutes but, you know whatever. yeah well you know i i i normally would go back out there mix up a drink sit and watch the thing i think i'm gonna wait till tomorrow yeah wait till tomorrow i think i think we're both gonna wait till tomorrow but yeah i'd like to say too again thank you to all the drivers who came out 
all the administrators who helped pull this thing off because I can't even imagine running it from this side what it was like to keep that thing so tight on the other side you know just like they said yeah. sprint race, Jeff's gonna, five minute break, Jeff's gonna sleep Mason. good Jeff's oh. gonna Jeff is just gonna sleep good tonight yeah or yeah. he may not sleep you know who knows but one of the yeah, other and yeah one, one good thing is, is I didn't mess up names today I got them all good so that was really good yeah we had a lot of fun today we had a lot of fun it was I mean a lot of action non-stop we really have not really other than that 10 minute break we really did not get uh, very much time to actually just slow down i mean we had they kept pulling in drivers and that was awesome and getting people in here that never been in here before uh i like that you know and we'll have to keep doing that tomorrow maybe we'll just try to get some drivers in under cautions and you know just to get some people that don't normally get a chance to say something yeah if you've got a two computer setup it makes it a lot easier too for you not to uh, compromise your game you just reach over to the laptop and do it so that's super cool yeah, I think we were we were well set up and well prepared for tonight, so that was pretty cool. Yeah, man. Yeah, going forward, this is going to be good, especially coming with that ALS race coming up too. Same thing. We're slowly working out uh, the kinks. And extra computers are always good, but uh, yeah, I'm probably going to go to bed. And uh, thanks again to everybody, and of course, thank you, Jeffrey Elliott, because this is always fun to do. And you know, if if I'm racing or I'm broadcasting, we're having a riot doing it. So. Thank you very much, yeah. Jeffrey Elliott, and what a way to go out with a special event like this. But we'll be back tomorrow to continue the IPIS Excellence Series. There's about a half dozen races left in that. It was a good night, and thanks, Jeff. I mean, what you do here is awesome. Awesome. Really hate to see them guys go anywhere, but you know, I can see you get burned out doing this. So yeah. um, it's yeah. going go to go into good hands. I think them guys will do some good things, and just have to wait and see what they where they go and how it comes out. Right on, man. Thank you, everybody, for watching tonight. Uh, thank you very much, Rod, for the assist and the co-hosting duties. And everybody else can keep your stick on the ice.